Oh, good, because we are live. Good. Awesome. So, anyway, as I was saying, mm -hmm. spaghetti is the lowest tier of pasta. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean to say that in some sort of celebratory, you know, reverent way where one might say, oh, yeah, spaghetti is like the, the solid bedrock foundation upon which all other pasta is built. No. Nay, I say. Nine. I say that spaghetti is simply the lowest tier of pasta and that all other forms of pasta are better than spaghetti is. I would much rather have a, a, a penne ziti or rigatoni or a cavatelli or gemelli. I mean, everyone would rather have those. I love the um, tortellinis, and you can the tortellinis, and you can fill them with all sorts of stuff, like little cheeses and meats and little mushrooms and stuff like that. The little bow tie pasta, the, the farfalle, I think they're called. It's all this stuff is ju it's just better. It's just better. Though I you will think, say this. Well, you what? think this is controversial, yeah. or do you anticipate that? I don't know. If, agree? I don't know if this is controversial. I've had many spaghetti dishes that I've enjoyed, but if I can choose between having spaghetti or any other kind of pasta, right? Um, like uh, like a mafaldine, a mafaldine, sorry, or a fagottini, uh, or what? What are the shells called? The the uh, conchigli? I forget. It's like the it's like conch, like the shell. And I remember it because the shell pasta is like it. It starts with conch, like the conch shell, conchig. Glia, something like that. But I'd rather have one of those, right? Um, I just, uh, yeah, I love a, like a big old lasagna that's just got the layers. Oh, I love a big layered lasagna, like a mm. beautiful, like a beautiful architectural wonder. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, well. Hey, hey, wait. Fringy. <laughs> mm hmm. You know the Pokemon Ninetales? I... I think I do. Can you... can you spell that for me? Why? <laughs> because... because we're entertaining the people. This is what we're here to do. We're here to entertain the people. Can yeah, but... I mean, smell that distrust in his voice when he said why. Why can't... why do you think that I'm attempting to lead you down roads of deception? It's just a... I don't know, it's just like, oh, hey, Fringy, yeah, name this Pokemon, uh, no, spell it for me. I mean, I was just, I was just asking, if you don't, you don't have to, if you don't want Rags, to, it's clearly fine, oversteps. I take no offense. <laughs> I, I don't think yeah. I want to, I no, take no, I, I, I take I no offense okay. at all. If you don't take any offense, I, I, I won't. That's okay, that's, that's all right, if you're, if. I'll do it if you want. If you don't want to do it. Yeah, I'd love to hear you do it. N-I-N-E-T-A. L E S. That's right, Mahler. That's oh right. My Yay. See, there was a twist. There was I, a twist. Was a because twist even there. though the Pokemon because I had to I had I had to discover this recently again, I guess, is even though the Pokemon has nine tails, thus the name. It's a subtle connection. Uh it's not spelled T A I L S. It's like a T A L E S. So yeah, that's a little little something there. Little something there. Yeah. Don't you on? Well, uh, we are gathered here today to do the stream we are going to do last week. We got rudely interrupted oh God, by an awful you YouTube video flipping. releasing. Oh no. Did we go to Singapore? Looks like we're in Singapore. Hello. Oh, okay. Excellent. You just sounded really flumpy and robotic-y for me. Let us blame Discord. Let us blame Discord. Anyway, yes, we were we were, we, were, we, were, we were doing the episode we were supposed to do last week. Got rudely interrupted by terrible YouTube video essayists. Happens a lot on the show, and so uh, we're gonna we're gonna catch rags up on the events of that stream, kinda. Um, answer the questions that came okay, in, while also yeah. trying to answer the questions that come in today, and hopefully complete this in under you know twenty four hours, considering how many messages have already come in. Oh my god. I was going to try and do it so that we go back and forth. Starting to already think that might not be possible. Well, you know, we'll, we'll do whatever we can. We'll just get going, you know? That's, that's the question onies. So I'm going to start with, uh, with, with the first of the other episode, which was. Yeah. We're going to, well, Fringy, we're going we're gonna to answer questions from the audience and give our opinions on things. If, that, if that's okay with you. I don't, yeah. I, we don't want to step over any boundaries or yeah. 
You know, we don't we don't want to cross any lines. I won't ask we, you to spell anything, but they sure might. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do want to make sure that you're okay with, you know, kind of opening yourself up to the world a little yeah. bit. And All right. Well, dies. let's go. <laughs> yeah. No. This is good. This is good. I All like right. it. We got questions to answer. First, we got questions. First one is time to prove with facts that Ezio beats Alex Mercer. That was the the story I gave. That kind of arguably is the core memory that got us to creating that that episode the way that it was. The irony, of course, being that Alex, Alex lost Mercer his Mercer is the first... prototype guy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, How could Ezio beat him? That's, that was the story, essentially. It's what got me very annoyed, <laughs> is that uh, Alex obviously was, was supposed to win popular. that. Yeah, because it was like a selection of, I don't even know, like 20 characters, and they were all just the popular ones at the time. And um, yeah. no, like Alex there was just the clear winner, as far as I remember, anyway. But Ezio won. Obviously, the clear winner. Ezio, he, he's a pretty talented guy, but how is he meant to deal with, with Alex Mercer? <laughs> What I was gonna What's say he gonna do? Kind of what funny because does um, he even have that could hurt him? Uh, he has Leonardo da Vinci's crazy, wacky inventions. That's true. He does. Hmm. Well, I was gonna say that it's it's kind of funny because Alex died in his he he like lost two. I think he fought someone ridiculous in his first round, like Dark Phoenix or something, and then uh, Ezio wasn't even in it. He didn't even make it to the lightweights. That's uh, someone that could have been in there, but wasn't. He would have been fun to have, you know, battle. I don't know. Uh... Yeah, he would have been. He would have been fun to have in there. You know, Ezio versus Sam Fisher. Yeah. Sam Fisher probably still wins. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be put up a good fight, all right? He would indeed. Um, Alrighty. And EFAP critiques with subjectivity. Uh, I, 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 they capitalize the S and H at the end of with and critiques. There's a message in there somehow. Hmm. Well, hmm. take those letters and reorganize them, and it'll spell out a secret message. Oh my god. Cool. Uh, I think we can all agree that Gwimbly bodies all of them. Yeah, I didn't put Gwimbly in because I figured it'd be pointless. Like, uh, Wouldn't be fair. You know, explaining it to people as well is would just be too difficult. Wait, is Gwimbly one of the champed up characters that one of us invented? No, he's <laughs> Smiling Fred's character. Though I could totally imagine us Drawing him in, uh, you can't up. Gimble, Gwimbly. Uh, no metal, fortify your mind. Hey, fortify your mind. That's fortify like a multiverse mind. of madness, right? Yeah, multiverse Wong of madness. That and, and it doesn't work. Fortify your mind. I it didn't remember. work though. No, it didn't. Everything got fucked up. <laughs> Uh, hey everyone, Synthetic Man made a critique of the Fallout show. For some reason he was angry at the race-mixing propaganda in it. Oh, what will he think of next? Um, yeah, I think loads of people... Race-mixing up... propaganda is how he would probably phrase it. Yeah, of course. The the uh, the more he makes videos like that, the more people become aware of him. He's, uh... He could end up He's being wild, a mall cow, like, for a certain, you know... The material is there. All the material is there. And he does have funny reactions, like insane reactions. So um, it just doesn't surprise me at all that he would he would say that about Fallout. <laughs> That's the commentary, you know? That's what we have to say about it. Uh, where are we? So how much research was made? For example, if you took a comic character, do you track from the movies you know, or did you check the canon comic line? Um, the 192 plus characters, because of course I had to shave a few off to get the numbers right and uh, entertain switching ones out. It was more so done uh, with whatever the general knowledge was and then an, uh, an assumption that hopefully we can fill in blanks with Google searches and stuff because I mentioned on, I think, uh, either Open Bar or Real BBC that it would have been impossible for me to familiarize myself enough with that many different IPs over the course of a couple of days with the amount of work I've got to do anyway. So it was more so just a fun thing where we try our best to uh, understand the characters as we go. The irony, of course, is that some of them were underpowered and some of them were overpowered. For example, Unicron, um, you, that's only his, like, most powerful, like, that, that's the most powerful, powerful, powerful version when we could easily have gone, as we did with some other characters, with a uh, lower-powered version. Which, um, if we did, you know, who knows what results would have uh, would have ended up with. But, yeah, there was no way I was going to be able to be hyper familiar with everything that's why we had a big cast and so uh you know did did our yeah. best with what we could but it was definitely gaps yeah, in knowledge 
what do you do if a name pops up and it's like, I don't know who this is. I don't know. Did they make the, a movie about happened him for some people. And, uh, you, well, you know, yeah, like the happens. Flash. Someone might not know anything about his stuff, but they'll, they'll be able to grasp pretty quickly his you're powers. Like, oh, well, we know all about the Flash. Right? Well, we saw and... the movie. Um, uh, the, the, oh, sh it's the Flash. Yeah. <laughs> what was the last Flash movie? The Flash? The Flash. Here comes, here comes the Flash. Right? Yeah. Here comes the Flash, and it lost a lot of money. So we know, we're experts on the Flash, because we've seen that movie. And generally speaking, like, you could have any and all sources, but um, there was some... Then this is hard to do a rule on, but when someone says, like, oh, but there was one story where the character in a distant, you know, 60s comic became the God Emperor of the Universe and ate planets and stuff, it was like, um... Maybe we don't do that version. Uh, and, and uh, you know, which gets complicated in a popularity contest. Rather, a thing that people will eventually turn into a popularity contest. We, we did what we could to, uh, you know, run it as fair as possible. Um, farewell and adieu to you fair Fleemish massives. Farewell and adieu to you massives of Fleem. Another a beautiful oh, you song. Oh, you fair Flemish massives. Hey, you massives. With your super heroes. <clears throat> Oh. When, when I super chatted on the showdown oh. stream, it was going to be a long boy. I wasn't expecting you to go 12 hours. Sweet crispy critters, give me the long. Yeah, we did. I think I was. I was expecting it to go for a long time. I thought we would have gotten through the lightweights a little bit faster, um, but there's there's just I... equal amount to <laughs> discuss. I feel like that. Yeah. I feel like lightweights is potentially going to be where a huge amount of discussion is because the power levels vary. Uh, there, there's was something the about location. the lower. So, yeah, if, um, if, if you're talking about, like, who would win, like, I mean, Hawkeye or Black Widow, and you're like, well, shit, like, they're actually quite evenly matched in a lot of ways, and what what they do, and they, 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 the thing is, just, you're oh, right. Person has the the way, most time. of the time, it was like, oh, who would win, Unicron, and oh, if he would. Well, yeah, you get that, but yeah, you also get, win. like, Invincible Kill Everything Man versus Invincible Kill Everything Creature. You're like, hmm. Uh... <laughs> well, yeah, that's uh, that's when it starts to get it. Because I guess what was interesting is dealing with the idea of well, what happens when both of the rules of the universe essentially ordain that uh, they cannot be defeated. It's like, well, which one, which one wins out, right? That was kind of the conversation we had with like Saitama versus the Mummy. Yeah, it's um, it's like, what does it mean for both rules to essentially be respected? Then, then, what does it mean for who wins? This is where it gets really complicated. When there's like no filling in for that in their own law, like a particular move, say, uh, uh, you know, psychic protection. A serious punch, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> what effect does that have? Is that powerful enough to effectively destroy that entity? So you kind of have to. Well, a lot of them went down to just chat votes because ultimately it was like, I mean, it's just up to you guys who you think wins. <laughs> That's right. Now it's on your head. Yes. They voted that Goku defeated Superman, which upset a lot of other people. Because apparently Superman I don't even know where to begin on that, honestly. Because <laughs> I, I know very little about Goku. Other than it takes him fucking Me, forever yeah, to do everything. It here, he has to charge up or something. Uh... He has to charge up his spirit bomb, and then he has to Kamehameha. Well, it, it sounds like you know a little Kamehameha. bit. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know some stuff. About, uh, about Goku. Yeah, I guess. He goes Super Saiyan, and yeah. his hair turns blonde. Mm. Yeah. Nice stuff. I'm, you, could, <laughs> I, 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 you know what? Maybe I am an expert. Um, of the three PS2 GTAs, which one did you think had the best story and characters? Also, please do your best OG lock impression. Lock? Like Halo? Lock? I don't know. L -O -K -L -O -C? I doubt it. Is he a GTA character? Uh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Loke. Oh. Oh, Tone Loke. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, we, we could do impressions of him. <laughs> 1.2 billion... OG Loke. I like that a few people thought that it was John Locke. It's like, yeah, yeah that's, that's, John Locke. that's actually who comes to my <laughs> name first when you say Locke. Was the, yeah. the, 
It was John Locke. That was when you said Locke. Liberal. I was like, wait, did I actually want it? Yeah, John Locke. <laughs> He's like, do you have a no, mysterious classical liberal impression? Communism ho! He's a minor antagonist in San Andreas. Yeah, he had a high pitched voice. That's that's what I remember about. I can't, I can't quite remember how he he spoke. I have no idea what he sounds like. I'm afraid. Uh, you uh, totally Epstein forgot was a minor San antagonist. Andreas. Um, I've forgotten a lot of it. Yeah. Oh man, that's a you got to replay it. You got to replay San Andreas. Yeah, get and when you do, get in a line, Penny. Yeah, you gotta say, oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> I know that one. You got to walk well, down the you alley. Sure. You got to walk down the alley. You just gotta... I, I feel like some Tenpenny quotes should get more appreciation. Tenpenny's funny. He says a lot of funny things. Because <laughs> it's Samuel L. Jackson, so of course he does. Oh. It was kind of an interesting era for Grand Theft Auto when you could just expect celebrities to show up uh, in voice roles. That didn't really happen as much as uh, time went on. I think it was because I actually had negative experiences uh, working with some of the celebrity voice actors for the games. So they, yeah, like they maybe they learned they that. come from just a different world. Like, oh, this and is it, the this is the fun video game world that's weird and wacky. You come from the weird anal professional world of a real actory, quote unquote, real acting. So. I can't remember the stories, but I know that yeah, like I I remember I remember like watching a video that was talking about that there were there was like friction um, when dealing with uh, some of the voice actors that they got. Uh, Lord of the Rings fun fact. When Aragorn does his for Frodo charge, the lyrics the choir sings are his promise to Frodo in Fellowship in Rivendell. Uh, if by my life or death I can protect you, I will. Well, neat. I didn't know that. I did not know that. That's neat. Uh, do your best goblin caught on tape. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I... Goblin caught on tape! Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, probably that. it's like it's like it's, it's got the. Did you think it's there, them doing it, or is it? Uh, it would be Michael Cusack. He he'd be doing that one. Sounds like him. Oh, I thought you meant like something different it... when you said impression <laughs> of a goblin caught on tape. Do an impression <laughs> of what it would be like for a goblin to be caught on tape. <laughs> that's what I. <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah, all the other sent... little goblins are trying to pull him off. I was sent a meme where it was like a, a day in the life of a goblin and he's just like on the front cover just smiling and he's walking around and the second slide is just some people see him pointing and go, ew, a goblin, let's stay away from him. And then he has a sad oh. face and then it says later that oh. night he died. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <It's sweet. laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Such a sad story. Why? That is a sad story. And anyone who comes up with it is a sad person. You just, it's just, you know, if you catch a goblin on tape, treat him well. Maybe he'll treat you well, you know? It's just a bit of prejudice it can go so far in a negative direction. Um, check out the three Egyptian god cards from Yu-Gi-Oh! Which is your favorite? Also read the descriptions. Yo! What a great... Yo, hold, hold up. I can, um, I can... I have them. I own them. I have the... Um, I have the King's Court... The trio of the King's Court Pharaoh Secret Rare uh, Egyptian God cards. Hold up, I have them in a display case. Just a second, just a second. Okay. Red Gully, hold up. He I sounds real excited. Okay, yeah. I remember he cares about Yu Gi Oh! You and I do not, right? I don't know anything about Yu Gi Oh! You. Oh my god. Yeah, oh. I got him. Okay. Uh, let me put on my little headphones now. All right. I can read, so in order. We have Slifer the Sky Dragon, Obelisk the Tormentor, and the Winged Dragon of Ra. Remember to put the, the is on the card. The Winged Dragon of Ra, right? Um, Slifer the Sky Dragon. Oh, it's in the case, I guess. Got a little, um, I gotta get a light, actually. Phone ho! I'm gonna read you the, all right, here's the light. In the display case, I don't catch the light very well. All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm so excited. These look so great. They have the little holographic. Uh, these ones have they have the the foiling has little Egyptian hieroglyphs that show up in the foiling because it's a very special rarity that looks super cool. 
All right. Slide for the Sky Dragon. Requires three tributes to normal summon. Cannot be normal set. Of course. Right? This card's normal summon cannot be negated. Mm -hmm. When normal summoned, cards and effects cannot be activated. Once per turn, during the end phase, if this card was special summoned, send it to the graveyard. Gains 1,000 attack and defense for each card in your hand. If a monster, a monster, monsters, is normal or special summoned to your opponent's field and attack position, that monster loses 2,000 attack. Then, if its attack has been reduced to zero as a result, destroy it. He's got, so um, that's, uh, got two mouths, huh? In his mouth. He does kind of have two mouths, yeah. He's got, he's got an upper mouth and he's got a lower mouth. As uh, some of us do in a more mostly um, like um, metaphorical way. Uh, next up, we have Obelisk the Tormentor. He's also a divine beast. Naturally. Requires three tributes to normal summon. Cannot be normal set. This card's normal summon cannot be negated. When normal summoned, cards and effects cannot be activated. Neither player can target this card with card effects. Once per turn, during the end phase, if this card was special summoned, send it to the graveyard. You contribute two monsters, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. This card cannot declare an attack the turn this effect is activated. And I think of the three cards, Obelisk is the one that saw the most competitive play because he negates the effects of cards. Because Yu-Gi-Oh! is awful horrific magical bullshit nowadays. Uh, and then we have the Winged Dragon of Raw, also a divine beast. Cannot be special summoned. Requires three tributes to normal summon. Cannot be normal set. This card's normal summon cannot be negated. When normal summoned, other cards and effects cannot be activated. When this card is normal summoned, you can pay life points so that you only have 100 left. This card gains attack and defense equal to the amount of life points paid. You can pay 1,000 life points and then target one monster on the field and destroy that target. So... Yeah. Oh, also, Obelisk the Tormentor has 4,000 attack, 4,000 defense, and the others are based off of, you know, their effects. Well. So those are the three Egyptian god cards. Those are, uh, I really, I love these. These are some of my favorites that I have. They're not as good uh, as I Exodia, though, great. are they? Um, depends on the deck you're playing. I don't actually know much about the state of, like, a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh these days. You've come a long way from Mechanical Chaser. But um, I don't know. I don't know what the state of Exodia is nowadays, if that's actually a competitive deck or if it's mostly a semi-meme deck or one that people just play for fun. Rags, what but, is your yeah, favorite my summoning mechanic? Is it Fusion, Synchro, XYZ, or Link? I don't know the, the latter three. I do not know about those. Those are way after I left Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, Fusion is neat in theory, but it took a long time for Fusion cards to actually be worth a damn because it would cost... Well, think about it, right? You're, you're, you want to use as few cards as possible to actually do things. So you want to have what's called card advantage, which is like having more cards and having a better like board position than the other player. So a fusion monster requires at least two monsters that you have to have. Then you have to have polymerization or some other polymerization, you know, added you know, added later. And those three cards become one card. So you're spending three to get one essentially. So you're losing a lot of potential value by having to use all of those to set one up. But in theory, I like the idea. Um, there were some really good fusion monsters. I think Thousand Eyes Restrict was one from the early days. And I think he was based off of... Was the Ritual one? I forget him. He was one of the early Ritual monsters. Ritual monsters are, are neat too. By the way, there's a lot of neat mechanics. But that's in a lot of card games where there's like a neat mechanic that doesn't, it isn't super competitive. Um, but I don't know, I guess of those, I kind of like the idea of fusion the most, taking two and fusing them together to create one other thing, but I guess that's where I go there. All right. But yeah, happy to, happy to get, I need to put this back on the wall. I love these cards very much. They look great, but I'll be, I'll be right back. Carry on, carry on. Opinion on Pot of Greed rags? Oh, oh I got a Pot of Greed, one of the originals, uh, the original Pot of Greed's back home. Uh, that's an insane card. Just to, just for, for you two, Pot of Greed is a magic card that says, draw two cards. And it's been, like, banned since forever. It's been, like, super mega banned. Because a card that just says, draw two cards is insanely powerful. You spend a card, and then you draw two, which means you're going through three cards in your deck to get what you need to get. 
So that that's like nuts. It's crazy that you can draw two cards. So yeah. they would have other cards like like Graceful Charity would be draw three and discard two, and that's really really good. And I I think that's even limited now. But being able to draw cards is an insanely powerful mechanic in games, both like Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, because being able to go through your deck, which normally would have the minimum cards you're allowed, which is forty in Yu-Gi-Oh, I believe, it's just it's super powerful. So yeah. Um, on agree. There we go. So I'm gonna say Graceful Charity is banned. Yeah, doesn't surprise me. To be able to go through three and discard two, and one of the reasons is because there's so many there's so many mechanics that go through or deal with cards that are in your graveyard and using those to bring them back or using those as fuel for other cards and essentially cards that are in your graveyard. It's like it's essentially just like having a second deck that you can play with when you build around it. So discarding cards is often a a hyper advantage it's not a disadvantage so that's why i'm not surprised at all that graceful charity's banned remember regeki yeah regeki destroys all the uh monsters on your opponent's side of the field uh i think i've got one i think i've got one but good stuff anyway let me put this up i'll be right back all, all right cars hey you're lovely so nice son to watch uh <laughs> just say your names how you would if you were Pokemon. I picture Mola Pokemon as taking a long time to say it, like slow bro, but different reasons Fringy seems like you'd say his fast. Yeah. Oh, oh, like the way that the Pokemon say their names, right? Yeah. I I see. Because I was like, well, what do you mean? It would just be the name. It's, it's Fringy. But I, I guess, uh, I'm back. how would a Pokemon Fringy say it? How would a Pokemon? Oh, if you were a Fringy, how would you say your name? If you were a Fringy. <laughs> yeah, like if I was a Pokemon saying my name yeah hmm it wouldn't be too cutesy like friggy it wouldn't be like a clefairy or anything like that i mean i was and thinking it, of something like flee me flee to me because that would be like, funny hmm free kind of like, free, well, kind of like free. yeah kind of like, how like a frog kind of funny uh yeah. is that how a frog would like say a, it yeah like that's how that's kind of like a froggy voice because they they do the ribbit so they have like the little nah in their voice you know where it kind of vibrates a bit so yeah, I think so. Mm. Kind of how would pitched. how would Mola sound then? What do you reckon? Well, they reckon it would be Mola. really slow. Yeah, Mola. Oh yeah, hey, we have the same idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. we know you. We know you. Do I speak slowly what about or do I speak what longly? I I just speak normally. Me. I'm just like the uh, meowth. I'm just like the meowth guy. You're I would not just like say meowth. nobody's like meowth. You have to be I, like all the other yes, Pokemon. He is. He yeah, that's. No, we are. I would just no, say you... rags. <laughs> I I like how you've just ordained that you get to sound normal. I do. Well, I don't get to sound normal. I sound Even special Meowth because all the other Pokemons... Kind. I'm one of a kind. Yeah, but in the Pokemon world, there's only one I'm... Meowth. If you there's were inserted many, into all... the Pokemon world... Well, Meowth isn't the only one that can use English. Who's the, what's the other ones? Aren't Lugia and use English? Yo, oh, I've got a Lugia right here. On my Which desk. one's that? That's the... That's the one. He came out in Neo Destiny. I, He's a mascot on. for Silver version. Yeah. It's... I got him and Ho-Oh right here. They're first edition Hall of Oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Right, I, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mewtwo. That's true. Mewtwo does just speak. He says, it doesn't matter where you're from, just be cool, yo. Yeah. Does Lucario also just talk? I, I didn't know that. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised anything. there were a lot more talking ones now than there were. Yeah, true, true, yeah. If a psychic Pokemon communicates with you telepathically, do they speak in English to you, or do you hear English um, when they speak? That's an interesting question. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Never thought about it. I'm sure they've answered that question, right? Or, but without overtly doing it, they Maybe, just have I don't it be know. the case, you know? Yeah, I do not know. Some people say Entei speaks English. I have mm. Entei's here. I've actually got four versions here. I've got, let me scroll, uh... Oh, by the way, I learned, it's Suicune, is how you pronounce the name. I always thought growing up it was Suicune, because, of course, you look at the card, and you're like, oh, Suicune. But it's, it's Suicune, is how you pronounce the name. I think it's uh, based on the Japanese words for ocean and monarch. But I'm not sure. Hmm. But yeah, I got I got four entes right here. Uh the the base, the the two versions from Neo Revelation, the the base rarity, the holofoil, 
I think the Hidden Legends in the Galarian full illustration. He's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. Naturally. No one ever thought it was said that way, Rags. Yeah, we did. I mean, some <laughs> people. Some people. Uh, I was wondering what to have for dinner, Rags, but now I'm having nochi. Nochi. Yes, gnocchi. Up... Oh, gnocchi. Oh, okay. P.S. Yeah. I surround. I grew up surrounded by spaghetti. Neat. <laughs> I grew. Oh, mamma mia! I grew up <laughs> surrounded by a spaghetti. You know, you don't have to be Italian to be surrounded by spaghetti. I... You might be though. <laughs> they would be most likely to be surrounded. I suppose by spaghetti it would be more likely, right? but I, it's not. It, you know, it could be. It They're could baptized. be an Australian. I grew up surrounded by spaghetti. You know. You know they're they're baptized in spaghetti. Well, yeah, everyone knows oh. that. Right? Yeah. Uh, the controls for the They're RC copter narrated in it. In GTA San Andreas is man's inhumanity to man. The controls for the RC copter were they famously horrible? Um, I'm sorry, I'm actually trying to remember like what that was. That the um, oh yeah yeah yeah, Th those were the um. Oh, it was a, it was San Fierro. The uh, what was the guy? The guy whose missions were like weirdly difficult. <laughs> I can't remember his name. Um, neither can oh, I. Damn it. Yeah, like it. It was it was just like this set of just like oddly difficult missions. Um, and you didn't have to do them either, or at least you didn't have to do all of them. But <laughs> like, yeah, that, th those were those were like weirdly difficult. <laughs> Yeah, zero. I think that was uh th those missions. Yeah. Look, yeah. I mean, they like doing these sort of miniature vehicle missions in Grand Theft Auto every now and then with mixed results. Morning or evening, gents. I've been trying to catch up on the episode and law. Currently on EFAP fifty three. Don save me. Also high rags. Oh, hello. Yeah, you've got a ways yeah. to go, but you've made a lot of progress. Plenty of. Uh, big, big old events, plenty of season finales you got. It's gonna, it's gonna be exciting stuff. Uh, non on Japanese reviews did a funny video on Japanese fans' perspective of an episode of Smiling Friends. Fair enough, yeah. Would be very interesting to see what other cultures think of such, uh, such art, you know? Uh, we did, what's your favorite episode from season two so far? Hmm. Let's think here. The new one was pretty damn good. The new one was really funny. <laughs> um, I was particularly um, fond of the the rotoscoping shit. That was fun. I think I think it's uh for me it's actually it's funny. There's all, there's five episodes, but I I wanted to just the three that I think are fighting for the number one spot is uh the Gwimbley one. Uh, the Alan adventure I I quite liked, and uh, and and the most recent one. Though again, I really I really enjoyed the other two as well. I really enjoyed the uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed the worms one. Yeah, um, and the Halloween episode. Yeah, the Halloween episode was funny as well. It, it, it's just it's just been solid. It's been good stuff. It's been. It's been really great. It's cool to see, like, uh, it seems like they do have more money, because uh, animation's been just quite impressive. Like, even in a lot of, like, normal ways. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the first season looked really good. Um, it, it's just that there seem to be these moments where it's like, man, you, you, had, you had more money to mess around with, didn't you? Uh, I'm also adding to the massive pile of messages. Well, thank you. We're gonna oh, get thanks, through them. man. I'm talking about rolling for a dice game. Talking about Farkle. Is that a quote? Oh, Farkle. Farkle is a, a dice game, but it's also the name of a cat that I used to have. My parents used to have a cat before I was born uh, named Farkle mm. a long time ago. So that was the only uh, real pet of that size kind of had growing up. Good old Farkle. Farkle was a good cat. He's a bird terrorizer he was quite the predator in the suburbs well he's well. a good cat uh mr frog was robbed we let that go to a vote you guys voted him out so uh yeah what can we say i i mean i thought mr frog was gonna win i made my i protested for him but 
That was, yeah, yeah that's on you guys. Uh, unfortunate when injustices take place like that, but what can you do? He needed a gleb there to help him out, get him yeah. across the finish line. Uh, would Kirby swallow a black hole and remain the same? I don't know. You'd have to consult people who are more familiar with the Kirby law than I am. Yeah, or I mean, physicists, perhaps. Physicists would know. Yeah, they'd have. They they would have spent a lot of time studying Kirby. I'd imagine. Neither of you played uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, did you? That was fun. That's a fun game. What I land? saw a decent amount of your stream the Forgotten on it. Land looked wholesome. Oh yeah, I can't remember that. It's 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 yeah, it's really fun. That was a fun game. Um, yet another in the long uh, list of Nintendo games that had their best selling entry on Switch because that's what the Switch does for every Nintendo series. It makes them more popular. Yeah, Nintendo. Like to I worry think about, I think it's they? actually every every single game because uh, it's I I think because Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are far and away the best selling Zelda games. I think Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's the best-selling Smash Bros. game. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the best-selling Mario Kart game. Pikmin 4 is the best-selling Pikmin game. Metroid Dread's the best-selling Metroid game. Kirby in the Forgotten Land is the best-selling Kirby game. It's just you run down the list. Every single Nintendo franchise is... It's a reason why I want them to... I, I want the... Why can't they return to... Let's, let's make a Star Fox game that isn't Star Fox 1 again or weird gimmicks. Just make a sequel to Star Fox and release it, and I'm sure everybody will enjoy it. Ah, uh, just do it. When was the last Star Fox game? It was uh, Star Fox Zero on uh, the Wii U, which had like a really bizarre control scheme. Basically, the way it worked is that what you saw on screen um, in terms of targeting was not accurate. The accurate one was the gamepad. So like the gamepad, you would move around... Uh, it was like you move that around to like do or, or do aiming through the gamepad. So it was meant to be that you look up at the screen to figure out where the R wing is, but then you look down at the gamepad to actually like aim and shoot. Um, we really disorienting, lots of really weird controls. Um, and then on top of that, it was just another remake of Star Fox. Like they just keep doing that over and over and over again instead of like making a new, basically like a new game. Because that's basically, I think that's basically what everybody wants. It's just like, do Star Fox that is like, you know, Star Fox and Star Fox 64, but, you know, new levels. Makes sense to me. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. But so does making another F-Zero, and they haven't done that for 20 years. So, <laughs> except for F-Zero 99, I suppose. Uh, the Kirby anime holds up as a cute cartoon. It's a shame it's only f official release a few episodes as extras in a Wii game. Hmm. I didn't uh, know about that. That's the only place you can get it? I didn't know that either. Yeah. I didn't know there was a Kirby anime. I guess it wasn't popular enough on the game to <laughs> go anywhere else, but I do think it was like something that they intended to do something else with and then ended up just getting dropped on the game. Don't hmm. know. Very disappointed Diabeto was not in the Ultimate Showdown. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and he's, like, competitive, too. Full control over Sugar is gonna... Arguably, he, he might be able to take on more than Magneto. Um, mm. it's, it's obviously situational, but most of the people he's against, they have a high enough Sugar content. They have Sugar in them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people argue that the uh, iron in people's blood and the magnetism or whatever in their brain, whatever that was. In the brain, yeah. yeah. I guess it has to be a certain, yeah, concentration, because even Magneto, he needs a certain amount of it, right? Because there's always iron in blood, but in the movie, he had to get the injection to put even well, more iron. Well, that's the movie. Well, that's what I did in the movie, like... yeah. In, the, in his best and most powerful version in the comics, he's probably, uh, he's probably eating planets. They all are. Look up the three Diabetes box... Diabetes definitely eating planets. Look at the three box arts of Mega Man 1. There's the Japanese, European, and American box arts. Which one is your favorite? Probably America's. Um, do you want to check those out, Rags, while I read the next one? Sure. Can you uh, put that down in the text? I see you. Uh, okay, Very good. Let me take a look. I thought it was that one. That's... <laughs> mm? uh, it's just one of them's funny. 
Very well. According to the artist, the American box art for Mega Man 1 was stressfully drawn in under an hour. <laughs> Interesting. Let's see. Mega Man 1 box art. Uh, <laughs> and have you heard that Walking with Dinosaurs is getting a reboot releasing next year? It'd be a good time soon to react to the OG and WWBs too. Yeah, I mean, that's that would be the next one to do after Monsters for the uh, the chronology. But, I mean, you know, getting a remake, that would be interesting to see what they come up with, I suppose. Assuming oh. it's not horrible. <laughs> it's oh, my goodness. Rags. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excited. This is the American box art. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Well, hastily drawn in an hour is what was said, so. You got to oh. go for that minimalism if you're going with the... Uh... Uh, I feel kind of bad that so, he was he was like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> this is the best I could do. This is the original Japanese box art. I think what's funny about it is just like a complete it's it's just like a complete misread of, of like the intention <laughs> behind the character design. You know? It's just completely wrong. Well to the point where you're like, what it's, did you tell him? Like <laughs> It's so clearly and like I don't you just told an American guy like the general premise of the character and he's like he has a gun on his on his I, I, okay, I'll give him a gun. <laughs> How's that? Uh it's and this so year funny. This year, that's the, the that's the much much better much better box art there the 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 rock man uh, uh, there we go and here we have the PlayStation box art which I like quite a lot it's my favorite so far you know yeah I, think I really like that I dig it well, yeah that that's that's when they've fi you know essentially figured it out like they've you know, unified and, and and determined like, ah, yeah, that's what Mega Man is. That's what he looks like. And here we have the European box art. Wow. Mm. That is... Yeah, no, it's the, the cartoon, that's, man. That's, that's, that's powerful. the one. Powerful. Yeah. And, and still, Einstein cartoon, is very upset at, uh, at what he's doing. He's contemplative. That's not Einstein. It's not Einstein. Einstein is right. very upset. Crazy that Einstein is a Mega Man. Uh, Dr. Einstein. Yeah. Okay. He well, made all those robots. We call them the uh, Steinbots. Steinbot for uh, Einstein. Dude, that robots. American one is so funny. It's so <laughs> awful. <laughs> Only the Americans could produce a box. I kind of, though, I don't know, you kind of want to have it, though. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I got oh, it. Yeah. It's hilarious. I have an original. Uh, <laughs> it is so interesting how, like, a, a general thing that you can notice of the difference between, like, Japanese and American box art is the American box art, the character's usually angrier. That's just like he a has, He's angry and with a gun. <laughs> He's yeah, yeah like I think I think um the noteworthy one is that with Kirby games, a lot of them, the the Japanese one is just Kirby being happy, and usually the American one, he's angry mm -hmm. or determined. If you want to, you know, determined yeah. and ready to go. Uh, hey Rags, what's your opinion on the design of Pseudo Regalia's protagonist? Also, great game. All right, here we go. Pseudo Regalia. Protagonist. Sybil? Um Oh god. <sighs> okay. Well, let me get you a picture here. I gotta decide which what I gotta decide which picture. You got multiple options, huh? Um you could say that. So I guess that's from the game. There are many different artistic renditions of this character. We'll call it that. Um, you know what? I'll just leave that to the imagination and post the post the character here. That's Sybil. I guess she's right. like a a bunny. She looks like she's a bunny lady, and she's got some lightning horns coming out of her head there, and she's got a little shirt, and she's got some shoes. 
and she looks like she's she means business and some of this art here she's she's definitely doing the business that is that is for certain look at her go i'm glad she's having a good time All um, right. i don't know i don't know seems fine yeah it seems fine to me i suppose you'd hang out with her i yeah we'd hang out we'd talk about stuff we'd talk about Do you, you play know Tetris with cards and spaghetti uh i would well, it's mostly a one-person game, isn't it? I mean, you could, like, you know, hot-seat it. Big yeah, that's true. We could hot-seat it, like the good old days. Give each other pointers. Yeah. Yeah, um, sort our blocks. Do do. I went to Trungo's while I was in D.C. a couple weeks ago. Food was delicious, and the Whoa. owner gave me a free mac and cheese and a wine glass. He named the place after a farmer he saw on the internet. <laughs> what? <laughs> farmer he saw on the Baba internet. Trungo. It's all this farmer on the internet. Oh, Farmer Trungo. So, uh, and the final rating is 17 out of 10. And they say, go to Trungo's. Damn. Well served, apparently. Uh, can't go wrong with some cheese, and mac and cheese in a wine glass. That's, that's, that's definitely a yeah. Trungo staple, you know? Did you get the chickpea grumbo, though? Yeah, that's really the true ultimate challenge. Uh, Soul is discount Qui Gon Jin. I mean, like, like I was trying to be no. nice in our coverage in terms of just Soul is like he's got something going on. Mainly, I think is drawn um, from. He is, he is really incompetent, though. They're all really incompetent. Soul, Soul having like the the he has expressions of guilt, like oh that's that's like character something. It's yeah, like the baseline, he, though. Unlike a lot of the characters in the show, he doesn't. He's not cringe. There's, there's no like cringe, you know, emanating from him. You know uh, yeah, what I mean? I think that's fair. Yeah, I, don't yeah, know, yeah. I just find that show to be like intensely cringy. Um, but he's not cringy. It's, it's more so just that. Unfortunately, I know that the obviously the actor is trying really hard. It's just that the writing is not helping. <laughs> like it's, it's just not doing that character any favors. It's um. It's almost like, you know, like like she's uh, was Jackie, I think her name is. She has to like show up the other Jedi uh, Yord, and mm -hmm. you gotta get a good mm -hmm. dialogue if you're gonna do that in a way that we can enjoy it. But uh, do you remember when like so, I can't, I can't do it. Some of the things that she's said like haven't been anything close to like either witty, funny, or just a really good observation. The uh, the three that come to mind, right? It's like put your clothes on. It's like. He is. So what do you? You know yeah, what I mean? He's like just also, it's just a. He's just doesn't. He's not wearing a shirt. Go put a shirt on. Not put your clothes on. No one looks at someone who who is normally dressed just without a shirt and says, "Put your clothes on." You say, "Put a shirt on." I just. Then I mean, again, was... this is a universe far, far away. So. And then Galaxy there's the uh, far, far away. when she says, uh, "People have been here in the ship," which. Uh... <laughs> That was hilarious. It's, this you, you're uh, walking inside yeah. of a spaceship, and it's like people have been here. It's like no shit, people. And have that's been the thing: if, if, if the writer were here right now, and, and they were like, "No, she means people have clearly been in the post crash." It's like, yeah, well, you gotta fucking be specific then. You gotta just be like, be people have been in this and spaceship. Also, also, I don't believe that she would just know that. I feel like you'd have to explain to me how you would know that after the crash, people would have been there. Yeah, I think that, and that actually is a chance like to show maybe, some uh, insight. Yeah, like, oh, they, the, the, it's been there long enough to where snow has kind of fallen, and they notice like footprints on the inside yeah. of the ship with foot, you know, snow footfalls. So you're like, oh, after the crash, people got up and you know moved around, or something else. I don't know. That's that's why writing isn't necessarily easy. You have to sit down and problem solve with your words on the paper. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll have to see how it all turns out, but you got that, uh, like, Yord has been unimpressive as well, and then all the plans they've all come up with, obviously Carrie Ann Moss, we had her for like five seconds, and she annoyed everybody. That's, that's unbelievable, like, I can't believe, it's just what like, a yeah, wonder. For a, yeah. a couple of minutes, and then that's you done. What a and, 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 and with, be like, well, yeah, you expected that she was going to be in it for longer, aren't you surprised? It's like, yeah, I guess I'm surprised. Yeah, you I'm fucking that shocked. That wasn't a good idea. But, you did it. Right. You surprised me. Congratulations. You did it. Good job. 
There's that, but there's also, in the few minutes of characterization, almost everyone I've seen cover the episode was like, why was she so shit? Like, why did she I mean, let everyone yeah, get beat up? Why did she allow so many people get hurt for so long? So, all just says something about character, but they wanted their fight scene to play out. They wanted it to be long and drawn out. Well, I just hate their, I, their version. In every episode. Their version of Stoic sucks. Where it's just like, even when uh, innocent yeah, people are getting boring. hurt, you just sort of slowly stand up like, ah, you perhaps but, are like, a threat. I don't even know where that, where does that even come from? Like, in the, in the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy, the Jedi are pretty, like, proactive in a sense, you know what I mean? Like, they, it's like, they'll get into a fight well, okay. fairly quickly. You know, um, when they're heading back to the ship to leave for Coruscant and, uh, uh, Qui-Gon spots Darth Maul's um, yeah. little fucking speeder. He's like, Anakin, drop! Like, because he's like, oh shit, you might be in danger. Get out of the way of it, and then pulls exactly. his lightsaber out straight away. He doesn't go, hmm, what is this situation? Maybe I should engage him in, in close quarters, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah, and, and like, Qui-Gon's known as, like, the quintessential the sort of stoic Jedi, so I don't know. Hmm. I, yeah, like, I don't know, it's just like this weird, like, it's it's not good for that character that she allowed so many people to get hurt before actually intervening. And I mean, of course, she should have won. I don't even know how she yeah. didn't win. Well, I know how she didn't win, because she didn't draw a lightsaber until, like, way closer to the end. She didn't just use the Force and win immediately. Yep. Which seems to be a big issue with this show. Well, I mean, it's the same thing, right? Soul grabs her later on, and then it's just like, why don't you just do that? But, like, I don't know, two of you do that so that she definitely can't escape. You know, that... I can't, dude. It's... <laughs> that could have been a way to, like, have the investigation get, like, an angle on it that's interesting, that we don't see how the fight went. We just know that she killed uh, that was... Indara, and we're like, hmm. Dude, and then they, he fights... they have no restraint. He fights her and easily wins, and he's just like... There's no way you beat Indara. Something else happened. And, like, that could be part of the reveal is that she did lose, but then the Smiler Ren guy comes in. You know, mm. just something the, the to flavor is, it up. The, the idea that it was going to be an investigation is, is like, comical. Yeah. But, but I, I, I am, like, still truly shocked by just, like, the idea that they have for this story that, you know, you, you pitch it as, oh, we got to investigate who did this, but like every aspect everything's been like revealed essentially like straight away you know who did it you know that it's twins which again is is hilarious um you know exactly how it played out and all of the characters know that too there's no mystery really at all um or, or rather the mystery because this is disney star wars it's always got to be some crazy revelations about the world building and the lore it can never just be a mystery that the small scale, low stakes, um, and pertains to the characters. What's funny is uh, because people are comparing it to when Vader fought Reva, right? And it's like, yeah, but I can actually buy that more that Vader was like, I don't need my lightsaber to beat you, you know, because he's yeah, because Darth got, Vader got a bit of ego going on there, yeah, for sure, which is totally yeah. fine. But the idea that our stand-in for super stoic Jedi is like, I will not use my lightsaber to prove I'm better than you. Like, like, remember the whole thing of. Uh, they already pull out a lightsaber if they intend to kill line, and then they later get it out as a, <laughs> uh, a flashlight. Yeah. Like, it, it, yeah, it's the kind of shit that... Uh, pretty funny. There's obviously no redrafting happening. Why would you even entertain the idea nope. that there is? I, I like You the... can't kill a Jedi with weapons. <laughs> yeah, blades don't kill a Jedi. Oh, it was funny, yeah, dude. On, the first um, thing we see is someone killed by a knife. On FNT, a, like, oh, Ryan yeah. was talking about how wouldn't the line have been so much better if what he was referring to by Jedi when he said he can't, you know, like topple them with a blade or a laser is like the order itself. And uh, the, an individual Jedi, of course, can be taken down by all sorts of weapons, but the idea, the, the institution is going to take a lot more than that. It's like, that would make a lot more sense. But unfortunately, it's just not what he said. He said, you can't kill a Jedi with blades. And she it's like... makes it very clear as well that she has to do it without using a weapon. Otherwise, she's going to, it's like, she's going to get in trouble. It's very, it's very much not metaphorical. It is yeah. literal. This um, doesn't line up very well with Order 66. No. Because <laughs> all those Jedi were killed with weapons. Lot they got of lasers. Shot. Yeah, the <laughs> they got shot in the face. Doing, 
whatever they're doing is probably not going to be the Sith. It's going to be some new thing that they've invented. That would be my guess. Oh yeah, whatever, like they were Sith and the, uh, the acolyte be... is is not the Sith. It'll be it'll be kind of like kind of like what the I mean, Night the Sisters show. were, right? You've created the some new thing. Yeah, the ones in Ahsoka, people were like, "No, those aren't Sith. Those are some." You know, I can't. Well, that's what I mean. I think that they want to. I, I just, they're gonna come for the old Republic eventually, guys. Don't you worry. They'll be. Yeah. When this era doesn't everything. pan out for them, and it won't, they will head back there as well and plunder it for all it's worth. You guys remember, um, at the beginning of the Obi Wan Kenobi show, they did that huge, like, three minute previously on for all the prequels. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I do. Yes, oh, I yeah, do. yeah, yeah. I we do. were talking yeah. about that. Yeah. They, and they were just, completely like, they were changed the music, you. and and it, it was the most like, good God, that was like the the hydraulic press of the squeezing every last piece of juice out of the prequels, and they're gone. They're dead. It's it's crusted over. So yeah, they they got to find more things to do, and anything you think is safe, they're coming. Nothing is mm. safe, except. I mean, like, in a way, Andor is safe, because they can't... They're not going to pillage anything from Andor, I don't think. No, there's no point. it's just not... Yeah, like, there's no point in them taking things from Andor. The fact so that I think Andor Tony Gilroy's in, in charge of safe. Season 2, it, from what we've seen, everyone's very happy with how Season 2 has been created, who's involved in it, and that's the end of the story. So hopefully it just ties off, and it can't be destroyed. It's a small, yep. nice little I thing. And yeah, it's nice. uh, it's not popular enough for them to try and pillage it, you know, to to be like, we're gonna start up a new show inside Andor. Like, no, we're not gonna do that. Mm. Andor is um, a little oasis away from all the the crazy chaos, the desert of content out there. Look at Someone him. Someone said, "Did you see Order sixty six Big Max? Why does that sound familiar?" Did I see it? Order sixty six. Well, that, Order sixty six. Was, was that a movie tie-in? <laughs> it was. It was a meme. The the uh, I forget who said it all. I think it was Jeremy read it from uh, chat on FNT. It was really funny. It was about the, the Chuggo Jedi. Oh, the meme! I saw the meme in the yeah. I don't. <laughs> That's a 66. really good meme. When you are hungry and you wait for order sixty six from McSheev. McSheev. <laughs> Did you see the meme and the EFAT memes? Here, I'll just post it here because I got it. We can show the people at home. <laughs> we can show the good people at home. <laughs> yeah, this is the guy. I, it's just hard to believe with the Jedi training that you could. But hey, also, why is it sing so long to load? There it is. Takes too long to load. Ugh. Good Discord, it's not my internet. That's a good meme. It's a quality meme. There have been a, there's there's already been some quality high tier memes when it comes to the acolyte. <laughs> well, I mean the, the, this one the they're fucking evil actually that stuff. Yeah, I've been seeing. I'll be honest with you, format. I'm a little surprised how uh, engaged everyone is with uh, commenting on the acolyte. I've actually kind of been like surprised that everyone is torn. Almost all the plot apart. You know how um, I've commented on it before, but both Captain Marvel and the Marvels, it felt like people didn't really care about the plot at all. Not much discussion well, no, on it. A lot of no matter. one cared about the plot. There was nothing to yeah. But uh, the acolyte, like I've just everybody's been talking about how the investigation is balls. The traveling around the world is balls. The the way that they approached their uh, their lead, the, you know, the guy in the uh, uh, like potion shop, whatever the fuck. Uh, like, all of it didn't make any sense. The way that the two Jedi have been killed, what it said about their characters, the obvious um, backstory that's totally not going to make sense with everything we've seen so far. I was just like, man, everyone is um, hyper-vigilant with this one in terms of just, you're, this the story is bad. And it's only two episodes in. The space fire, mm. yeah. <laughs> Which means it's going to get worse from here because the more, the longer that the story goes on, the more that they're going to screw up. Yeah. It's just going to start and, um, to add up and collapse, and you know, it's it's like new contradictions keep arising. the The space fire is like it's not actually like important or anything, but looking at it in terms of it's sort of indicative of something else: mm -hmm. a lack of care and a lack of concern for opportunity and what you could tell with story, you know, could do with storytelling. That's sort of the big issue with. You know the the space fire is you could have we we talk about it in our um 
our, yes. our coverage, um, which was very fun to watch. Episode one is out, but by the, the way, idea, if anyone wants to see it. That's right, everyone. I'm really surprised, though, by, like, how much that's dominated yeah. <laughs> the discussion around. Like, in terms of any one element of the show that is, like, disproportionately talked about, it's that, which I find fascinating. It might be nobody's fault. It's literally just one person responds to another person responds to responds, 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 responds I think and, you know, so. and just explodes. Yeah, it's like, everybody gets dragged into talking. I just, I don't, like, I'd rather talk about how other things that are wrong with that show, that's all. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, there's a lot that's wrong with it. Aside from that, <laughs> you know what it is, right? It just we gotta get, we gotta, we gotta put little uh, breadcrumbs of her trauma and her history because that's gonna become a huge plot point. Uh, how do we have it? Mm. We can't just have her do it. We gotta have something that triggers it. It's like fire because the forest burns mm. down. It's like yeah, that'll do it. Can we get some fire going? It's like well, yeah, they're in space. They're on a spaceship. We can just get some fault. There you go, Do you done. think that they ever, ever entertain the idea of maybe not showing that until, like, maybe episode five, no. that she has some, like, trauma, instead of in, in the first scene that she's in? It's um, something that is pretty consistent across these shows that we often get still surprised by every time, which is the whole, um, oh, wow, they've already banked on this. Damn, that was quick. Okay. Mm. And I think it's just because no we're restraint. still in a mode sometimes of... Our basic understanding of television stories is that you you build up, you know, because you have the time, you can do that. But they still don't, and you know, admittedly, um, they're very short shows. So, I uh, we talked about it in episode two. This problem that seems to exist in Disney Star Wars, the Marvel shows, um, and a lot of other bad shows that have come out recently as well, like the big budget shows. Almost like this this weird attitude that something massive has to happen in every episode. You can never just have a normal episode that's building blocks. There's always got to be some big dramatic clash between characters. There's got to be this big bombastic action scene, this crazy reveal. You can never just have a regular episode of TV. Um, which, when you watch all of the good TV shows that everybody, like, widely r agrees are good, that are of this format, you know, hyper-serialized, r relatively short seasons. It's not like something crazy happens every episode. People remember the crazy stuff that happens, but an important aspect of that is all of the building blocks that were laid in the prior episodes that aren't as memorable, but they're important. Because um, the problem with these ones is it's it's like... It's part of the reason why it feels like we've already a huge amount of the story has already happened, even though it's only two episodes in, is because there's always crazy shit that has to happen every episode. There's gotta be crazy fight scenes, massive revelations, and it can never just be like a normal episode of television. No it You know, can't. compared to Andor, for instance, right? Where like Andor has big um, you know, I guess what you would call action sequences, like every three or four episodes, well, yeah, basically. I mean, everyone understood when watching it up. that Andor's goal was, we got this big thing we want to do, so uh, we're going to have to do a few episodes beforehand to build up to it. Like, it, everyone could see Andor's right through it as arcs. Andor's the only one that actually takes advantage of, uh, of the episodic format of television, whereas Disney, most of the Disney Star Wars shows, it's... That it it's not like it's not that they're like movies because they're not it's it's something it's like some other problem. Well, it's bad writing, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just, they don't know how to do it. Like they can't do it. This show will have an action scene every episode, and yep. they'll all be terrible. Yep. Yeah. I was gonna say there might be a lot of them, Frankie, but at least they're terrible. Something as well that's a weird um. It's a really bizarre, like, trend in Marvel shows and Disney shows is there's always, like, one sort of, like, flashback spirit quest episode, like, pretty consistently. There's always, like, one episode that's essentially, like, a big flashback. WandaVision had one, um, uh, yeah, WandaVision had one, Ahsoka had one, um, I, it's annoying me that Miss Marvel had one. Moon Knight. Um, Moon Knight had one. Um, it's it's usually like episode hey, four. Hey, Bly or Manor five had one. <laughs> yeah, but it was really good. good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at least so that one was good. Damn it! It's so it's so well, to be fair, the, the Moon Knight one was formulaic. like not terrible. The Moon Knight oh, that, one was the episode good. five one. Um, yeah, it was. Or it, it was, was it was okay. It had some good moments in it. Um, but I'm I'm speaking more so to like there just seems yeah, to be yeah. this trend that they can't. 
they can never it, it can never be that the audience gets caught up to like where they need to be through more conventional means of telling the story there's always got to be a big all right let's just drop all of the information here for them okay you caught up all right now time for the big battle that's really bad at the end of the season remember moon knight ending with that big kaiju fight kaiju fight yeah God damn! That what a awful. disappointment! Man, I actually I can't went into believe that the with some expectations. Well, the first <laughs> episode was like, okay, all right, we're doing something here. Yeah, you but know, then not great, kind of not bad. It's like, large. okay, you're you have our interest, and then it like instantly. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah. shit. Well, uh, look at him, poor Fringy, hung up on the cross. Weep for him. He just wanted his cheese. Also, hi, Rags, and Mola, <laughs> you big old flumbus. Hello. Hello. Lord of the Rings trilogy is playing in theaters this week, a year late on anniversary, lol, and I got my tickets to Two Towers Return of the King. I was three when Two Towers came out. Wow. Well, I Long mean... Long time ago. It's just, you hear about it a lot, people rewatching Lord of the Rings both at home and in theaters, because, man, it's just a real good experience. People... I've rewatched The Rings of Power season one, in, 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 including the people. Do you think people. the people who said um, it on Twitter? Does it not feel like it was a good show on Twitter? Of rewatching, even though Lord of the Rings has always been highly regarded, uh, over the course even of EFAP existing, I feel like everyone's general perception of Lord of the Rings has just trickled up. I think um, what's happened is that um, a lot of, I guess, what you would call like the big blockbuster films have kind of been reappraised. Yeah. Um, compared to the ones that we're getting now, to, to where, to where like, even Michael Bay's reputation has sort of been rehabilitated a little bit. Like, people, you know, to where now people would be more willing to say, like, well, hey, there was some, you know, fun action scenes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that what used to be what people would point to as, like, ah, yeah, this is, like, the worst of what you can expect from a summer blockbuster would be, like, a Transformers movie. Uh, they did get truly awful as time went on. Um, <laughs> but, but, truly. Like, more so than even the earlier ones, like, you know, well, the earlier one, Transformers 1, um, or, you know, like, like, obviously, some of the older films, right, like Armageddon or The Rock. It's it's just like, hmm, hmm, you know? <laughs> yeah, and uh, being able and to directly compare. And Lord of the Rings, I think, that, yeah. You can watch Lord of the Rings yeah, whenever exactly. you want, so if you watch it side by side with one of the newest sort um, of stuff, you might well, be like, ooh, wow. It's kind of a frustrating thing that, um, you know, like, almost like the defense of Marvel stuff is like, well, yeah, but these are like superhero films, they're stupid and dumb anyway, like, what do you expect? Mm. And almost like trying to remind people, like, no, um, the blockbuster films that were viewed as, you know, I guess lesser compared to other films for whatever reason, those films were better consistently, you know, years and years ago. It, like, the, the quality, and, and that's a problem as well, because those are like the films that the average moviegoer is more likely to watch. So a decline in the quality of those films is potentially going to have drawbacks on the industry broadly on the smaller films. Yeah, if the perception of movies, yeah, in general. It's just like... It's, exactly. It's this, aura, yeah. it's this aura that exudes from the media, and people pick up on it. Well, yeah, like, what, what are you to say to somebody? It's like, well, your perception is, is wrong. There's a lot of great films, um, and it's, it's like, yeah, but I mean, it certainly doesn't feel that way to a lot of people, so you have to address that. It might be that people are wrong, and that if they would actually, you know, like, look around, they'd find stuff that they would really enjoy. Um, but I mean, you know, like, if you actually got to fix the problem in the industry, like, that perception has to change. Yeah, Bring. it's, uh... It like it's it's something that everyone just seems to pick on or pick up on. It's like man, like movies just uh, what's going on with movies? Something's mm. up. Bringing what sort of pasta pairs best with your goo? Asking for a friend, what sort of wine would you suggest? Uh well, I've never given much thought to the idea of pairing my uh my goo with pasta, so I I honestly wouldn't know on that one. Uh, as for, like, what, like, a wine that I would recommend in general, I don't know much about wine. And that means that for a wine pairing, I know even less. So, yeah, right. sorry. <laughs> There's your answer, folks. You. Uh, I also comment on the video I watched of someone making fun of him about him just lying and 
I don't know if they meant about God of War Ragnarok. A fan of his replied that y'all were wrong and he was right because Sweet Baby Ink was connected to it. I mean, well, any... I, I, I don't I mean... under... I, I, I genuinely, like, don't understand what, like, how that... How does that work in someone's mind? Well, it feels like we all agree Disney is pretty awful right now. But that them being automatically connect, like them being connected to any given project, doesn't automatically make it bad. Uh, same for me. Yeah, I, kind of... I, I guess it's just like okay, but what? How does that change how the arguments were wrong? Yeah, Which like Disney's these connected to Andor. Like, what like, do we do? Well, yeah, and and just this goes with all the franchises. Um, I feel like this is we're going the opposite direction of of how you sort of break down any particular thing, right? The thing itself has to be itself it can't be this person made it therefore it cannot be good take for example um what's the what's the new knives out called someone dead man something I, something like that something like that um we're not going to be like it's a bad film because ryan johnson made it and we know about his uh his writing sort of goals his principles and uh his history we're like well no we, we got to see it first let's see what it is and then, of course, uh, Ragnarok. How are you going to make any arguments if you're not? Yeah, like it, the extensive, detailed sort of character work in Ragnarok, you can't respond. Yeah, but Sweet Baby Ink did it, so it has to be bad. Like, well, you don't even know what they did. And alternatively, yeah. if he levied a criticism of the game that was incorrect, you can't be like, yeah, well, he was right because Sweet Baby Ink was involved. How does that address the argument? Yeah, it's like always not down knowing to the argument. how mechanics work, and then saying they're bad doesn't make sense because sweet baby ink have any connection to the game um for the record i think it's totally fine if you don't want to support anything that they relate to in any way shape or form same for disney same for any totally given fair. company go go for it but obviously we try on efap to uh take the thing for what it is uh even if it is made by companies or people that we consider to be terrible artists or uh, or companies so like that argument is just never going to make sense. It's like, you know, out of the thousand arguments for why they did well in terms of, and when I say they, I mean the people who wrote that game, I have no idea what parts Sweet Baby Ink did or did not have influence over. Um, but like, you know, it's not like the game is perfect. There's plenty of things that we picked up here and there of like stretches or um, things that we may have done differently and everything. Um, but if you're going to criticize it, don't don't be lazy. Like, yeah. make arguments. Uh, hey, drunk, are you rags? <gasps> I don't think so, because I am rags. So, he can't be. Because that's me. Hmm. I wish rags would be on the next time when you do Super Battle of Characters. It was very entertaining, but I'm upset Headless Horseman did not win. He, well, he was a game. Well, he didn't. His first fight was Dark Phoenix, so... I don't know. Oh, oh poor guy. I mean, <laughs> it was kind of funny because it was just like he's he's literally just what the fuck is he gonna do against her? You're like, well, he's got a sword <laughs> or an axe, right? They said he's got a really hot axe. You know that that hmm. uh, should have had a separate super heavyweight category. Omni Man or Samus Aran had no more chance uh, beating Cthulhu or Q than anybody from the midweights except Santa. Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, you could say that about the lightweights and the middleweights, so there should be more classes, because how exactly is it fair for Mr. Bean to fight, you know, fucking Sam Fisher? Well, yeah, Sam Fisher is not going to stand a chance. <laughs> exactly, so, yeah, it's just, yeah, that's, exactly. that's, that's, that's yeah. We, we worked with what we could, okay? We did, with, we did the best we could. I do think Kermit was robbed, though. Oh, well, I mean, Rags, who do you think wins, Kermit or Mr. Bean? Oh, fuck me. This is a hard one. Ooh, let's see. I think I'd have to go through their, um, some of their appearances and things because both of them have been, like, Mr. Bean was a spy, right? And uh, Kermit the Frog, he was a secret agent too, right, in the Muppet movies, uh, I think. Um, something like that. I can't remember. The... I don't. Oh, that's that's one of the toughest ones. I don't know. I like them both so much, and they both seem like very on par in terms of like being these funny, wacky guys. You know, um, I, Jesus, I don't know. Hmm, it's a tough one, isn't it? 
Oh yeah. Do we count? Uh, do we count Johnny English as being no Mr. Bean or Johnny no? Is a different oh, okay. Character. Well, in that case, <laughs> um, why would we count a different character as the same? I don't character know. I don't know if you were. Actor. I don't know if you were like using his entire. You know, what Rowan Atkinson's uh, a whole career? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his yeah. Well, it's like yeah, it's like Kermit. You know, he's you know, Kermit plays himself as we all know. Um. I think I might give it to. Oh. I don't know. Well, well, there you go. I guess. Uh... There you go. You know what? I'm gonna say. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say. I don't know. Was that was that left up to a vote to the cast? Hold that one out, uh, Fring. I can't remember. Uh, no, I think you guys all decided that it was uh, Mr. Bane. You you reckon it's Kermit, or you undecided? I I think Kermit's got a real shot. Yeah, that's not really an answer. I think Kermit wins. Oh, there you go. That's better. Um, how many times out of ten do you think he wins? Uh, I think seven. Okay. Yeah. Um. Everyone forgets Hulk has Wolverine level healing. I feel like we we gave Hulk a massive like we understood that Hulk was powerful as fuck. I don't remember who knocked him out, but it was someone like some fucking planet eater, I think. Uh, I also, think so. movie Flash is nerfed. Yeah, that's probably fair too. Also, I am once again axing you to kick Jay. Also, 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 hi rags. Hello. Um. With the Flash, I'm almost certain he got knocked out by one of the uh, the hyper god people. Like he's powerful, so, yeah. sure, but there's just a limit on what he can do. It might have been Q or someone like that. Just someone who ain't ain't gonna be able to lose as as uh, as easily, I suppose. Uh, Galadriel versus Sauron. Is there an answer for that already? I feel like there would be. I mean, actually, in the show, Sauron absolutely beats Galadriel. He, the reason he doesn't is because the show is terribly fucking written. <laughs> but he absolutely... He's able to, like, stunlock her in her mental prison at will. She doesn't stand a chance against him. I would have thought... Glad the genuine yeah. answer would be that it would be Sauron. Like, that he would have more power than her. I don't see why not. I think in in the Hobbit she beats him, but how however how canonical canonical we consider that is its own debate and discussion. I'm more than happy to not consider any of that plot line canon whatsoever because it does cause like issues in the timeline. As far as the original Lord of the Rings goes. I think he would, but it's it's weird because it's that it's that floopy magic of we don't quite know what's going on, you know, cuz both are very powerful but in their own ways and everything. So, it's yeah, hard I to mean, say. she can resist the ring, so that's already a big like that's, you know, that's something. Yeah, she's like Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil, yeah. I want Rayman in the next battle cuz I'm gay. Hmm. You 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 would be able to put up a fight. He'd be uh well, I think, I think, middleweight, would he, with his power ups as well? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Feels like he'd be, you know, similar like Mario in terms of getting into that yeah weight class. <laughs> um, uh, Fringy quote: I don't know, Mister Incredible's pretty strong in his fight against Heracles, the man who can lift the weight of the world on his shoulders better than Titan Atlas. Uh, Fringy is a bird. Hello, Rags. Hey! I don't. Why am I getting singled out? I thought we all. You're the agreed. only bird here. No, it's just That's I'm fine. pretty sure that most of us argued <laughs> like in favor of uh, Mister Incredible for a good bit there. If I mean, you know, when you get to a stat like he's strong enough to hold up the earth, and yeah, I guess Mister Incredible's not going to be able to beat him at that point. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. 
It's just sometimes, you know, which stories slash statistics get added into its lore of the character that's told in-universe that may or may not be true versus absolutely true and indicative of their power level. You know, sometimes I'm not familiar enough to know. And so I'm like, okay, sure, just want to make sure we all understand that Mr. Incredibles, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a, he, he can pack a punch. He's, uh, doesn't have the name for nothing, that's all. Play Cuphead, you massives? Joke's on you, I have played Cuphead, so is Fringy. Mm-hmm. Has yep. Rags played Cuphead? I have played it a bit. There you go. Uh, I liked what I played. I liked what I played. Good. It was challenging and wonderfully... Is what, what a wonderful style, you know, and the work and the artistry that goes into it. You, you just All you can do is appreciate how incredibly cool it is. Uh, I feel like instead of Aang in heavyweights, it may have been better to have King Boomy in midweights or something. Well, I mean, Aang won... I want to say his first two fights, at least one fight, if I remember. I think so. He did okay. He's not like hyper, super duper, bajuba powerful, but he's still pretty powerful. Like uh, he got some way into heavyweights. It's it's a tough bracket, all right. He was trying. Mm -hmm. Um, depending on where you stream it, minus one subtitles are different slightly for certain lines. Interesting. Oh, that is interesting. Uh, that does happen, I guess. As long as they say, like, the same thing in the meaning, because there are, I, I understand, even in English, you know, there are certain ways to sort of translate certain words. So. Yeah. Uh, thanks for inadvertently introducing me to the best RPG of 2023, Octopath Traveler 2. It's one of those sequels that improves upon the original in quite literally every aspect. An 8 out of 10 to the original's 5. Also, high rags. Hello. I remember us talking about it. I think it was in relation to... Um, was it a one-man development style. cycle? I don't think so. The first one? I can't remember. I thought... I'm, I'm not sure. We might have been talking about art styles. Could have been that. I am not 100% memorizing it. But yes, I'm glad you decided to check it out, I guess, if it relates to us in some way, shape, or form. Good! And uh, I think people are arguing over what what rating one should give to Octopath Traveler. I have not played it, so I can't speak to it, I'm afraid. Mm. Uh, this is drug money. Well, thanks. Oh, thanks, man. I love drugs. Hey, Mula, I know you lost your interest in Elden Ring, but the DLC is shaping up to be a huge improvement with a new leveling system and weapon skills. Keck. If, um, if enough people that I... Like, like Metal, I think, is going to play it. If he says it's real good, I might check it out. Uh, I trust game, Metal. Elden Ring having a DLC. Oh yeah, that is happening. Yes. You dumbos could have had a showdown with Doki Doki Literature Club. I used the full title instead of the abbreviation this time to keep you on your toes. You sure did. Do they have like a, a tournament DLC. mode? Uh -huh. um. Whenever any game acronym starts with DD, I just think Dance Dance Revolution for because that's just yeah. no. I know you lads don't care much about recommends for things you aren't bombarded with, but nonetheless, you guys should play the original Warcraft 3. Fantastic game with a solid story. I've heard it's really good. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 fair enough. Um, but I heard that the remake that they did was not... Oh, yeah, um, disastrous from what I understand. There's no real system to recommendations, really. Like, the ones we've mentioned that we do eventually check out if everyone keeps talking about it is usually because it's like, well, what is everyone talking about? What is this? But there are some based on premise that would interest me from the get-go, right? We only need one person. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's made by a person you like and think is good, and it's it's a genre that you like. I'd be like, oh, shit, I might, you know, take a look. You know, it can happen. Still appreciate recommendations. Uh, a lot of people can... yeah. A lot of people complain about modern politics being inserted into popular film franchises such as Star Wars, while others argue that such franchises have always been political. What is your opinion on politics in movies? Love you. I've always said that um, um, difference for me is whether like how preachy it is. Kind of, which yeah. Is um, I don't want to of... be preached at. I want to actually enter into a story or a discussion that has something to say and is interesting and doesn't treat me like a child or a baby and it doesn't want me to, you know, doesn't want to shove some like idea down my throat. It isn't super accusatory of me in particular, especially these days. I have uh, for my yeah. whole life not enjoyed movies that are like really badly written in the sense of, you know what we should all do? We should all do this. It's like, shut up. 
but I'm more than happy to have characters uh, and scenarios in which I disagree with the people in it, but that the film is simply has them as characters, right? That believe in things, have their ideas challenged, that sort of thing. Um, I, I think Rise have gotten a tad lazy, and uh, a lot of the thematic work in in a lot of stories has become very eh. Just it's about this. Fuck off. You're like, okay, well that was uh, that was shit, and your dialogue reflected that. You know whether or not it's got an awesome sort of uh, text, as in like we get to watch a big old space battle or lightsabers going vroom vroom. Like I, I would prefer to have something underneath that I find uh, interesting to chew on. Uh, doesn't matter if it's politi politics or not. I, I don't. Uh, it, you can be preachy about non-political things uh, that are yeah. really annoying. So um, yeah, I, to me, a lot of this comes down to uh, writing disciplines just falling the fuck apart completely. It's a lot more interesting as well. Instead of saying something like "Ooh, capitalism bad, communism yeah. bad, da, 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 bad," if instead it's something a little bit more deep that maybe relates to how people behave and think and how people can be subverted uh, and that kind of deal, instead of being like super hyper focused on this one specific political element. Because uh, I mean, often that's done mega cringe. Well, you brought up there's a really good example. There's there's plenty of films that take all kinds of um, systems to task in interesting ways, even having people represent them. Meanwhile, like Fallout, I feel like they 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 slipped and fell on the basic of of like the goal they had. They did so badly in that show, but a lot of people just celebrate it anyway because they're like, oh, I got what they were putting down. I I get it. Yeah, and this is like everyone got it. I don't think it's, it's not yeah, hard at if there's, if there's nothing to talk about, that also can impact it. If it's just a thing, just the one thing that they're trying to go for. There's no further discussion really to be had about stuff. That can be kind of boring. And inept. Ine is, which, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, apparently they're rushing through to complete uh, Fallout Season 2. So get excited. So I'm folks. sure the scripts are gonna survive that if they we'll get even, even have the capacity to in the first place. I think the only curiosity I'm gonna have is if they try to uh, cor course correct or if they double down. I just want to know the answer. Uh, I feel like it always depends on how uh, noteworthy the perspective is that they screwed up and how well, stubborn they are. Basically, it feels like the most likely will be doubled down, but not even in a sense that that's their choice, that they're just going to continue writing their story because everyone liked it. I mean, everyone, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. I think that's what it will look like compared to The Last of Us, right? Where, like, it's like, okay, you know that people you didn't know, like yeah. it, but you're probably going to double down on it anyway. We shall see. The, t the clock is ticking on that one. Uh... Ooh. Hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and I love your content, EFAP. Always have and always will, with all heart. Thanks oh, for the weekly laughs and insights. Thanks, gay actor Michael Douglas. I'm just glad. That's really great know? to hear. It's not, there's not many podcasts in the world that can claim gay actor Michael Douglas is watching them, I think. Yeah, and he super chats and tells them specifically how much he loves them. I just want to say, puts us above, like, loved, you, loved you in Fallen Down, man. It was, uh, it was a neat movie, and uh, you know what? I... I I hope they make a make make a few more movies with you while you're still around, gay actor Michael Douglas. Uh, preferably not stuff like Quantum Mania, but you know what? I'll take it. Yeah. As long as you get some work. Uh, they released the God cards with just flavor text. They are cool too. Well, the original release of the God cards was promo. They they were promo releases, um, and they just had the flavor text on them you could now the versions that i read those ones as far as i know those are still those are legal for use in card games the originals weren't they were promotional cards they didn't have any effect or anything it was just flavor text um so uh, i can actually get those for you just a second uh oh. da, da, da. original let's see okay here Oop -a -doop -a -doo. Can you please let me see the pictures? Oh, yeah, I have the legal versions of them. Oh, let me find them. What, how, what, what am I expecting to see here? Like, if when you describe them as they only have flavor text, it's like it removes all of the sort of the borders and stuff? Or? 
so flavor text on a card is like lore information. It tells you about the creature. It tells you about the effect. Um, it's not a rule. It's not an effect that it actually does in the game when you play it. It's just like lore stuff. It describes to you the the monster or the beast or anything like that. Um, so, for instance, Life for the Sky Dragon's flavor text is the heavens twist and thunder roars, signaling the coming of this ancient creature in the dawn of true power. And Obelisk the Tormentor says, The descent of this mighty creature shall be heralded by burning winds and twisted land. And with the coming of this horror, those who draw breath shall know the true meaning of eternal slumber. And the Winged Dragon of Ra's text is, Spirits sing of a powerful creature that rules over all that is mystic. Yeah, flavor text. Neat. One of... I want to, I actually need to get a copy of it, but some a lot of uh, magic has a lot of really good flavor text. Uh, and in fact, a lot of the stuff that pe- like Pokédex entries that are going to be on cards and stuff, those will be flavor text as well. Um, but I remember the onslaught card from Magic the Gathering uh, called Oblation had the flavor text of a richer people could give more, but they could never give as much. And it's always been one of those that I've kind of remembered. Oh, like, ah, quote. Oh, okay. That is a that is a good quote. Um, who would win, James Bond? Uh, oh wait. So, sorry. Wait, have I read this wrong? How would James and Mister Boss fare up against Mister Frog? So James is in James Bond, I assume. Or James? Uh, is it someone called James in Smiling Friends? Doesn't ring a bell. Doesn't ring a bell for me either. So I assume they mean James Bond and Mr. Boss versus Mr. Frog. Mr. Frog kills them both pretty easily. Yeah, <laughs> it's too fast and strong. Um, round one, Mr. Frog annihilates them. Round two, Mr. Frog annihilates them. Round three, James is going to need to get some serious tech. Uh, Mr. Boss might be able to shoot at Mr. Frog, but man, he is fast. And, uh, and he has pumpkin bombs, never forget. Oh, That's James right. James was the guy who took Charlie's okay. nose. Is that what that guy's name was? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's, yeah. Oh, well, sorry, <laughs> but he's he's a downgrade from James Bond, yeah. so <laughs> he's, he ain't getting nowhere. Yeah. I guess he is strong enough to rip off somebody's nose with his bare hands, but True. Mr. Frog is, uh, he's too powerful. He can just eat you. Yep. Let's go get in there and nom nom nom. Uh, too gay or not too gay? To gay, I think. Just, uh, I think so. Yeah. Look at the new support for Exodia. It's really decent now. New support? I'm sure. So, in card games, support for a card are cards that are released that help other cards to kind of exist and stay functional and competitive. So, if you get, uh, you have like, an example would be maybe like Tune support. So in Yu-Gi-Oh, you'd have all the Toon creatures, and they weren't very good, so they released what's called Toon Support cards, which are cards that allow the Toon monsters to uh, be more useful, uh, to be more viable. So if there are mechanics, or if there are types of creatures, or anything along those lines, in later iteration they'll say, um, this card is getting support with these other cards that synchronize well with it, or something like that. Also, someone sent me this fun meme. Oh. Let's have a look, see. Mr. Bean <laughs> or a Tremors monster. Oh, I get it. Why the... Every time I pull up a <laughs> fucking Discord thing, it, like, takes forever to load. That's a Discord thing, yeah. I don't know. No, All I mean... your stuff is loading quick for me, as far as I know, so... <laughs> no way the monster could catch him. <laughs> he would become pretty Dazu. powerful if it was just all of Rowan Atkinson's roles, including animated <laughs> like voice roles. You just keep morphing into the creature that's best suited to the role of whoever's going to kill. Um, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Do do did Wackalite get better in the second episode? Lol, no. No, it got worse. I think I, I'm undecided on if I think it's worse or just as bad because the first episode is pretty horrific. Like, um, it is nothing. Nothing really works in both of them. 
and then episode uh, two is shorter at yeah. least. <laughs> Uh, screw the rules, I have money. I don't know whose quote that is, but sure. I had a thousand eyes relinquished toy. I remember... Thousand eyes relinquished? I remember relinquished. I know there was... Re yeah, relinquished and thousand eyes restrict. Did they combine them into thousand eyes relinquished? I remember thousand being very happy There was with thousand eyes restrict and relinquished. Yeah, it was one of the first good... In fact, Relinquished was a really good ritual monster, and Thousand Eyes Restrict was one of the first really good actual fusion monsters because it had a really good effect. And for a long time, it was like the only one-star fusion monster in the game. But yeah, they were both quite good. I think I had them both, but I can't remember. What do you think I of Relinquished artwork? Of I think it's really cool. I think he's like a he's a really weird, not quite Lovecraftian, but just a just a weird monster that's got a a, a design that you can kind of like understand. Mm -hmm. um, I think unfortunately, Yu-Gi-Oh has the worst aesthetics of the trading card games because there just doesn't seem to be any consistency, like kind of unifying sense of art to them or anything. It's just sort of whatever is whatever. Uh, whereas I'd say Magic has the best. Um, artwork and general design and I think you and, and Pokemon has really good uh, aesthetics as well uh, it just kind of works with what they do uh, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh toys were sturdy as fuck I never got any but fair enough better sturdy than not I suppose Ooh. Uh, splitting up the characters in different weight classes was a good idea some low weight heavyweight fights would have been pretty funny though they were just, well, yeah. <laughs> Some of that kind of still happened. It'd be funny, sure, yeah. But yes, there were still funny matchups. But we were, try we were taking it seriously, all right? Yeah. Trying to figure out who would actually win. Gotta figure it out. It was important. And uh, obviously, Boogie was the clear winner. That gun. Boogie. Boogie. <laughs> with his <laughs> with his scary revolver and his Tomb Raider shirt, you wanted to have like a triple XL. He will answer that would be the, the little um, XL. I don't know about that. the figurine XL that you XL. buy comes with like spare shirt with some other thing on it and his iconic gun. <laughs> <laughs> iconic gun. It has to be described as iconic gun. Boogie's iconic gun. Uh, Mola is dark slash steel, Rags is normal slash fairy, and Fringy is poison slash flying because he's a bird. I'm wait, I'm uh, what what type? They no. gave you normal fairy. <laughs> normal fairy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Fairy's gay. Now I'm, now I'm imagining Rags with butterfly wings. Yeah. He's normal gotta get ya. fairy? That's not true. <laughs> I'm like a a psychic dog. <laughs> I'll take dog steel. That's fine with me. <laughs> uh, Meowth learned English to impress a girl, but she rejected the poor buddy. He even taught himself to walk on two legs. Wow. And now he makes he makes Sigma male grind set YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. Yes, what you do. <laughs> it gets on YouTube. <laughs> He's classic. Which of these Yu-Gi-Oh cards are edgier? Oh, we got a whole selection. I'm going to have to post. And, uh, yeah, ranks, you can post them and when you, take a look. When you've collected yeah, sure, them, let me do. know. Um, I am caught up on Smiling Friends, and Mr. Frog is Chaos Incarnate. He's brilliant. He's one of the fan favorites at yeah. this point. So uh, hopefully He's they don't really ruin him. funny character. Everyone knows well, I mean, the world I, will be I, saved I with him as president. Next season there'll be an episode with him as president. Yeah, that'll be... they they, they got to go help him smile or something. Um, David Attenborough is 98 years old. When he retires, I think that Fringy is the right person to take over narrating cool animal stuff. Love you all. Oh yeah, no pressure, Fringy. Oh, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Man, he, he, he is... Yeah, oh gee, is he 98 years old? Yeah, he's, um... He is well past the age a lot of people are for, you know, I'm retiring, fuck this shit, I'm out. But you can tell I mean, he adores his job, so... Just... He's passionate, yeah, absolutely, and I will, I will keep him doing 
narration for nature documentaries for as long as, as he wants to, which is hopefully basically until the end of time. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised God, at all oh. if they presented him with the option of, can you speak extensively into this thing and we're going to make you know an AI vision and would you approve of that? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Out of, like, concern... Um, well, I mean, he might have... Because I, I wonder, because there are, like, other people who are sort of, like, doing the, like, BBC and National Geographic, like, documentaries, right? Other other British narrators and documentarians that have silky smooth voices. You could have somebody who actually goes out and does all this stuff, and you can have him do, like, the background overall narration for when the presenter is... Oh, I mean, that... It. So that would work well. That, that, uh... The, I, I can't remember the guy's name. I remember seeing him do... He did, like, a documentary on the, uh... It was, it was, it was about the Arctic, and he was the narrator and the, like, documentarian, so he was out there. I can't remember the guy's name, but he mm -hmm. had a, he had a silky smooth British voice. I mean, yeah, it, I mean there's it, loads, David Attenborough is iconic, with the, He is so mm -hmm. iconic. Well, and, and not only the era we're in, but also just if I could see them telling uh, him, you know, there, there are countless people who want to hear your voice forever, and uh, there's a chance for you to become immortal in that sense. We, would you like to? I could totally see him doing it. Um, mm. Not in any kind of ego way, just in a way of like, yeah, you guys, if if need if you need my voice, I guess you can do it through this amazing technology because we've always said it's only a matter of time. As much as I did not like the re-speech of Ada, who knows if I'll like it the next time it pops up in terms of like accuracy. It's only a matter of time. And then once they crack it, you know, can't trust anything anymore. But at the same time, sometimes you, you, you almost uh, want to hear certain voices in certain ways. Whatever happened to that movie where they were going to have James Dean in it, like, completely recreated or whatever? Did that ever happen? I don't know. I mean... I don't recall that. It'll be really interesting to see if they, um... If we get our full, like... You know, actor signed a contract to be recreated fully in AI, and we get, like, the first movie with that. Whoever it may be. Probably someone pretty damn popular. Um, yeah, I don't know. Give it a year. <laughs> uh, AOTD is a, the Great Eared Nightjar. Hi, Rags. Hello! AOTD. Attack of the... Dentist? Dove. Attack of the Dentist. Could be it, yeah. It's like a nightjar. Also, I got those cards. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Okay. Have a little look, see here. Doo, doo, doo. I think it's pretty clear which one is the most edgy. Yes, the so we're, but... we, we, we're trying to find out which of these are the edgiest, and uh, our selection includes Grapha, Dragon Lord of the of Dark World, Demise, King of Armageddon, or Cyber Dark End Dragon. These are funny names. So the names are edgier than the illustrations. I think that the illustrations are fine. I don't. I think the first one is the edgiest, but I don't. I don't see that as edgy. I just see that as like a big evil skull dragon looking thing. Um, I think the names are edgier. I than will the illustrations. I think demise looks like he could fit into all kinds of things unscathed in terms of like the person who made him is trying too hard. But the first one, I think he's got a little bit of a uh, little bit of that factor. He works for a metal album, I suppose. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then the third one, uh, yeah, he's he's kind of similar to the first one for me in terms of that. So least for me is number two. I think he's uh, he's a cool looking dude. I could see him guarding the gates of cyber hell or some shit. The uh, cyber hell. The Twitter? three and three and one edgiest. I'd probably go with the dragon lord of the dark world. I keep wanting to say the dark world, just dark world. <laughs> probably he's probably the edgiest. Rafa. I wonder what his voice would be like. I wonder if it would be like a fairy voice. That would be nice. A little subversion. Hello. <laughs> I'm here to help you. <laughs> Hi. I'm a normal fairy type. <laughs> I'm here to provide some tutorials. You can do it. Good job. Please watch Vinland Saga and Freerin. Freerin offers an interesting take on elves, and Vinland Saga makes a dozen episodes on a farm engaging. Ooh. Well, you know, mm. I've I've heard of both of them several times. 
Um, yeah, who knows? heard of them. Though Mob Psycho 100 still gets recommended more. Um, they're in a, they're That's, all in a big uh, race. I'm watching that right now. My goodness. Wow. Do you want to say anything about it? Do you, do, you want to, do you want to tell the people about it or do you want to leave it? Uh, well, I'm not that far into it, so I'll just keep watching it and then I'll talk about it when I'm done. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there please you do go. an EFAP on Jaws. It's my favorite movie. I'm gay and an actor. Hmm. Oh, wow. Wait, is that Michael Douglas? I think that was gay actor Michael Douglas, yes. Yo. Well, he's not in Jaws, but I like that he respects Jaws despite not being in it. That that's, shows that he's not ego-driven, and, and I've always thought that about gay actor Michael Douglas. Um, I don't know. He never... Uh, I, I, if he's here, and he's giving us money, and he's happy to be around, then you know, I, I, I really appreciate that. I do, too. As for coverage of Jaws, we've only done a couple of films in the way that that would be done. It would sort of be like how we did uh, Jurassic Park. Maybe we'll get around to it at some point, but I feel like there's probably a couple of movies we want to do before that in that way. In that vein. Uh, you'd think rail shooters would be generally easier to make. Yeah. You would think. I guess it can I mean compared to what, right? Depends. And then how well you do any of these things. Uh, Diabeto versus Scott Malkinson. In brackets, he has diabetes. He's already done at that point. Diabeto's going to annihilate him. He has diabetes. <laughs> and he's, he's got no chance. Uh, I got a card to give Rags a heart attack number. IC1000 Numeraunius Numeraunia. Also, what the fuck is that? Uh, also, oh, well. I think they meant the non-tournament versions of the god. I'm just gonna copy and paste this to you. If there's if there's anything that makes sense about this, go ahead. <laughs> I feel like I'm. Uh, I got a card to give Rags a heart attack. Number IC1000 Numeronius Numeronia. Also, one they they meant the non-tournament versions of the god card with lore. Yeah, we we ended up reading those anyway. So there you go. Mm. There you go. Hey, gents. Loved the showdown stream, but I was a little sad to see Godzilla go down so fast. Could there be redemption for round one losers? Yeah, maybe. Um, I think he might have ended up fighting Dr. Manhattan in the losers round, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid I think Dr. Manhattan has that. Uh, most people would probably agree. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he gets double out. Uh, hey, Rags, with your legendary Skeletor voice, hey. could you read a small part of Sean's famous speech in Goodwill Hunting? Uh, Sean's speech, Goodwill Hunting. I don't know. I'm not familiar with this movie, so. Oh, I think I know which one. Oh, this one here? Where. Let's see. It's about art. Oh Jesus! I didn't realize it was that big. <laughs> it's, uh... I'll read a. F I'll read a little bit. I'll read just a little bit. So, if I asked you about art, you'd probably give me the one about every art book ever written. Michelangelo. You know a lot about him. Life's work. Political aspirations, him and the Pope, sexual orientation, the whole works, right? But I bet you can't tell me what it smells like in the Sistine Chapel! <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. I, just, I was just hoping to hear Skeletal say it's not your fault. <laughs> um... Uh, hey, Fringy, if you had to hang out with Ryder or Big Smoke, who'd you hang with? Uh, Big Smoke. As long as neither of them betray me. <laughs> but yeah, Big Smoke. Uh, have you guys seen Rick and Morty Season 7? I'd say it's a bit of an improvement to the previous two in terms of quality. That's... Just, I don't care. It's just where I was. Uh, I yeah, think it's I going care. down the same road as when people say, Hey man, the new episode of Simpsons is really good. It's like, mm, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just don't give a shit. Like, I don't want to watch Rick and Morty anymore. They killed it. They Morty. murdered her. I just found a hurt pigeon. Its wing is hurt. It's in a box in my house. What do I do? That's the job for Google. Uh, probably immediately. Call the vet? 
Oh yeah, I guess say, for up? for immediate assistance, Google. But yeah, well, I guess if you can call the vet and they pick up straight away, that's probably actually the best move. Actually, yeah, you're right. Yes, call them. Call the vet and say, "Yo, what's up?" There's no way I'm yeah. going to be able to advise on uh, caring for a hurt pigeon. I uh, that is not my expertise. Bringy, mm -hmm. what do you what? do with uh, whenever you get hurt? What do you do? I I don't know. I <laughs> feel like it depends on what the injury is. Um. What if your wing is hurt? And you, and well, what, what I don't have that? a wing. I have an arm, unless what? we're referring to my arm as a wing. But I don't know. Well, I mean, what was the super chat again? Injured pigeon. What do? Uh, I think that's one where you got to call like your local rescue, and 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 then they see what they can do. Though I think like usually if a bird has a usually if a bird has a broken wing, that's um that's like really really bad. That's uh that's like a yeah, usually that's that's yeah. But that that would be the only thing. All right. I yeah, like I don't know if you would be able to do anything yourself like at home if you had, if there was an injured pigeon, but yeah. Um Shadow has Shadow has new scary wings. Is this is there a new Sonic thing where Shadow has wings? There's Sonic and Shadow Generations, I think, like a remaster. And he has wings. All right. Are they I blades? He, I, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen the trailer. Uh, you Dumbo should play Sonic Crow. Sonic is really good. I don't think I like that Shadow's getting. You know what I mean? Like, there's memes there, sure, but I don't know. You a Shadow hater? Mm. It's it, look right. The memes are got to be really good. I'm I'm very excited for Sonic Three. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be funny. <laughs> yeah, I hope. Was it, was it Keanu Reeves as the voice of him? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, surely. I think I, I think I probably would have preferred Hayden Christensen. Absolutely, especially his Anakin voice. I wouldn't allow yeah. him to do like a regular voice. I'd be like, no. Well, like there's a scene where Shadow is, I don't know, talking to Amy or something. Liar! Well, it, it, I would probably <laughs> just do that. I would have like all of his clips on a little, like on, on a video on a phone. And whenever he's doing his line reads as a normal character, I'd be like, no, like this. And then just play them from, <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, I thought, I thought you were just going to say it would be Revenge of the Sith, but... Like Sonic is Obi Wan and Shadow is, is I'm, Anakin. I'm willing to entertain <laughs> some more subtler deliveries, like his his roles in the films when he's not super angry. You know, there's gonna be we need some mm -hmm. variation. I just need to see Shadow the Hedgehog scream liar, and you're with liar. him. Liar. <laughs> you're, you're with, with him. him. <laughs> you're with him. You turn her against me. <laughs> against me. Oh, what if you blue hedgehogs are evil? Oh. Well, then you are lost. Well, I guess that's not what Sonic sounds like, but... Well, then you are lost. That's, that's, Whoa. that's Sonic, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, Dumbo, should play Crow Country. The pretty good retro horror game I played for my dad. It has scares, a good story, and crows. Crows, Fringu. Crows! Yeah, crows. They're cool. Crows Love are cool. Them. Awesome animals. I like it when they're like waddling around, you know, like when they hop around if they're walking on the on the on the ground. Yeah. They they have like kind of a almost like a strut, uh, I guess the bird equivalent of of that. Uh, have you masses heard of an older show called Code Geass? My friends and I just finished it and really liked it, even with some of the overly convoluted plots or scenes. We went, okay, calm down. I have seen Code Geass. It's uh, all right. <laughs> this is some stuff I like, some stuff I did. To be fair, it was like ten fucking years ago that I saw it, so uh been a while. Oh. But mm. um yeah, I remember some stuff. What's, I remember what's like the general premise of that show. Uh there's a war that's going on between uh chat might have to help me out on this. I think it's something like like Europe and Japan or something crazy like that. I can't remember. Is it Japan and, and, and the UK? I, it's two big factions having this big, crazy... Yeah, Japan and Britain. Okay. And um, and also the world has Gias, which is everyone has, like, or can have a power. And our main character's power is that he can one time tell uh, a person what to do and they have to do it. Um, which is kind of a variable. And... Um, 
there's there's like mechs in it that relate to the to the war there's uh I'm, I'm trying to think of like what other broad elements like i said it's been a while um i just the main thing i remember is the uh, mistake he makes chat knows exactly what i'm talking about with the girl who then does the thing that that whole huge plot element I remember talking about that for a while when i first saw it with uh, the friend who i was watching it with but um yeah you know been, been a while Mechnex, yes, Mechnex, that's the one. Mechnex, <laughs> such a weird I don't thing know why to have introduced. It's like, why? Why can't it's just a mechanic? No, it has to be Star Warsy. We have to call it Mechnex. It's not a mechanic. Um, but you know, I remember there being some really good little payoffs in relation to the powers and characters and stuff. There's also just uh, just a little bit of cringe. You know, everyone's got to have a little bit of cringe. Just a little bit. Just a touch. Just a sprinkle. Just a wee bit. Um, Kellis, Callis, Kellis, Ju, J U U. I I don't know what any of that means, Jew. but all right. At Yellowstone National Park right now. About to visit Old Faithful when I'm done with my sandwich. Happy to be listening to Yo. the fat during. Oh, good stuff. The pilgrimage. Um. A reminder to all, Godzilla Minus One is now available on Netflix. Enjoy! One of the best movies of 2023. The ending still makes me Hooray. cry. No lie. Good shit. Good movie. Very good. Everyone's yeah, go seen it. it it's excellent. I've pretty much got, like, approval from everyone all over the internet. I don't think anyone disliked that film except, like, well, that I don't know, one Aliens. Guy. Or, um... There's that one guy we covered. We, or we didn't cover him yet. We... It's... Who knows? I was gonna say, we haven't we'll covered anyone yet who dislikes EFAP. Godzilla, I don't think. Maybe but... we'll see him on EFAP. Who knows? Who knows? I certainly don't. Uh, remember when there were only two Toy Story movies, and then they made a third one, and now yeah. we're on five? Christ, what would a Toy Story 5 even be about? Uh, uh, what would a Toy Story 4 even be about? Ugh. Don't care but i mean i guess there's going to be more sequels disney has signaled that that's their intention is to make more sequels so that's awesome if they make a sequel to wally that would actually that would like that would drive me insane mm. yeah that fair. would hurt and ra or ratatouille <laughs> i ratatouille. suppose another sequel to the incredibles would also make me very upset they it called ratatouille tui ratatouille. ratatouille with a with the two there you know yeah Man, they probably that's it. That's enough. I think someone walking in to pitch at that, and then they'd be like, "Yep, you got it. Do it." Here's six hundred thousand million dollars. Make you need, that. Do you need more? If real. you need to double that, just let us know. <laughs> yeah, sure, no problem. If you need me to, if you need us to add some more zeros to the end of that budget, let us know. I once again recommend Freedom Planet 1 and 2 to Fringy because it's a 2D classic Sonic-inspired series with great soundtrack and gameplay. Great rat. What's it called? Uh, Freedom Planet 1 and 2. Maybe. I got a lot of games I've got to play. Mm. Also, once you get the chance, please watch Shin Godzilla 2016. It does a fantastic job at reinventing Goji while keeping the original themes. Goji! Mm. Well, and uh, if we're all recommending the Godzilla movies, make sure to check out, of course, the uh, Roland Emmerich uh, version interpretation. Just so that you can understand the difference, you know, it's good to have a palette. Yeah. That's all I. Th that's all I'm saying. It's got, it's got Matthew Broderick and Jean Reno. It's got so many of the Simpsons cast. It does in not it. have. It it does not have Jeff Goldblum. That was an entirely different movie. That was a mistake but... that they made. He should have been in it. He should have played Godzilla. <laughs> he should have been in it. <laughs> uh, he just like, hey, and so I went. I went through the through the the town there, and I went rar, and <laughs> everyone looked up at me. And... <laughs> And I'm like, oh my god, is that Jeff Jeff Goldblum? And I saw I, I Do you remember in I said, uh, yeah, that's Fallen uh, that's Kingdom me. where they just have the two scenes of him or whatever in the um, the courtroom? Yeah. What what the fuck were you thinking? Completely divorced from everything else. <laughs> and you could be like the trailer, I guess, because I couldn't yeah, get well, him for long it, enough. It, Even thing, Independence though, Day two, the remake knew to get like you gotta get everybody. Well, you gotta get it, Brent yeah. you gotta get like him and they got Brent Spiner back and all that. We'll be doing because because they've got it's Dominion, right? Like with, with with all of them, where they do all of them as main characters, they're all back, and it's just like, why didn't you just do that anyway? What was with the weird like halfway point where he's just sort of in the movie but also not? 
I don't know. I guess because they were like, it's got to be its own thing. And then they, were, then they thought, no, actually. <laughs> it doesn't need to be its own thing. We need them back. How much did Dominion make? Was it over a billion? Uh, I think it was just over a billion. So they, they kept decreasing. I find it like hilarious. Like every uh, series. Um, I know that this isn't entirely unique. Uh, but that film, I feel like even the people who made it and everyone who even came close to liking it was just like, that was bad, and it made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But it was bad. Yeah. It, uh, almost uh, everyone even realizes, yeah, we gotta keep making these. We have to, because they just make too much money. The estimated budget of yeah. 165 million gross worldwide, just over a billion, yeah. So it's like, they, they gotta. They gotta keep going. How can you not keep making them? That's yeah. better as a return than anything Star Wars or uh, Marvel. How sad is that? Yep. It's just because we just don't have many uh, places to get dinosaur content, I suppose, of that kind. People like dinosaurs. Hey, 65. Oh. <laughs> so bad. Oh, and also, wait, what were you saying? What was the budget that you were saying for... Because apparently Jurassic World, like, Dominion had a budget of $265 million. Oh, I'm reading it from IMDb. Million. It says 165 estimated. Wikipedia says 265. Was that... If, is the Wikipedia one accounting for marketing or not, or is it? Uh, well, appar um, apparently it was from like a Forbes article. Well, to be honest but, with you, um, I was actually surprised reading 165. I would have thought it would be at least 200. Uh, yeah, like apparently Forbes said that uh, full, apparently uh, Fallen Kingdom was like $430 million. Oh, let me check the IMDb one for that. Maybe that'll explain this. They have like a I could believe the IMDb one is like prior to a better accounting. Well, of yeah, how much it cost. This, this article was from like 2023, so you yeah, know, like a year off when would come out. Yeah, 170 according to IMDb for Fallen Kingdom. So yeah, that's that's 400 man, 432 that. billion dollars, which is the second most expensive film ever made. Fucking movie was so terrible. Because <laughs> The Force Awakens had a cost 447 million dollars. And the rise of Skywalker cost four hundred and sixteen million dollars. That's so much money. <laughs> so much fucking money. And then think about well, it. Wait, um... if the rise of Skywalker cost that much to make, did it even like maybe just made its money back, right? Jesus. Uh, I mean, yeah, so much it... money. So much money. And yet they will probably make another trilogy. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised. Um. Remember the dinosaur gun? What? Yeah, the laser. Yeah, yeah the, the laser gun pointer. that allows you to pinpoint a target and send a dinosaur after them. It's the stupidest <laughs> fucking thing in the world. <laughs> I remember people oh. at the time trying to say, you know, like, hey, well, to be fair, what if you run out of bullets? <laughs> so I'm looking this good. There'll be times where maybe it's useful. Like, oh, yeah, man. There might be times where maybe it's useful. You know what? That justifies the insane amount of logistics and money that goes into cloning dinosaurs that are long extinct and then creating their brains such that they will attack lasers like cats. What a stupid movie. Yeah. That's one of the dumbest movies. It's pretty bad. There's no, uh, no way around that one. And I hear that Dominion is considered worse by many people, so... I, yeah, I still haven't seen it, so... We're saving Us, that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it saving someday. Saving that gold. Um, Mundi. The Sith have been extinct for a millennia, Mace, but there were always those other guys with red lightsabers that used the Force, so... yeah, it, They were a legally distinct group. We went to court about it. <laughs> Mace was just like, what about case. that guy with the smiley face? <laughs> he was he a Sith? They're like, no, no, that's some other guy. Darth Smilo? <laughs> Darth, Darth, happy cheer, yum. Uh, seeing a lot of cope for the acolyte. People saying it's really good, and we shouldn't judge a series based on two episodes. Thoughts? We can judge the two episodes on two uh, episodes, can't we? Two episodes, yeah, exactly. Especially if those two episodes are a fourth of this show. Uh, it's so crazy to think about it that way. Gone mm -hmm. through a significant amount already. Uh, hi, Moolah, Ragu, Fringo. Can you voice act a funny scene from something like The Simpsons or Rick and Morty? I'll animate it for later. Meme fab. Love your content, by the way. Um. Oh, well, you two love Simpsons. You should do one. Problem is, like, off the top of my head, I don't know what I'd 
you know, like what? Yeah, same. I don't, I don't just know. do a short one. Just a really, really short one. Just a little back and forth, back and forth, boom. What one? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> one where... One where... Mr. Burns is talking to his assistant guy and... Oh my god. His assistant guy. And, 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 <laughs> yeah, oh, that, the that, assistant that guy. That was caused me real pain. <laughs> I don't know the names of the yellow people. <laughs> Jeez. <gasps> Uh, hmm. <laughs> all of the Simpsons oh, knowledge. Oh, wait, uh, yeah. All in favor, I All opposed, nay. Who keeps saying that? It, it was, was him. him. Let's get him, fellas. I don't know if that <laughs> counts, though. Down. There's just a series of us reading out. I don't know why they want this, because it's not like we like we tend to do accurate voices. We've also just messing around. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen, there's been plenty of uh, very animatable highlights from EFAB, all right? You don't need to make a Simpsons scene recreation, because it'll probably just be the same thing that they did, but worse. Because we, we don't have the talents <laughs> of uh, of the cast of The Simpsons. Uh, the Acolyte writer said she was inspired, uh, in brackets, copied by the Arcane Sister arc. I cannot wait for episode three. Oh. Um. Did she say that? Oh. What, what can you say? Like, hmm. I don't even want to begin to compare. I just want to run away to a little cave and hide. <laughs> Season 2 of Andor is again doing three-episode arcs with a one-year time skip after each, leading directly to the start of Rogue One, according to interviews. Hmm. We'll see how that goes. I'll be, we'll, be, we'll be very interested in keeping track of uh, whether or not Andor is, is, uh, is good schnisms. With Kingdom Rush 5 on the horizon, have any of you played a Kingdom Rush game? The studio is very involved with fan feedback now, so I'm hoping for a banger. I have hmm. not played those games, no. That's not the tower defense one, is it? Let's see. I don't know. Kingdom Rush. Oh yeah, I did play this on PSP. I guess I played the original one. There's five of them now? Okay. PlayStation Portable. Portable. Well, I mean, I hope they're good, yeah. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Look up Rayman Origins Hurt Sprite. Okay. Rayman Origins Hurt Sprite. Wait, who is... <laughs> Does he do a funny? <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Assuming this is the accurate one. There's is, this is a couple, actually. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> he looks like he's in so much pain. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, man, those games are so good. Yeah, I mean, I... I, I not enough people bought them. That's the thing, I guess Rayman's so just no uh, not enough of a pull, unfortunately. Uh, well, yeah, he, uh, he was, he was um, you know, Rabbids, right? They're like the minions before minions, and they had the same effect in the sense of overshadowing the thing that they were a part of. Minions movies make more money than Despicable Me movies. Yes. Though those still make a lot of money, so it's not quite the same as Rayman, which is just completely done in, in favor of the Rabbids. Uh, what would you say you have more of? Brain compartments or brain departments? I think I have brain departments. They're like departments where, you know, it's a whole bunch of neurons getting together and we're going to be the ones that work on smells and memory and we're going to be the ones who remember all the movie stuff and we'll be the ones over here who remember what it's like to, you know, the, what it's like to lay on a carpet and we're going to be, you know, they have all the different things that they've got and they all got their little departments and they have their little inner department dramas like, oh, why can't we remember what lavender smells like? Go talk to the guys up in uh, the, the Nostrum department. And then they go up there. And say, hey, you guys. And, and so they get it back and forth. And 
That that's how I like to think that it works up there. All right. Yeah, I, I don't really have anything to add to that. I don't, I have no idea. Compartment versus department. It's like, I don't know. The departments are somewhat compartmentalized, but you know, they're departments. I'm not a brain titian, so I can't answer these questions. They're too complicated. No, oh, fair. Have you seen the EFAP animation Halloween special? It's by the same guy who made Fringy Loses It, and it's hilarious. Hi, Ragu Wagu Tail. Hello. Uh, mm. Let me double check. It's EFAP Halloween what? From what I gather, Halloween special. EFAP Halloween special. A very special EFAP Halloween story. There was that one that I remember. And that was four years ago, and I still remember it very well. That's oh, yeah. A good one. Darkness um, Fabs. Yeah, Darkness Fabs. <laughs> um, oh, wait, is this? Oh, I think it's this one. Here, let me. Oh, it's the Here, Some it's Egypt. Is the, is the Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've checked that one out. Um, <laughs> obviously, some people miss out on the, um, the meme fabs. <laughs> you pick me up. But if <laughs> if we ever don't capture like watch any of these, just make sure just repost them every once in a while in the meme Discord, and, uh, and they'll get yes, into rotation for please sure. Please do, because uh, there is a lot. You got the I Love Man icon on your chest. Yeah, I love the underneath it, like recommends and stuff. It's like, oh yeah, do you want to see the EFAB highlight boogies beat apron? It's just a picture of ER struggling to deal <laughs> with the stress. They'll feel bad about that, but also not really. Um, doo -doo. Uh, paleo <laughs> theories based on scanning the organ cavities of Trek skulls. It's more likely had eyesight around five times greater than Falcon. Sense of smell comparable to elephants might have been as smart as crows. Hold up. Is an elephant's sense of smell really good, or is it really bad, or is it so-so? I assume really good. Because if it's comparable to elephants, then I, I don't actually, I, I don't know what that means without a reference to how well elephants smell. I'll type in elephant sense of smell good. African elephants possess a sense of smell that is likely the strongest ever identified in a single species. Wow. Holy shit! I had no idea. People always talk about like dog smells and shark smells really good, but I've never heard people say that elephants smell really really good. I mean, don't mean I don't mean the elephants themselves. Their ability mm. to smell things is good, just to be clear. But um, so damn. Uh, but yeah, elephants, I, I'm surprised that no one's ever. Their keen sense of smell allows them to detect water sources up to twelve miles away. Fuck off! No, they, no, they can't. <laughs> That's the lie. No, it. No, they can't. That's amazing. That's, I can believe that's, that. That's, that's un, it's un, That is unbelievable. I can believe it. You well, fool! Like, that's because uh, you're, like it you're out. gullible. Gullible. Oh, jeez, alright, well. So, according to Google, what, what animal has the best sense of smell? And it says, bears are thought to have the best sense of smell of any animal on Earth. For example, the average dog's sense of smell is 100 times better than a human's, a bloodhound's is 300 times better, and a bear's sense of smell is 7 times better than that of a bloodhound. Damn. That's got to be crazy living in that world where you're constantly smelling things. It, like, is it like overload on all the things they could smell, or can they hone into particular scents? And like, how? Do, I wonder how they actually do that. You know. I mean, uh, pretty impressive. wild. Pretty wild. Uh, we all know the wizard from the EFAP hypotheticals would solo everyone in the tournament, including Unicron. Oh yeah, wizard's pretty powerful. Just, the wizard uh, is pretty powerful. Do everyone. Uh, hey guys, I'm one guy making an RPG. May I shill it with a super chat inspired by Morrowind's exploration and New Vegas's quest writing? You didn't, you didn't say what it what it's called. <laughs> uh, I guess maybe he's asking to say permission to say what its name is, but sure, go ahead. There's no problem with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By all means, absolutely. Unless the name of it is "I'm One Guy Making an RPG." Um. <laughs> that sounds like an anime. It does, but yeah, go, go, go for it. Especially if it's inspired by Morrowind's expert. People like Morrowind, don't they? That, that, that's they, they, people they, sure do. Yeah. Um. 
Fringy grabs an attractive waitress. Ah, hello, I'm Professor Fringy. I'm making an egg with my goo in my evil laboratory. <laughs> waitress screams, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that joke <laughs> just when he grabs her arm it's like oh shit already it's like god damn well does he say something like oh it just never works and then charlie's like why do you think that would ever work why would that ever work <laughs> yeah god the argument that they have it's so funny look it's a hard economy out there hard economy how about the economy of my patients it's the running thin buddy paper thin like these walls <laughs> <laughs> Love their fight. <laughs> Look, I, I mean, you have your problems too. Oh, I got my problems. Okay, get the fuck out. <laughs> I just, you can totally tell it's Michael Cusack's voice, but it's still fun. Like the, I, I have my it problems is, too. Yeah. Like it's to try to keep the cranked insanity of it. Nasally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's. I just love how Charlie and Pim. And just kind of like standing there awkwardly, but then when he starts yelling, yeah, like they do like back, they like don't know what to do. Uh, the J tweets of the yeah, day. It's on. like whenever it's like whenever at your you were at your friend's house, you're having a good time and everything, and then one of their parents starts yelling at him for doing something or yeah, not and doing like, something, oh, no. and you're just standing there awkwardly, like what? I, yeah, uh, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> The J tweets of the day are based, bro. Bodied that anti gamoogle glue man. Yeah, uh, he really did. Yeah, a lot of people did. He was he was not doing a great. A lot of people did. Yeah, he was. Once the paper thin arguments fell apart, it was into like, haha, you responded to me, so I win. That's all he had left. We responded to synthetic man. Did he win? <laughs> I guess so. Oh, responded wait, to I must movie have really ruffled some feathers. feathers synthetic man they must have had a point. To me. Well, the the big well, killer just... of it all is you responded to like eight content creators in that fucking video. Did they all win? So I, yeah, this is a stupid argument. Yeah. Best of luck, bro. You've got you've got countless insights into classic film that I'm sure everyone will feel much the smarter. Or, uh, having listened to well, I learned a lot about Blade Runner from watching that video, yeah. Oh yeah. There's a lot to learn there, yeah. Dude, Theo just losing his shit. It was, it's it's just <laughs> funny to torture him with bad video essays. I know that it's fun to torture <laughs> you two as well as myself, but oh. it just does something to Theo. <laughs> hits him Breaks in his, his brain. Soul. Uh loved King Arthur. Ubisoft should make a Far Cry game about cool Mickelson. He'd be down for it. He he did the cringe Kojima game. Um, I mean, he's, he's if you if you got uh, the right, you know, money, I guess so he'd be willing to do a King Arthur. You want you wait, Matt Mickelson to be King Arthur? Is that what you're suggesting? I mean, well, like Far Cry set in like medieval England with King Arthur. I don't know if they're ever going to do that. Well, then again, they did the one. Uh, the they did the the prehistoric primal, one, yeah, it? primal yeah, Far Cry primal historic. But uh, I don't know how well that did for them. I don't know how well Far Cry 6 did for him either. I don't know. Like, it really does seem like Ubisoft, I would be... I don't even know how they still exist, kind of, at this point. I just don't feel like it, they have much, um... Except for Rainbow Six, right? Like, that's basically it, in terms of games that are still, you know, relevant. Uh, Star Wars needs a droid called Joel, spelled uh, J-0-3-L. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Beat him up with a golf club, may as well. All it's all he's worth now. Uh, that's what they've done. Um, can I just throw any old look at this your way? Are you on a bound to look at Lego Space Collectible Minifigures series? If I say so. So the way we tend to do it is, uh, the first few we're like okay with, but when we have like ten, it gets a bit much because obviously we um we're not we're, we're we're not intending to be here forever we try to break these up in something of a reasonable selection and uh, if every super chat had a search for a thing and review it then we would probably start to put a cap on it i think we did once right or twice we were like oh yeah we've done that people kept asking us to look at pokemon lore and uh, it got a bit out of hand so um you know just please do it for things you're really invested in us having an opinion on and try not to do loads of them, and we'll see what we can do. We just, uh, we're way better at having just a question. We we deal with them great. We got we got that down. We figured that out. Ooh, someone's got a suggestion for the uh, the bracket: Rags versus Fringy. I would never even 
I won't even. I would yeah, never I mean, think geez. about fighting my my dear friends mm -hmm. here on EFAP. Likewise, that's a it's a really weird thing. So, yeah, to... that's uh that's a draw. That's a tie by I guess both sides not participating. Yeah, we would just um... go and grab some some uh, coffee or something. We would mm. talk about yeah. stuff. Oh well. I mean, my answer is a little different. I'm gonna go with the uh, Fringy's probably got round one as much as Rags could do some damage uh, with biting him. I think Fringy's gonna get him tossed off the platform. You think I'm a barbarian? Sure. That's what uh, kind of a savage do you think I am? Round two him? is probably going to Rags. He's got his gun. Fringy's got his potions and uh, everything, but I don't know if that's gonna be able to put up with uh, <laughs> Rags's. The first round, that. Rags would bite him, and when that didn't work, he'd shoot him with a gun. And then round three, we're probably looking at a Fringy victory. Uh, he's going to do Batman-level shit of trying to make sure that Rags has no chance, while Rags will be like, what's wrong with you? And try to just kill him with a gun, and it won't work. He'll, like, he'll, like shoot him, and the cloak will fall to the ground. He'll be like, what? And it'll just be a fake, and Fringy's like laughing with the a voiceover. Like, you fake think it would be that easy? Yeah. It's, uh, that's what how I magical it. Magical spells. <laughs> when in the lore do you have magical spells? I've always said I'm a I'm a fairy type. I got magical spells. <laughs> oh, I, live the, I live in the I live in the forest. Type. Uh, Mr. Incredible may be pretty cool, but he lost a fist fight to the Underminer and his mechanical fist. Also, he couldn't push apart some metal pipes. Shake my head. Yeah, but Incredibles Two isn't canon, so. Incredibles yeah, 2 is a fever dream that Incredibles someone 2. vomited up. I don't think it counts, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it didn't It's non-canonical. Uh, hey, fellas. Suggestion for round two of Chief versus T-1000 fight. In CE, Cortana managed to save, uh, create an EMP strong enough to knock out forerun attack from Spartan armor. Thoughts on this affecting the T-1000? Hmm. Wait, when did that happen? I don't know, but um, that doesn't sound like it would be a standard loadout for Chief. Just saying. No. Apparently it happened well, in Well, uh, I guess CE. the standard loadout being that in this... I mean, did that happen in C or did that happen in, like, the Flood? I don't Because I do not remember... Yeah, like, in Halo CE, I don't... Like, yeah, when, when did that happen? Rags, do you remember this? When Cortana used laser beams? No. No, EMP. Like, Laser beams. I don't remember <laughs> that. Dude. Into the suit? I don't remember. The, yeah, I don't remember any of that. I just remember shooting the Sentinels. <laughs> yeah, man. That's all I remember. E1000 didn't have microchips or is... circuitry. No, but it must have had programming. That's how it works, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, 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 well, you know, interesting question, but um, I think that'll be for round three for Chief to make use of, and at that point he's got the um, all of his space ships, so he's well, yeah, because round three he won anyway. Yeah, uh, I'm here to shill for my favorite game of all time, Bastion, made by the creators of Hades, super giant games. It's about a kid attempting to restore a world that has fallen to pieces after an unforeseen calamity, while the combat is simple. It is varied enough to avoid going stale, and the main draw is an excellent story and world building as well as a narrator with the smoothest voice you'll hear narrating and encouraging almost everything you do. Yeah, it's got a good reputation, that game. Ah, uh, yeah. People I've, like I've heard only good things about Hades. I think so, too. Uh, check it out. It's probably not too expensive these days. How is Hot D Season 2 coverage gonna work? Um, I'm gonna be covering it with Gary like an hour after each episode premieres on his channel, and then we are probably going to do a big old season look through. Uh, I would be half tempted for us to do a split, you know, half season at a time because these are hour long episodes, and there's um, a lot going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're currently in a in a bit of a thing of we got acolyte, we got that. Smiling Friends is still coming out, and then there's just all the stuff we're doing in general. That's right. so, um, not a hundred percent certain of of how exactly all of this is going to work, but I, uh, you know, I, I, you'll you'll get you'll get your donned coverage because this time around, Rags and Fring will be watching it from episode one's launch. They're not going to be jumping That's in. That's right. Later. I'm very very eager to watch. Time uh, for Dragon Show. 
I'm super into it. I'm ready. Me, 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 me. Um, by the way, I've noticed this a lot in the past, I don't know, a few, maybe two weeks, but uh, the green light does not match when I talk exactly, but are you guys hearing any cutoffs in any, of any kind? No, 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 uh, but I have noticed that myself. It's annoying me, it's distracting me, because I keep thinking I need to change my sensitivity, <laughs> but I think you guys mm. hear me better than the ring is representing. Yeah, I hear you totally normal, it doesn't yeah, sound like anything. Yeah, nothing gets cut off. off. All right. Yeah. We hear you a okay. Good to know. Uh, Mullen needs a voice, a character, and smiling friends. A character disillusioned with modern media, and he just needs a smile. Damn it! I, I mean, <laughs> could you, if they asked any of us to do something, like we'd be like, yes, please. Uh, also, has Rags played Hunt Showdown? Curious on his thoughts. I've played it a little bit, and what I've played a little bit of, I have liked. It's an interesting kind of premise, and it's an interesting uh, like vibe to that game. I should play it more because, like I said, what little I've played, I've played maybe two or so hours with friends, and we've enjoyed it, and I've enjoyed it. So that should be something we kind of get into a bit. It's been tense, but it's been fun. It's been really rewarding when we work as a team. It's been uh, really cool to wander around and do stuff. I've enjoyed it. Um, ba -ba -ba. If you liked Kurzgesagt's video on smoking, you should check out John Oliver's piece on harm reduction. Everything I know about drugs comes from it. Interesting. Uh, I don't know if Speaking I'm going to be as impressed you. with... Um, oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> uh, Kurzgesagt's smoking video, like, it was, it was impressive for more than just the information. I was really... Well, production value. Well, there's that, but it's also, I don't know, it just felt like it might actually be cracking the code for um, getting this message more effectively across, because all of school is too scared to do anything other than it's the worst. Like, Community had an episode on this that I thought was pretty effective. Um, well, remember, or is it... Oh, yeah, go for it. Just the... the, 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 the they, they assume you're a lot stupider than you actually are in a school a lot of the time. Like, it's bad. Mm -hmm. No one likes it. It makes you a loser. It's like... Uh, shut up. No, it makes you look cool <laughs> as shit. What are you talking about? It's the, and that's the thing. When you get told that, it starts to put you in a position of just being like, I don't want to listen to you. You're full of shit. And so Kizgazak's opening with Remember all the, uh... the reasons why we should do it slash do enjoy doing it. And then being like, now, here comes reality for you. And it's, it's like so quick that it slides into, yeah, so here's how it's destroying you. Here's yeah. how it does permanent damage. Here's, uh, and, and in like intricate detail with like illustrations that are detailed but clear to understand, this is, you know, here's all the problems with it. I was just thinking about there, you remember at South Park when the butt out, when they go to the school? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, give that cigarette butt a throw. Uh. <laughs> and wasn't that the one where, because it was so bad that... Kenny was trying to eat his own hand <laughs> because it was so awful. And then, and then just like, you know, you could not smoke and be cool just like us. Hard cut to them smoking behind the school. And then like Carmen buffs up a whole bunch of like us <laughs> and, and it's like <laughs> they're all coughing because Mr. Mackey's there, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> they can barely Mackey. contain the coughing. Listen, Mr. Mackey and Mackey are different, right? They're not associated. They, why did you do that? <laughs> why would you even invoke her name next to like? He Mr. felt Mackie? you'd invoked you, it. So that? how about that? No, I didn't. You did it. Well, I suppose uh, subjective uh, is, 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 is how it works. Legend has it the world was birthed from a dingus egg. Dingus egg flavor text. Oh. Dingus egg flavor. I just learn something new every day. I love just listening to you guys talk while doing everything from playing some games to washing dishes. You're all so insightful. I love y'all. Oh, that's very nice of you. Oh, thanks. Glad to help you get through the chores with a bit less boredom. And you know what? We we do a lot of that talking stuff, even when we're not streaming. It's uh, we kind of like it. So hopefully that uh comes through a little bit when we're doing these streams, even even when we're talking about something horrible like the acolyte or. A video essay that believes it's insightful, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, would love to see a showdown of characters from EFAP lore. The Dawn would win, no doubt, but it's still fun to watch. The final fight probably would be Diabito and the Dawn. 
all the oh, philosophers. Di- I thought it would be di- I thought it would be Diabeto and the Cosmic Chicken. Um, would Cosmic Chicken be in the fight, or is that kind of like a unfair? No. Oh. Creator of all things, getting in the bracket seems a little bit unfair, but maybe. EFAP crew, brood member since prefab. Thank you for inspiring me to start my own story and reminding me not to be tizzy. Good luck to my budding streaming career. Hey. Good luck oh, indeed. hey. And, have uh, a good one. Yeah. Always nice to see an OG career. from back before in the in the before times. The before times. Yeah. Been a long while. A long, now. long ago. And we're still here. Who'd win in a fight, Kirby or Majin Buu? Who that? That's the pink guy from... That is that the pink guy from the Dragon Ball Oh, show? okay. Uh, what's, what does he do? Is he a... Well, Kirby, I think, wins, right? <laughs> is this... Kirby nearly took the whole thing. Is this Majin <laughs> Buu? <laughs> <laughs> Kirby versus this lad here? Uh, let's see what chat say. I don't know. What have we got here? Pink v pink. Kirby for sure. Kirby would beat a wish granter. Kirby for sure. I hate Kirby. This is a wish granter? What if you? What if he wishes for Kirby to die and grants his own wish? Dang. Yeah. Hey, Can he grant his own wish? Is that allowed? Well, I, I would assume typically not. People like to put that rule in. The curbster. Goku should have beat Kirby. Arborino, yeah. Boo has magic, but like, how good is the magic? You know, Kirby has some magic, right? Right, Fringy, right? He can use magic, yeah. He has a little wand. Yeah, that's right. He could cast a Vada Kedavra. It's <laughs> 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 a wild card <laughs> for free. Uh, Kirby, also from Fringy. You ever considered learning Harry Potter magic, Fringy? No, I don't. I don't care about Harry Potter. Like it doesn't. It just doesn't interest me at all. Damn. Right, like, you love Harry Potter, right? Guy, yeah. No, nothing. All right. <laughs> Ooh, Is uh... it, I, I don't know. It seems like cause Harry Potter was really popular, but it, it feels like it's it's. I don't know. Like what what's the what's the general vibe on it now? I don't know actually, because it got like killed up like, into that Hogwarts game. Well, remember when? Um, That's true. That, yeah. it was was it didn't wasn't a controversy when uh, J.K. Rowling said, "Turns out Dumbledore's gay." Like she said that, and people got really mad because it felt like post continuity shit. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I that vaguely remember the controversy. But then, yeah. is he like overtly now gay in the um in the in the in the prequel films? I didn't see any of them, so. Well, no, I don't. I, I, yeah, I have no clue. They're not making any more of those, though, are they? Because oh, I think they do, failed. They started yeah. doing worse and worse. The the Fantastic Beasts and the yeah. Grindelwald. They ones did three of them. Do... They did three of them, but they kept making less and less money each time. So yeah, I think that series is just over. It's interesting. You think you you think people would be all for more Harry Potter stuff? Well, I think I, again, I think the reason why they were going down. I I mean, I I can only presume it's because people didn't like those films. Fair enough. Well, um, I don't know anything about him. So I would, I would warn anybody who thought, "Oh, so I guess Harry Potter's dead." It'd be like that. That shit was just not connectable enough to Harry Potter's world. I don't think. Well, I, the game sold a gajillion. Exactly. Copies, I so. think the the health of the franchise is more than fine. It's just the Fantastic Beasts. I think people were having a little trouble connecting it up, being like, "Oh yeah." I think that's not as good of a, a pitch as, "Hey, you get to play as a student at Hogwarts, yeah, and you can, yeah. you know, go on an adventure." Like that just makes a lot of sense as a pitch for a, uh, well, I'd be like a Harry Potter game. I'd be curious to check. As far as I'm aware, the Harry Potter games have always done okay. Like they're just fun. Little yeah, I, but I because Hogwarts Legacy was the best-selling game of. Uh, oh well, last of course. Year, right? Yeah, that's obviously a, uh, what happened there was, is the whole thing with, like, a huge, that was getting talked about fucking ages on Twitter. And... Well, and I guess another thing as well is, because it came out so early in the year, it had the whole year to accumulate sales as well. Yeah. Compared to, like, I guess the new Call of but then again, people did not like Modern Warfare 3, so I don't know how well that one sold. But usually it's Call of Duty, Call of Duty or FIFA. She and whenever it's Grand Theft Auto, then it'll be Grand Theft Auto, but that's every 12 years by the looks of things now. Uh, J.K. Rowling didn't retcon it. She told Film 5 writer to cut a section where Dumbledore talked about an old GF because he's gay. It was hinted at in Book 7. 
Well, there you go then. This is the thing. Fair, I, am, there you go. I am not what they call a Potterhead. I, uh. We. I, is that what they call Potterheads? I genuinely have no a idea. Potter then they, like, do, do people call themselves, like, the houses, right? Like, what, what are. I'm a know, Gryffindor. Like, uh... I, that's so oh, funny. I don't know why. It's just something about that. It's just like, oh, Jesus. All right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah okay. Right. Ravenclaw forever. Okay. Uh, yeah, Ravenclaw is cool. I guarantee you guys would enjoy Mob Psycho 100. Guarantee. Nice. Oh, boy. Well, I'm watching. Bold I'll get back statement. to you on that one. Mm. What historical figure or event would you most like to see adapted to cinema? Trying my hand at writing my first feature-length screenplay about the death of Cyrus the Great, according to Herodotus. Hmm. Um, because I'm trying to think about like if it's something that's been done before or not. You know, like in terms of thinking about what I'd be interested in. I suppose even if it's been done uh... before, right? Like a particular, maybe if you want it done in a particular way. Um. Well, yeah, because I, 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 I feel even though there's so many World War Two movies, I think I'd still be leaning towards World War Two, like something like Tobruk or something. You know what I mean? Just like something that is maybe a little bit more uh, obscure. Even though I don't know if Tobruk is that obscure, really. Hmm. If I have access to um... all of history, I might try and find something unusual that doesn't often get covered. You know. Yeah, like some crazy battle, maybe, or what about some... one of the uh, like the earliest big war, whatever that may be, as far back war? as we could possibly yeah. speculate of the first significant war. What is the well, most yeah, be interesting war to like? go back to like Mesopotamia or something, right, or Sumer, or when I five agree. cave dudes and five other cave dudes were like, "That's it, bro. This is happening." What, you're going to make that Roland Emmerich film? <laughs> and then they they draw a line with their club in the mud, and then they stand on either side, they're like, all right, <laughs> on three. <laughs> How many, it feels like there's actually, or maybe it just feels that way because it hasn't been that many lately. It feels like there haven't been as many, like, historical fiction about, um like, medieval conflicts. Hmm. Like, what would come to mind of a film that was about, like, the Hundred Years' War, for instance? Maybe they do somewhat exist and we're not aware of them. I don't know. Like the Maybe. I do feel like I feel like there were way more medieval now. I feel like there were way more medieval like in the two thousands. That felt like when there was way more medieval or like ancient history like war epics, you know? Mm. Like Braveheart, Troy, stuff like that. I guess three hundred, <laughs> I suppose, as well. Uh, Muller, I'm excited for you to see Star Trek DS9 episode The Pale Moonlight. It's political and puts your main characters in complex moral situations. <gasps> Neat. Get I approve. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Mora, I remember you saying the T-Rex was your favorite dino. Opinion on the Pokemon Tyrantrum. Also, hi, Raggle and Fringle. Yo. Hello. I ran from. I feel like they probably played with that for a while. Like, what's our T-Rex one going to be called? Should we make it a combination of this, that, and the other thing? You know. Oof. Lagging a bit there. Like my Mahler? PC was. Yeah, I was about to say, you're... Yeah. Hope it's, you good? Uh, hope it hangs in there. I don't know. <laughs> I was getting a little spooked. Oh, okay. Well... Uh, well, I, I think it's past, so we can carry on. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, I, I was saying that, you know that when they were coming up with this, they were like, all right, we got to have a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but also change it. And so they probably thought about it for some time. <laughs> it needs to be a Pokemon. Give yeah. him like a, give him a big, funny sort of looking, what, what is that meant to be on his neck? What is that? Um, is it's that... A while to load. Oh, it's not loading for me. Oh, I can just see a poop emoji well, I now. I can see it on stream. <laughs> yeah, I just see yeah. a poop. I just see a poop. Why is it a poop? Why is it a poop? Oh. I don't, okay, it's well. It's trying. It's trying uh, again. I guess Discord's I'll just, having a tism. I'll just use light shot. Let's see if that works. Someone's either Discord or me. I don't know. Something's going on. I can see him on stream, though. Oh, so. there he is. 
There he is. He came through. Okay. Um, that's a neat guy. Yes, he is. I yeah, mean, I, I like, like him, him well enough. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like Santa Claus. Yeah, he seems less threatening than he could have. He seems like he might have some wise information for us, yeah, and that he's a little he misunderstood because he's a big old T Rex. He looks, yeah, he he's got this sagacity to him because he's got the beard and he's been around a while. And let me tell you about all the things I've seen. Neato. If Mola played Magic the Gathering, would he main Eldrazi? I don't know. Maybe. You might. You just might. Hmm. Do Cyber Dark Edge Dragon. Yeah, that kind of sums up. What you, Cyber what Dark like? Edge Dragon. Yeah, it's... Um, they got some edgy boys. Travel seemingly seeming unreal hurts acolyte and rings of power. No time, no effort, no cost, no weariness. Lord of the Rings shows it well, and it adds to the seriousness of the stakes. Absolutely, it builds out your world, and it feels as though there are consequences. Uh, this was a big was... issue with Rings of Power as well, um, where people would just be able to make these massive trips across vast distances without ever bringing supplies or having any weariness to anything. They would just show up wherever they needed to be at any time. And so you felt like the whole world was just right next to each other. Um, that it was very... Uh, like the, that the world was very unimpressive and small and uh, there was no sense of time or distance. Yeah, they actually specified uh, <laughs> specifically Acolyte and Rings of Power, which, yeah, that's, uh, those would be the ones... Uh, what are your favorite Pokemon? I'm quite fond of Breloom, Mushroom Kangaroo that knows karate and poisons on contact. Also banned in online play. Uh, we've we've answered this before, I think. What are our usuals for this? Big fan of Psyduck. Blastoise. Really like Psyduck. Is a uh, top tier for me. <laughs> oh yeah. Got, I like uh, Totodile. He's cool. He's cool. Yeah, yeah. those are both good. I really like uh, Appleton. As we were told in one super chat, I actually um, I went and got. Let me see. I got him here. I haven't put him in anything. Uh, I've got Applin, Flapple, and Appleton the cards, mm. and they have they're they're like green apple versions. So that's kind of fun. Um, yeah. They they just they're really great. <laughs> I just really like Appleton in particular. Uh, Denise King of Armageddon. Denies, I'm not sure. Uh, also, Relinquished have a Link Retrain called Relinquished Anima, which gets used quite a lot. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Edward Elric would be cool in Showdown. Yeah, FMA Brotherhood Man. He would, uh, he would probably make a pretty strong impression, I'd imagine, at top tier. Watch FMA Brotherhood and Code Geass. They're my favorite. I've seen both of them. Rags has seen one of them. Fringy has seen zero of them. It's Maybe the perfect balance. Yeah. Uh, can we get a dog's bracket with Lassie, Scooby, Quigley, Rags, etc.? P.S. This is dys dyslexic Doug <laughs> Douglas Michael actor. <laughs> the dog's bracket. We could do it. Yeah, it's not impossible. Uh, you said they start in yelling distance in the forest, so Paul Atreides would beat the Doctor in round one and two with the voice and foresight, and then beat Santa, Boogie, Doomguy, Optimus as a mind control. Can Kirby off himself? What is, how does Kirby react to the voice? Uh, bringing what we got for that. I, I figure he might be immune to that. I don't know. You but sure? Like, he would just... <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if if he used well, the voice, he's Kirby certainly would not just immune. Look at him like to like um, a Jigglypuff in in Smash Bros. You know the influence. That's true. Mm. I feel like the voice. So would probably get check him. out. Someone says check out Hydrapple. I do. I know about Diplin and Hydrapple. I do know about those two, but mm -hmm. I couldn't get those. Uh, those cards just don't exist, as far as I know. Uh, at least last time I checked, because these are very new, uh, very new Pokemon. But those three did. Apple, Flapple, Applin, Flapple, and Appleton. <laughs> so I got those. Say them enough times and you'll just come up with a bunch of new ones. Oh, Flapplin, Tim, Timmy, Flapple, 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 Flapple,
animal of the day, the great eared nightjar. Cool bird. Oh, look at him. Oh, that wow, is a really look cool looking bird. That looks really neat. He's got such a tiny mouth. Look at how tiny his little beak is. It's so <laughs> little. Makes me think oh, about man, his him. eyes are so big compared to his mouth. It's so tiny. I uh, recognize it might not be feasible to get something like this in a TV show, depending on the difficulty, but just using these as basic designs to create almost alien life, just because they're just not uh, very, like, n this isn't very commonly understood as a, as a, like, this is surprising to see and really cool. And I always think, like, there's got to be so much inspiration in the animal kingdom to create alien animals. Um, just, I mean, you know. yeah, the only reason we're used to stuff is, I mean, imagine the first time seeing a giraffe or an elephant or something like that. And you're like, bullshit. Mm -hmm. Nuh uh, that's made up. You liar. A snake is just a head and a tail. What? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. How'd that happen? <laughs> Someone fucked that up. It's not... Yeah. Uh, watch another and erased both 12 episodes and underrated as fuck. Are those animus? Who knows? There's so many TV shows these days. It could also be TV shows. Yeah. Just regular. If they're, if they're anime, they're overrated. Oh, my God. Well, they probably... If they're oh Netflix shows, goodness. they're probably overrated as well. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho! Dun, dun, dun. Um, yeah, fair enough. Any thoughts on an EFAP movies arc of the Hobbit films? Perhaps with the same crew as Lord of the Rings, but with a more critical eye. Look into what went wrong. We had a critical eye for Lord of the Rings, or I think that's in there. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. It's just it really just good. There's not that so much, much wrong to with it. Raise. Um, but yeah, but I think yeah, we'd be think interested. Hobbits in the cards. Doing the Hobbit at some point. Those are weird sure. movies. We'd have a lot. So. Mm -hmm. uh, if I remember correctly, in Code Geass, Britain kept North America but lost the British Isles. Yeah, it's uh, very much an alternate world with all kinds of wackiness in it. Um, I don't know how it fares typically with anime people. Like, I don't know how good it's considered. Uh, who wins a dance-off? Fringy, Mola, or Rags? I don't think I win. I, think I feel like it's Rags, actually. Yeah. I, I think I was, I, was, I was born to boogie. <laughs> I like that Rags is <laughs> like, well, I guess uh, I've got nothing to argue yeah. against. So. <laughs> uh, what are yeah, your thoughts? I think that's pretty quick cut. On the idea of a superhero bringing his daughter, who also has superpowers, into dangerous situations, Fringy must answer first. Like, what's the question? What are your thoughts on the idea of a superhero bringing his daughter, who also has superpowers, into dangerous situations? Hmm. Um. <laughs> is it, what is that? Is that happening in a movie? I mean, the problem is there's so little context, right? If there were, if it was yeah. a situation where, it depends how old they are, first of all. Well, and yeah, then, exactly, because if they're like 30 or something, then it's probably not a big deal. It's just their choice at that point. Then we need to know more about these individual characters, whether or not they would feel comfortable doing these things. Uh, if you're asking whether or not states. I'd morally condemn them for doing so, again, it just depends on a bunch of variables. I could totally picture a dad would want to be... Is say the daughter's desperately looking to become a, a hero. I could see the dad being like, okay, but with me for a while, all right, before you you go nuts and do shit on your own. And then dangerous, like how dangerous? So, um, you know, mm, variables. Yeah, it's a, it's a vague question. Makes Too it vague difficult to really to answer. answer definitively, yeah. Exactly. Um, in honor of Dino Month, check out S uh, Sour of Fajanax, uh, Lord of the Lizard Eaters. Is this guy real? Also known as Allosaurus <laughs> Maximus, larger than Big Al himself. All right, let's have a look see. I, I haven't seen a picture. So I'm just asking from the name alone. If uh... oh, he looks very dinosaur-y. Got a little picture here. <laughs> All right, look at the kind of guy you see him. Big old mouth. Yeah, fair, you know. He's a big old I... guy. <laughs> Could see him getting, getting a few eaten done pretty easily, yeah. All right, cool. I like him. Mm. Uh, by the way, the daughter is a baby. Um, oh. Probably oh, wouldn't recommend it if it's a baby. Yeah, here. I think it's a bit, uh, hmm, bit crazy. 
It just seems that just seems unnecessary. <laughs> That's what I would probably say seems about that. A little, yeah. Seems not a little sure. irresponsible, you know. Not sure what I would have in the pros column for that decision. You know what I'm saying? Really, I mean, maybe the maybe the babysitters are really, really bad, or <laughs> really lives, dangerous so babysitters. Take her into away. active combat zones. To this makes me think yeah. about how The Incredibles does such a good job of essentially contextualizing why. Uh, Violet and Dash were in that situation, and then and then Helen taking it like very, very, very seriously. Because it's it's like The Incredibles has a few moments oh, yeah. like that where you go like, "Wow, this feels like more uh, more serious than what you would uh, typically expect." Yeah, because they sneak from, onto the uh, ship, right? Yeah, they sneak onto the plane, and so then she gives them that speech on the uh, when they get there on the island. Essentially, like you need to understand the gravity of the situation. This is a this is an extreme situation and these people are dangerous. It's just a case of like obviously, you know, when they were writing that that's just like a clear example of this is like the nature of what it means to write. If you want to have a story where you get the whole family there uh on the island so that they can all be part of the action, you know, then you gotta you gotta justify that. You've gotta justify it and not only do that, but then like work with it to create drama. That's, uh, God, The Incredibles is, is such a good movie. Uh, round three, Joel should have been Joel, Destroyer of Zebras. Yeah, he's quite powerful <laughs> at round three. He can kill the oh, whole he world. He doesn't destroy zebras. It's zebra. I don't even know why I said zebras. <laughs> I said zebra. He, he doesn't destroy them. He just destroys the people who help them. He, well, remember, he, it's canon. He killed everyone. He's responsible for all death. <laughs> That's true, oh, yeah. Found to him. Dude, and, and that is so funny. It's like, look, he helped a zebra. <laughs> you have to like him. So funny. And I do uh, like zebras, but, I mean... Uh, Ellie didn't get a choice. She gets to choose. How does how does like how does he not how does Struckman not understand that that's like a hugely important part of the equation that Ellie didn't get to make the choice? I know. Like the conclusion is is like oh well Joel took that choice from her. It's like what do you mean she didn't choose anything? She get to choose. She's getting a brain mangled. <laughs> He's gonna have yeah. to do something. Mangled. Uh, currently making a video critiquing Jurassic World Dominion first video ever, let alone of such caliber. Wish me luck. Best of luck, sir. I yeah, hear it's good... quite right, yeah. the movie to dig into, so have fun. That's the most important thing, I suppose. If it makes Fringy smile, I feed crows in my area. They get happy for cheese and fly around me. I've got a reputation as the hobbit that feeds crows. <laughs> the hobbit get, that feeds they get, I like the I like the sentence they get happy for cheese. That's just funny. But don't yeah, we crows, all? crows don't forget both positive and negative. Isn't that this, this is such a fascinating thing about crows that they will communicate to their fellow crows which humans to avoid or uh, menace <laughs> for, for sliding them at some point in the past. Crows hold a grudge and that grudge spans generations. It would be funny if you played, like, you know that, that tic-tac-toe, uh, or, like, noughts and crosses crow? You, like, cheat. Like, glares at you. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna forget this. What's noughts and crosses? So, like, naught as in zeros and then crosses. The crosses. Yeah, is that a game? Noughts and crosses? Mm-hmm. What did, tell me about it. I've never heard of it. The, the game that they play... In good old uh, Black Widow, that they somehow fucked up. Oh, tic tac toe. Interesting. Mm. Knots and crosses. Okay. I missed the showdown live, but I wanted to show support for the idea because it was so much fun. Would love to see more of it in the future. Maybe next time you could pick one gent and stick to characters from that only. One gent? G E N T E? One. One. I'm not sure what they mean. Uh, from maybe it's one, comma gent, like he's calling you a gent, a gentleman. Stick I to, don't know. Well, it says and stick to characters from that only. Oh, genre, that genre, only. Wait, genre. Wait. I guess that's a Gen possibility. I'm not Gen sure if that would work out so great because obviously the weight classes was just designed to try and give some meat to the fights because he didn't want to, like a genre. You could you could have easily get the ones that are just stomp, you know, depending on who we end up with, even with similar you know like sci-fi. 
Like, on one hand, you can mm -hmm. have a Rick Deckard who's gonna be more of a match for uh, Jack Bauer than he would some crazy sci-fi creature. Um, yeah. So, you know, but, yeah, um, I, I appreciate it. A lot of people had really positive feedback about it. I'm not sure how it would look if we did it again, but obviously we wouldn't run it in exactly the same way. I was thinking, like, I was exploring it with them, I think, as if we did it again, it might just be a matter of let's find like 50 fights that are very famously interesting to talk about that we have the background to talk about instead of having okay. someone be a winner. Random pairings, sort of? Sort of. You know, like um, one of the ones people were excited to talk about was Wolverine versus Batman uh, in the three rounds. And it's like, yeah, we can try and find more of those that are like, oh shit, who would win? Uh, get some votes. Who would win? Scrooge McDuck versus Mr. Burns. I Round feel one. like Mr. Burns is a level of ruthless that Scrooge McDuck isn't, right? Round one Though is probably I admit, Scrooge I don't know McDuck because Mr. Burns can be pushed over by, like, the wind. Uh, round two, that gets more complicated because does Mr. Burns get his hounds? Um, <laughs> and then what does Scrooge McDuck get exactly? I'm not sure. And then round three is probably Mr. Burns because, as Rags just laid out, he's going to have access to everything he's ever tried to hit anyone with. And <laughs> that's a lot of things. <laughs> Scrooge McDuck is far more physically fit than Mr. Birds. Correct. I agree. But that only helps I for round that... one and maybe round two. Scrooge yeah, I feel like the willing the willingness to do things is a big part of it. I mean built I mean, in just, it was it was the ruthless. notion of be, that does that does actually play in, but like they're all under the impression they have to kill the opponent. But like that'll be okay. You know, like Mister Mister Bean being told that he's still gonna be floopy and like oh, <laughs> just awkwardly. And, and you know that Kermit is gonna be a little like, oh man, I gotta do this. Uh, though Fringy had him breaking necks, you know. So I I can't say that may maybe there's a side to Kermit that I'm less familiar with. Um, do do elephants can recognize human languages? Neat. That doesn't actually I surprise heard, me. Uh, I heard that um, babies in the womb can differentiate between languages as well. That if you if if they hear people speaking the same language, then they will be able to distinguish between that in a different uh, language. Fascinating. That's something I, I just heard that. But I can kind of believe it, because if you're a baby, all you're doing is just listening. Yeah, That's like all out. you can do in there, basically. You're just chilling and listening. That's all you do, so. Oh, that's something I've heard. I can believe with, uh... Yeah, because the animals can distinguish between, like, tones, you know? They, they, there's... That's why, that's why it's... Why, why we talk to cats and, like, a, or animals in a really soft, kind of high-ish pitched voice, because it's less threatening. You know, so they can, you know, they know about tones and stuff. And of course, no body language. And I can believe that. Elephants are supposed to be smart, too. So, And I've heard they can hear, they can uh, smell really well. I don't know how good their hearing is, but that's what I've heard. Watching Godzilla get the worst seed imaginable in round one was certainly a disappointment, I have to say. But it was still a great show. Any chance of a Goji Kaiju EFAP movies arc in the near future? Perhaps, perhaps. Not going to rule it out. And uh, yeah, as for Godzilla, it would have been would have been neat to get Godzilla uh, at least one fight where he could uh, you know dominate. But he was he's he's a heavy hitter, but the, he's got some heavy hitters to fight that are just going to dominate him. Poor guy, he tries, and uh, and we respect that. I just graduated and will start working with Forest Machines on Monday. I'm a big fan of you all. Kind regards from Sweden. Wow. Oh, Forest Machines can sound like that. Sounds like really fun. They could be big and. You know, like, ah, chopping down trees and digging up big old holes and ditches. Could be some pretty intense stuff. And, you know, if it's the kind of work where we can keep you company while doing it, then by all means. And, uh, hope you have fun. The guy is probably confusing Cortana rerouting all the power from the suit to use for a teleport later in the game. I mean, um, yeah, she can do stuff with a suit. I just do not remember. Unless they're talking about the thing that happens with, like, 
when Guilty Spark like falls on the ground when Cortana pops out, but she's hooked up to the like control room's panel, not Chief's suit. And I, I I'm not sure what that even was, <laughs> really. <laughs> May I? You know, maybe he was so startled that he just fell to the ground, like, oh my goodness. Um, do, do thoughts on fire in space, even if there's no gas or liquid present for it to ignite? Anyway, for it to not be a mistake apart from artistic flourish. I mean, um, I, I mean the, the I final mean, word on this is just let, like, like, just have it be, I think it's what Ryan said, right, uh, in our coverage, blowtorch level fire, where it's clearly bursting from something. The fire is maintained because of a flow of oxygen slash whatever it's required to maintain in space, even just for a few seconds. Everyone will be fine with it. Um, and showing uh, showing the Death Star exploding isn't going to make a difference in this. Uh, like being like, see explosions I guess, happen. I guess that's uh, that's so, I guess something I find interesting about it is like, yeah, just saying that. Well, there's explosions in space, and that's you know, it's like, well, that, I don't know, why is it that so many people have noticed the fire? <laughs> like, isn't that interesting? You yeah, know, that so many people the, have commented on it. The explosion, like, that's like a moon's worth of, like, air and atmosphere um, well, going I up, think, too. Uh, so. I, I think, um, I mean, when you talk about, like, the idea of Star Wars and its accuracy to space, I mean, obviously, you know, what what's to be made of the sounds, for instance, right? Of uh of like the sounds of blasters and the sounds of explosions and if the explosions were happening would they be massive like fireballs or would they be kind of like what you see in gravity right where like when an explosion happened it instantly gets snuffed out mm. um but like I don't know man that just seeing like a fire burning in space is one of those things where it's like huh because mm. <laughs> it just looked like a normal fire it didn't look like it was like a like like um. You you know like an exhaust like a the, the I yeah. forget what they're called when the flames and something comes out of an exhaust uh, tube off the back of a car or a like a drag racer or something like it's you have a a gas that is venting quickly out into space and it is on fire so it's on fire for a little bit and it looks it's like a jet it looks like a jet of flame. And Most it people pointed out it looks big. like the wind is affecting it, which is really fucking yeah, strange. Yeah. What that wind. is very odd. Vacuum. Very odd in space. It's not a very windy place. That's not I, that I guess windy. The thing know. is, is that you just you didn't have to do it. Um, like having ships explode in these big fireballs, you got way more of an argument of well, that's more cinematic or whatever, right? Like, look at those explosions. Don't they look really cool? I still like that's one thing. But you didn't this, need the there's fire. There's still so much uh, material that would need to be dealt with in a Death Star that explodes. You know what I mean? So it's... Uh, oh, cool. Well, the Death Star in particular is a weird example. I figure you just point to ships exploding, right? Like, uh, you know, like X-Wings and TIE Fighters bursting into flames that linger for a while, right? Yeah. And... But again, it's like you didn't need to have it be that there was a panel that was on fire and in space that needed to be extinguished. Well, it's, it's an opportunity know? to make... An interesting rendition of fire and space. You can do stuff with it that would clearly, but like everybody I was seeing reacting to it, which I think is a normal reaction, being like, "Wait, well, that fire doesn't look right. This is space." I, I think that's the thing. At the end of the day, if that many people are having that reaction, was it worth it? You know, when think, so many um, people like, uh, it's the same sort of thing as if she if she was like, uh, "I've got the wrong helmet on for welding. Hang on," takes it off completely, uh, but she goes <gasps> before doing it and then puts a different helmet on. We'd all be like, "What the fuck?" Like, the fuck? you can, and then yeah. someone being like, "Oh, dude, it was like a second, whatever." It's be like, "You." <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it interesting that in the world of Star Wars, with all of the the magic and the lightsabers and the intergalactic travel and everything, it's a little flame in space that makes us all go, wait a second, that's not real. Just goes uh, to show. Yeah. The, pla the places where the mind breaks are not necessarily in the big things, it's in the little things and, 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 and how those things interact with uh, what we understand to be just natural laws of the universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the solution to the traveling salesman? I'm very invested, Tell I promise. The solution to the traveling salesman? Mm-hmm. I don't know what this means. Is the traveling salesman a problem that needs to be resolved? That's a person, right? Um, so, the traveling salesman problem, also known as the traveling salesman 
Bill's person problem, asks the following question. Given a list of cities and the distances between each pair of cities, what is the shortest possible route that visits each city exactly once and returns to the origin city? Okay. All right. I gotcha. I gotcha. So it's like a puzzle slash math problem, knowing your distances, your travel times, and then assume... taking into account the real world elements, like what are the, you know, what road, you know, methods of transportation are there. And okay, interesting. Is this, well, is there a set amount of cities and distances, or is this just dependent on whatever custom one you want to make up? At which point, I assume there will be I an answer. I assume this is like a framework of a problem where they will give you, you would have X amount of cities slash stops, and you might complicate it by saying, you only have this much money, you have this much time, da 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 da. So it's not strictly a math problem, but it's got real world logic and stuff thrown into it as well. Yeah, I've not heard this one. Oh, so it could be mentioned. potentially interesting. Um. Because we make variants of this in all kinds of... Th this is almost like... Um, th this is something we kind of do all the time in our lives, uh, though it's in a different format. It's like, if I get in my car and I need to do these four errands, I only need to stop at each errand one place and then end back up at home. What's the shortest distance I should take and the order that I should take I mean, at this point, to get back? It would have been more time. interesting as a question the earlier you go back, the further you go back, because now a computer's probably going to be able to tell you the answer to this one, right? Like the best thing to do with however, whatever thing you have. Yeah, yeah. Um, though I'm sure that once you throw in a lot of other real world variables like traffic, like oh it's four o'clock now, and I know at five about five five thirty, you know the you know rush hour traffic's gonna hit, which means that I should actually go to this place first and go to the city and get that done before rush hour, even though it's technically not as you know, efficient as maybe going another route, but I know because of traffic I should go there first and get that out of the way so I don't get stuck in traffic later. So it'll be things like that, and that's the kind of stuff that you would you sort of think about when your daily life, when you're going around doing errands, picking stuff up, dropping things off. But, yeah, I like the, the format of the question, especially with the real-world variables in there to give you something to think about. The traveling salesman problem could defeat Unicron? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to recommend you guys read Berserk. The first three volumes are very edgy, but if you don't get dissuaded by them, you'll discover a great story with solid world building and amazing characters. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Ooh. Would love to watch you guys cover a video that attempts to tear down Godzilla Minus One. Some of my favorite episodes are when you guys defend good films. Yeah, it does happen here and there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen a video or two talking about Godzilla Minus One in a very, 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 very bad way that I don't appreciate because I really love Go that movie. Hero. But who knows? It's a tough movie to really, you know, poop all over. There's a, I mean, there's a couple little issues, but, you know, we talked about those in our EFAP on it. But ultimately, it's a really solid, excellently constructed movie. Um, in GTA, nothing beats motorcycles. Motorcycles have this incredible amount of fun to them, being able to get through, uh, you know, get through the cars in traffic, going between them. You know, the cool factor of being able to outmaneuver, you know, the police chasing you and go through little, you know, side streets and sidewalks and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it was a really big selling point for Vice City was uh, helicopters and motorcycles. That was really, that was really a, a cool thing. Was that the first one that had those, Vice City? Yeah, so Damn. GTA, because no GTA 3 uh, had cars, it had one plane, but it was like, it was kind of like a meme. Didn't like really a like weird add on properly. kind of thing. Okay. It, yeah, it was kind of like a challenge to get it to be airborne for an, uh, like any amount of time. Um, uh, and then okay. Vice City added motorcycles, boats, and helicopters. Uh, and then San Andreas added planes, like for real. Um, it even had, man, Sa dude, San Andreas was awesome. Like, there was, like, you could go to, like, a flight school to be taught, like, how to fly the planes and then develop, like, proficiency in doing it as well as, you know, like, increasing CJ's actual skills in that and a variety of different tasks. I remember, like, I remember, um, it was one of the, you know, like, those things that would compare the size of a map in, uh, like, an open world game and it would- Yeah, it yeah. I remember um, when I saw the like the maps comparing how big San Andreas actually was compared to even even like Grand Theft Auto Four or Five. 
it's one of these instances of dude that world felt enormous like that that world really felt big i remember it felt like it was a like a decent journey to get from um like los santos to san fierro that felt like a that felt like a drive and you got to see the countryside and it, and it was like the variety of the countryside as well cuz you got like like the sort of you know like redwoods and everything like that but then the deserts when you go into uh, los venturas oh man that was Man, that, that game... <laughs> oh, wait, no, Grand Theft Auto 3 had boats. It did, yeah. And then um, and then it was Vice City that added motorcycles and helicopters. God, those games are so cool. <laughs> God, they were so fun. Oh, man. Take me back. <laughs> Take me back Take me to back. the early 2000s. <laughs> when... Oh, God, it was so good. I, I remember... um. I remember, like, people kind of being a bit disappointed with, like, Grand Theft Auto 4 by comparison to San Andreas, which almost feels a bit unfair, because, like, GTA 4 compared to GTA 5 in a, in a lot of ways is more robust. Um, it's just that San Andreas was so enormous. That, like, even just going down to it, it's like, well, it's just one city. But, in, and, like, that, I feel like GTA 4 didn't get enough credit for how many, like, interiors they had, and the, the fact that they were seamless, no loading screens, just head straight in. Uh, Kirby wins, even though Boo can delete solar systems with ease, Kirby is a million times faster and has better abilities. Are we talking about, like, round three Kirby with the star, maybe? I don't know what Kirby's maximum speeds look like. I have no idea. I'm sure it's somewhere. Uh, have you ever played another crab's treasure? It's basically Dark Souls, but you're a hermit crab that uses random garbage on the seafloor as its shell. The writing is funny, clever, and it's hard. But it also has Dark Souls armor references. Um, James was recommending it pretty hardcore. I know that, uh, I've, I've picked it up because, um, too many people said it was pretty strong for me not to want to grab it and make sure I check it out at some point. I just gotta get it in the old queue. I've been, um, been a little busy, but maybe at some point, um, but yeah, heard lots and lots of good things, so fair, fair enough. Uh, P.S. Expecting another baby, and it's a girl due in October. We'll have one of Ew, each. Gross. Also, high rags and fringy. Girls are stinky. Girls are icky. Don't let them anywhere near you, trust me. Hey, Halloween baby, though. Congratulations. Congratulations on your spawn, though. I hope it goes really well. Woohoo! I hope it does okay and has a good personality and develops a good moral framework and doesn't become a drug addict crack whore or anything like that uh, so yeah that's you know, that's together. typically what uh, good job. a lot of people like to hear when when they have having a baby good I've stuff heard it's it's actually it's weird what's interesting is that i i look at having kids and it's like i don't like i want kids and i don't want them you know like i the idea of having kids and raising kids is really interesting to me and kind of appealing in its own way to have someone that you love and you have kids with that person and you grow up and you shape their lives and, you know, watch them develop and grow and go off into the world and be like, this is me in a, in a way making a mark in a very real kind of sense. Like I've created this life and now it's going out there to have a, a life of its own. And that's a, that's an incredibly grand and wonderful kind of thing to consider. And when you hear pretty much like every parent I've talked to say, yeah, it's really tough. It's really hard. It's one of the, the it's a life changing thing. It's, it, it's incredibly difficult to do. And, you know, I'm glad I did it and it was, it's always worth it. And it, it feels, you know, excellent. And I'm glad that I went through with it. It just makes you think, makes you think. All right. Yeah. You got anything for you for the, for the wonderful new Bobby? Fringy, how many um, eggs do you want? what <laughs> yeah your your bird your bird girlfriend um how many eggs do you want uh to have and then you got a big nest you're interrupting you me eggs. saying congrats to the super chat of uh why are you doing that why are you interrupting or what it isn't about me or whether or not i like it's or how many eggs i want it's about saying congrats he won't spell words he won't tell us about his 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 offspring Jeez. aspirations. Smaller. What do we? I don't know, man. It's, he's all these lines. It's like I'm like Alice. I'm like Alice in the the the, the laser the, the the laser hallway, and I'm dodging all the lasers here. That's how I feel like I'm Wait, trapped is, in this is little Fringy hallway the lasers with all these lasers. Or the hallway, or 
What is Fringy here? Uh, I don't I I don't know the extent of this metaphor actually. It's still kind of forming. It's like it's like my new child and I'm still discovering things about it. You got to write it down, like mm. get a you know, get a little a page and and figure it out. Uh, but yeah, congrats, man. Yes, that's yeah, the main point. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wasn't this a stream about the Super Chats from 286? Yes, but you crazy bastards have been sending in messages so hard that I'm trying to keep up so that we can then enter the... I've, I've done a few of 286, but to be fair, we've, you know, we're only three hours in, right? That's early, as, as, as a lot of you insane people would say. Um, this is probably why we, we definitely have to do catch-ups offline, because <laughs> they just by the time we complete them all, there's a whole new set. This is, by the way... Really long ago, me and Drinker did catch ups live. Uh, he did that for a few weeks, I think, and then stopped <laughs> because it's like impossible. They go way longer than, yeah. Uh, new Wallace and Gromit movie coming. Meteor is saved. Unironically, yes. There is a new Wallace and Gromit movie coming, and I hope it's good. And I expect yes. it will be good because they're always good. They only make good things. <laughs> they're mm. like the studio that we're like. Ah. At least we know they'll only make good things. I look forward to hearing the the song. It's a good one. <laughs> the Which worst thing they've ever done is good. So we're in business. What's your favorite uh, Wallace and Gromit uh, film, including Where Rabbit? If you want to include that in the mix. So we've got. A grand day out. The wrong uh, trousers. The wrong trousers. Close shave. close shave. Have you seen A Matter of Loaf and Death? I have not. Is it? Hmm. That's is that was that the a... one that they made in. I think it was like the late two thousands. Um. So that's another you know like short film. Okay, that one I have not seen. I've hmm. seen Curse of the Were Rabbit, which I like a lot. I haven't seen it in a long time though, so I do need to rewatch it. I think I rewatched it like a year ago. Um. I love that movie. That movie was yeah. great. I um I get I get to me it's it's a fight between uh, that and the wrong trousers for uh, the top spot. I really like the wrong trousers. That's a that's a really that's a really good one. Like the chase at the end when when Gromit has to grab the train tracks and then lay them in front of him. Yeah, yeah, the build the going. yeah. <laughs> to catch the penguin. I love it. I I think I'm gonna go with wrong trousers too because that. That asshole penguin and Gromit just knows he's up to something. It's yeah, it's, it's great. I really love good. it. Though I will say, I really like Sean the Sheep. He's got this. Oh this, yeah, yeah. I have you seen the Sean the Sheep movie? I have not. No. That's a that's a fun movie. That very oddly, like the uh, that there's like one moment in particular that that really hits me in the in the feels. Which yeah. which is kind of odd when it's such a it's it's a very goofy like kind of wacky movie it doesn't take itself too seriously, but there's this one moment when all the characters are in peril and the farmer guy like they 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 hug him because they're scared, and then he looks in the glass and um because he's had amnesia for the whole film and he looks in the glass and then it fades back to like you know when Sean and the dog and all the other sheep they're a little. And they, you know, congregating around the farmer, and it's like that's the moment when he realizes, ah, yeah, this is my dog, and these are my sheep. Um, and it's like, oh man, that's like, oh, that's that's like pretty emotional, honestly. Why is clay making me feel this way? <laughs> well, it's just that's the power of animation, right there, yeah, is you know imbuing right. these characters with life. I I remember there was like an exhibit for Ardman stuff um, that I went to that had like a whole bunch of the original um, like clay figures and sets uh, and props and and that was that was amazing like it's so cool seeing them in real life this it's it's like the artistry that they have <laughs> it's it's remarkable like Wallace and Gromit is so good. Well, no disagreements here. Uh... Next, I mean, we could do Walls and Gromit coverage at some point. That sounds like something we would do. I would love to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I wish maybe a maybe like a claymation arc or something because there's an arc there. Um, yeah, I would. I wouldn't mind doing a claymation arc. I think it would um, be disproportionately Oddman though, uh, <laughs> because because Chicken Run would have to be part of it. Well, well yeah. I'll... Have oh, you heard anything yeah. about the new Chicken Run? No, no, I didn't. I haven't watched it. Um, it's a little yeah, bit scary, like isn't it? As a prospect, it's like, hmm. 
It's a bit yeah. scary. Yeah, compared to like Wallace and Gromit, which feels a lot more uh, cozy, you know, the idea of another mm. one. Well, all right. Uh, we have Pokemon of the Day, Gudra, is uh, this fella right here. Whatever. It's not loading, is it? It never loads. going to yeah. give you a it's, poop uh, emoji it's Discord. again. Discord's being pissed. It better not. <laughs> I'll just send you another one. Oh, this guy. Uh -huh. I think I've seen him. So, Gudra. Um, that's, that's the guy. And then uh, we got the Ultra Sun entry is, it's very friendly toward people. If you grow close to it, Gudra will hug you with its sticky slime-covered body. Don't get mad. <laughs> Don't get mad. <laughs> he just loves you. He can't help that he's all funny general, and goofy. General advice. He just really likes you. <laughs> just, yeah, don't, that's don't, fair don't, don't get mad. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. All uh, right. I have a question for y'all. What devil fruit out of all of these would you pick? Yami yami no me, soru soru o no me, or uo uo me? Jesus. These I mean, are what the do they one, do? Yeah, like what, the one what do they that... do? The one that gives me the ability to turn invisible at whim so that I can play hijink, good natured hijinks on the people <laughs> of the world. Good natured hijinks. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to like be a bad person, but I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, it was just a prank, bro. You want to say yeah. it was just a prank and they go, yes, it was. And it was, yeah, a fun it was one. just a prank. Go. Yeah. Just give them something <laughs> to think about for a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. We're all going to have a good time here. Okay. Well, um, we can, Annoying because it's hard to tell exactly. Are these is this five options I gotta go through here. Yeah, which know. one ends and where does it end and begin? Because <laughs> we've been asked some of these before, so let's see here. Um, all right, so the first one: large, round, light, purple fruit. Blah, 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 blah. What's the power you get? Damn it! Allows the user to create, control, and transform into darkness at will. Transform what? into darkness, <laughs> like shadows, like a little magical shadow. Oh, is it like a Peter Pan shadow, where it can go on like the walls and stuff? Which is funny because it says making the user a darkness fun. human. A darkness human. First off, we don't call them that anymore. Second off, I don't exactly know what that is in reference to. Like I said, are we talking Peter Pan shadow? Are we talking like an amorphous black mist, or, or you can only travel through shadow, or you can come out of it? I don't the know. That the could ability be really useful. is said to be the most evil. Okay. Oh, I mean, I don't, don't want to be evil. Probably not. Then, yeah, I don't want to be evil. If it evils you, if up. it makes me evil, yeah, that's no good for me. I don't want to be but the evil. The second I like one, being decent, it allows you to manipulate souls. Um. <laughs> oh. I don't know if I want that kind of power, to be honest with you. I don't want, I don't know if I want to manipulate souls. You can interact man. with souls, but I wonder if that would be, get to be too much, uh, too much of a weight on your existence, you know? Does that mean that you can talk to the dead? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. That could be useful, I guess, if you're... Um... A detective. Or if you want to talk to dead people that you know, and like, hey, whatever, what's everything like? You the know? third one you doing? allows you to try transform into an azure dragon at will. I don't know what the properties of an azure dragon is, so still, I, this I is probably know. the one I'm going with out of the three so far. Because I find the so idea, far, yeah. I mean, it would be fun to be go useful. out onto a, like a field, transform, and then fly around. But obviously, you got to be careful before someone finds you and tries to yeah. capture you or whatever. Eat you, yeah. Yeah, there's that. Um, number four seems to be. Uh, oh wait, number four there. Got us. It allows the user to create and manipulate strings, making them a string human. To create and manipulate strings that could be useful because clothes are made out of strings. Yeah, and... it looks like they literally just mean, like, string, as you'd imagine, like, you get from clothing and stuff. 
probably that pretty could useful. Be useful day to day mending your clothes or maybe oh if only i could resize this shirt just a little bit and then boom it is or you know it's like i'm you know I'm, i wear 34 or 30 but i've lost a bit of weight now i'm gonna go down to 33 30 and i don't want to have to re you know jig all of my pants all oh, right they're my right size now so that could be i'm gonna that could be good personally gonna know? rule out the one that makes you evil rule out the yeah, one don't want that that allows me to manipulate and interact with souls. That feels a little spooky to yeah, me. I don't know what I'm dealing with. A little strange. I like... So. I think there's things to take advantage of with the one where I turn into a dragon or whatever and fly around. That could be fun. But the string one, I feel like I'm probably going to get the most use out of that one. Uh, especially I if I can... So. Oddly, enough, oddly enough, I think I agree, yeah. I... Becoming a dragon is really probably super cool, though. And you could be like, yo, what's up? I'm a dragon. But then... I worry about and the then, government yeah. finding out about me. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then they're going to capture me and oh. study me. Even though I guess they'd want to do that with a string generating person, so. <laughs> yeah, string generating <laughs> I feel person. I can hide that better, though. I think so, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, let's go with a string one for now. That seems like a pretty safe, reasonable choice. Mm-hmm. I think the issue with time travel in shows now is that they are written by people who haven't spent any real time outside of major cities. To be fair, time travel has just been tough for everybody anyway, as writers. Yeah, like time travel is, uh, is a bit of a... It, it, that's just like a difficult one to handle. It just is. It's, it's like it, it invites a whole bunch of questions that are difficult to uh, deal with. I, wouldn't... I understand the innate feel of time travel. There's something innately fun and interesting about that for a story, but... If there was like a 1 to 10 on the hardest things to write, time travel scores high, but all of those things in that scale help when you've got life experience, I'd imagine, because it just comes with the territory of being able to write new places, new, uh, new people, and, and how people mm -hmm. interact with each other, which if you nail all of that and then have a shitty time travel plot, people don't mind that people much. Walk, walk past it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do an all-female ultimate showdown and invite YMS so we can prove that the universe isn't sexist. Speaking of, hi, Rax. Hi. All-female ultimate showdown. I mean, who'd be, who's the most powerful female character in all of fiction, I wonder? Is Unicron... Has he got a girlfriend? <laughs> Unicronia? <laughs> Unicronia. Uh, what is the most powerful well, female? I mean, if it was like Jean Grey, right? Dark Phoenix would be... She'd very, be up uh, there. Dark Phoenix, yeah. Captain Marvel, uh, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, like Supergirl is pretty strong as well. Yeah, yeah she's probably really, really strong. So it just ends up being a lot of comic book characters. Well, is, uh, I mean, goes. there's probably a whole bunch from stuff that we haven't even, we're not even aware of. Think of the anime characters, you know? I was about to say, yeah. Uh... John Oliver has good production values. Harm reduction accepts that people will do drugs. The best approach is to reduce harm to consumers. He goes over it really well. Thought you might be interested. Um, I find him pretty obnoxious. <laughs> um, but... I can't... Here's The problem is, yeah, I can't stand him as a person. That's kind of the issue. But, like, yeah, I'm not going to deny... He may have really good research on that portion of the show, for sure. I just, um... I've seen so much stuff of him in a row where I find him to be so far up his own He's ass. His, he was at his best when he was on Community playing a goober. Yes. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah. But, um, you know, hey, I mean, if anyone finds the, that interesting as a concept, because I'm sure it is very informative in relation to um, approaching people who have drug issues, perhaps. I, like I said, I can't speak to it. Have you seen any of uh, Jon Stewart's, because he's back on The Daily Show, have you seen any of uh, his bits? Uh, only some clips. I have not. It's Are it's he's been funny. Uh, yeah, it feels like oh, it kind of okay. feels like he. Well, I think he because I think he did like a he did a show because he took a big break, and then he was doing all that stuff with uh with the firefighters um like in Congress and and that was what he was doing for some time, and then I think he did a show on like Apple TV, and now he's back on there, but he's only on there like one day out of the uh, week. It's got like okay. a cycle now, so I got a bunch of like the correspondents doing uh doing it. But yeah, it's it's, it's been funny. Uh, did you guys know there's a chemical reason why chili tastes better over time? It's not just imagination. I'm gay, by the way. Oh, what do you mean chili tastes better over time? Does it? I didn't know that was a thing. 
I thought it, I just assumed that like most foods, it was best fresh. I had no idea chili it was. Well, I think that it depends on um like what you mix it with as well, right? And the balance. What do they mean? Of... Like you you come to like the taste of it more over time. Is that oh, what, what? that you acclimate to it if you eat it. Oh, chili tastes best over time. Like I think that was um... used... okay. Okay. Hmm. Um. Now that's making me think of that Kurzgesagt video about the uh the the microbes in your gut right and that like yeah. the food that you give them kind of creates the ones that will like that there can be like a feedback loop that if oh you eat yeah them, if like fast dairy. Food, the microbes will say yeah give me more fast food bro but if you eat vegetables and they're like yeah give me vegetables buddy uh this is something that's really predominant when it comes to like dairy intake so um here in the west especially in a bunch of other places as well but you know particularly around here we eat a lot of dairy, particularly we eat a lot of milk throughout our adult lives, which isn't like natural. Do you say that we eat unquote. milk or we drink milk? We drink milk. I mean, if it gets old enough, you can eat it. But <laughs> oh, I guess I'm asking not... is, uh, is, it, is, it, is it class drink, food yeah. or not? Because I know that people it's a drink. argue over that. I mean, I view it as a drink, yes. <laughs> I drink it, yes. I just said eat as a catch all, but yeah, you, you oh, yeah, drink yeah. milk. But. Throughout our lives, we have access to milk, especially because of refrigeration and stuff, and because it's yummy and delicious, and it pairs with a bunch of stuff. So the microbes in our stomach, we because we keep drinking milk throughout our lives, not just as infants from you know our moms, uh, we keep those microbes that allow us to digest it and use it and get nutrition from it. And my my mom told me this once. She said when she had me, the doctors asked if my mom and my dad. Uh, drunk a lot of milk and because they didn't really at the time they didn't give me a uh, at least at first they didn't give me like milk milk to drink it was like some soy based milk uh, uh, formula that I would drink when I was like a super young infant because it was like semi inheritable or something where if my parents had a lot of those microbes and stuff then the kid would uh, have them as well but if they didn't drink a lot of milk I might not have them Da, da, da. So, for a while, I was on like a soy based formula because of that, because of those microbes. Beta. That's uh, now reminding me of another Kurzgesagt Kurs video where I learned that, yeah, that, that in the West, there's a lower level of lactose intolerance because generally in Western countries, people drink more, uh, like consume more dairy products over their life. Yep. Yeah. And thus develop, and and, and where, whereas uh, in you know elsewhere, when less milk or dairy products are consumed, it just means that people are more lactose intolerant. Yep, that's what I've heard. We just if you if we, we keep drinking it, so we keep drinking it. It's kind of a bit circular, but I love milk. I love. I love it. milk. It's great. I love it. Drink a lot. Drink a lot of milk. I have it with a lot of stuff. Pair it with a lot of stuff. Love it. Uh, also, massive shout out to Tazias for existing. Oh yeah, the big, the big eye boys. Yeah, the little big eye guys, the little rodents, right? Or are they monkeys? They're monkeys, right? Little primates, Tarsiers. I, I think they're little think primates. So. Yeah, like little monkeys. They got those big fucking eyes. Yeah. Uh, San Andreas' story alone is pretty much JRPG length, over one hundred story missions. It's it's long. It's really long. But I mean Red Dead Redemption 2 had about a hundred missions as well. But that's uh that's asking for a lot. That, well, the, the Grand Theft Auto 4 had like I wanna say like 80 missions, something like that. Grand Theft Auto 5 was the short one. That one had I think it was like 50 missions. Yeah, fair. It's um, always hard to say what the ideal length is for uh I I, I mean I will say I did enjoy Red Dead Redemption 2 being this saga that took me like two weeks to finish. That was really uh, entertaining to have something that long. Has anyone on EFAP watched American Dad? I find it l infinitely funnier than Family Guy. Much more fun to quote. Seasons 2 to 7 were peak. Uh, I well, have seen it and I've enjoyed it. I, I like it. I th though I, I think I would actually say that I would still pick the best of Family Guy over the best of American Dad. Though I do think American Dad at its best was pretty funny, but I I also think that it doesn't it do, it doesn't last long, you know, Com compared to something like The Simpsons, right? That was still pretty funny even you know in its fifteenth or sixteenth season. Like by the time they get into like season five of American Dad, I'm, it's kind of like yeah, right. I think I'm you know <laughs> I think I've seen enough. 
Um, yeah, I, I remember I wanted a Family Guy season and I got given American Dad because I guess they couldn't get a hold of Family Guy. I remember being like disappointed, but then I watched it and I was like, actually, this show's pretty good. I like this a whole bunch. I'm not sure if I ever felt like I could definitively place it, especially comparing the best of for both of them, but um, I, I was fond of American Dad. I really like Roger, but the thing is I really like Stewie as well, yeah. so I felt like there was a I, I guess... comparison. Mm -hmm. I think for me... For as many criticisms as I have of Family Guy, I just have way more like strong memories of funny jokes from from the earlier seasons of Family Guy, basically up to about like season five or six. That's usually where I draw the line. But the thing is, is even afterward they have funny jokes. But at this, we've talked about it before. How fair is it when Family Guy has the format of a character just says something that allows them to do any joke that they want? compared to what basically every other show has to do, which is contextualize the jokes with the story that they're telling. Family Guy has... Family Guy essentially gets the advantage of being a sketch comedy show, while also not being a sketch comedy show. And in a sense, I mean, it's what, you know, it's what South Park made fun of, right? Like, when, you know, the, the Cartman was so offended by the existence of Family Guy because when he tells jokes, they have to be related to the story. <laughs> rather than just getting a bunch of manatees to get some balls and drop yeah, them in a, a bunch of <laughs> random non sequitur like remember it's like this time that something completely irrelevant happened and then they show that thing and that's its joke and, yeah. yeah and the jokes the jokes are often pretty funny they it's often are good yeah it's it's really easy to when you can do whatever joke you want and you don't have to bind it to the story that you're telling it yeah it becomes really easy to tell jokes it's a reason why, um, it's a reason why The Simpsons, well, it's a reason why any regular comedy show is impressive, is their ability to weave the jokes into the story that's playing out, rather than just, well, we got a story that's vaguely advancing a plot that occasionally has jokes in it, but then Peter can just say, you think that's bad? And then just, you know, <laughs> like, all right, here's this joke that we came up with, because the manatees <laughs> figured it out. Manatees knew what was up, man. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's just funny how it's just like, oh, right, another excellent like Family Guy joke. Just manatees getting the balls and putting them in in the slots. I'm very happy to see Kingdom Valley as a level in the upcoming Sonic X Shadow. Let's hope the level lasts longer than thirty seconds. Are they adding new levels in that? Huh. Hmm. I really like Sonic Generations, so <laughs> maybe you'll pick it I, up. I might. I it's. Sonic, like, Sonic Generations is the 3D one that I like the most. I really like Sonic Generations. That's a cool game. All right. But, but I do find it, because I just, the, the, the thumbnail for this new trailer, Shadow is front and center, and that's a little bit, uh, I feel like it should be classic Sonic there in front and center, and then Shadow off to the side. Mm. But, you know... Uh, Raggleton, if you consider yourself an Appleton enjoyer, you'll have to pick up a Hydrapple. He's a biggin. Yeah, uh, Diplin and Hydrapple. Yeah, so, uh, Appleton can evolve into Diplin, which can become a Hydrapple. Uh, and they, they're they neat. I really like the set, uh, uh, the little the Apple Boys. I really like the idea that they've taken this idea of the worm in the apple and turn that into a little dragon Pokemon that hides in the apple and then he evolves into these other apple related <laughs> Pokemon evolutions I really like the designs and the aesthetics of them and uh, uh, I, I like when Pokemon does that they take a concept or an aesthetic or some general idea um, or some real life equivalent and turn that into its you know Pokemon kind of version Uh, I can't stress enough how good Project 06 is. It's one of the best Sonic games. Definitely give it a download. You hear that, Sonic fans? If you haven't played Sonic Project 06, apparently it's a bitch in one. Um, came here to shill for Bastion, and Rags here's the wrong game. Anyway, Hades is good as well. Actually, all their games are. Oh, good. yeah, Bastion. I have, I have heard very, very good things about Bastion. Oh, wait, did you... Know not, uh, I thought I thought you did hear that I I was talking about Bastion in the uh in the super chats earlier. I'm. What did you not? I can't remember. I I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I Maybe I said like Hades or something by mistake or something like that. But hmm. I yeah I've heard both good things, uh, very good things about Bastion. Yeah. 
It's all good. Uh, plus one on that super chat, going to Shilfer Bastion, not Hades by Super Giant Games, because it's goated above goat. Yeah, like I said, I, I've always heard good things about Bastion, and I said it's been out for a while, there's a good chance it's probably at a good price on Steam. Bastion was like imagine. one of the sort of original prominent indie games, like when those were starting to become more, like people starting to get more aware of that, I mean, it feels like, like it was kind of in the era of like Super Meat Boy and stuff. Fez and uh, what were the other ones? Was, yeah, yeah, that ones. era. Uh, well, Hotline Miami was also one of the early ones too. But yeah, so like, like there's another one I'm forgetting about. I remember Super Meat Boy being with it. Oh, uh, what's it called? The time drawing back one. Uh, the one. Uh, fuck, this is gonna annoy me. Someone in chat gonna have to help me out. The two D sort of side scroller where you can manipulate time. You can keep drawing it back because you can die and go back. Oh, yeah, Binding of Isaac was a part of this as well. Oh, Prince of Persia. No. <laughs> Braid, it's that's not it. Prince of Persia. Oh, and Limbo, yeah. I'm not sure if Journey would have oh, been yeah. counted among them, but maybe. No, well, Journey is not indie, it's uh, Sony. Did you guys play The Swapper? I, I don't think I've ever played it, but I know of it pretty well, actually. I've seen, I think I've it's seen videos It's a really on it. neat game. It's a really neat game with a super cool art style that's like a weird claymation kind of art to it. But you create like clones of yourself and you swap between being them, but they all copy your movements and you have to use those as like a, a platformer that you um, like solve puzzles and stuff with. It's really cool. It's got awesome music and a really strange atmosphere. Um, I, I would highly recommend The Swapper. Mm. And since we're talking about 2D platformy, puzzle solvey kind of games. Everyone play Gunpoint. It's really short and it's really cool. Play Gunpoint. There it's an older go. game, but play Gunpoint. It's cheap, it's short, and it's a wonderful little cool game. Rags. Beautiful Joe. Hell yeah, I loved Beautiful Joe. What do you think about Colvo versus Ratchet and Clank? I don't know like anything about Ratchet and Clank, unfortunately. So I couldn't tell you. I, I just couldn't tell you. I don't know anything about Ratchet and Clank. Corvo's a pretty, he's a pretty sneaky dude, though. The conclusion was that Ratchet and Clank win um, that fight, but it was a close one. Yeah, round one was Corvo's, yeah, I, feel I think. Like, round two was I feel like it's... Ratchet and Clank. And then round three was Ratchet yeah, and Clank. Yeah, round two and three was Ratchet and Clank. Round one is because Corvo's abilities are innate, so he gets those. But once he has to come up against Ratchet's arsenal... It starts to it like his yeah, arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the powerful. thing to remember is like the Groovatron puts Ratchet and Clank really high up. They have amazing weaponry that yeah. goes well beyond just missiles or bullets. And oh, and that's, just to, that's, yeah. just to be clear for chat, I know who they are, Ratchet and Clank. I just have never never played the games, and I don't know like their arsenal and stuff. I'm much more familiar with Corvo. What I've you played... need to know is uh, that there is a weapon called the Groovatron that fires out a disco ball that uh, makes all of the enemies stop and dance so that they can be killed. It's like, you that's could, a gun you that they have. A wide stun at that point. And then, of course, you have um, yeah. Mr. Zircon that's going to be really helpful as well. Yeah, Mr. Zircon or the Agents of Doom. Um, and, and then it's just like the standard arsenal is filled with like Rocket launches that can fight, you know, it's like 40 rounds that you don't have to what's reload. His, um, what's his shielding like? I forget. Uh, Ratchet's health. Right well, he's it's nanotechnology, is, yeah. uh, is what they use for healing. So, yeah. He's uh, he and, can be pretty broken. It's just his ships, and, and that's not even including giant clank, um, <laughs> who basically just turns into a kaiju. Um. Hades is better. Don't worry, there, there was a second one to ask about Rags, but we'll get it once he's, once he's back. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Bastion versus Hades, I can't speak to it, I'm afraid. Scrooge McDuck in round three. Hired goons. <laughs> you would probably have access to goons, sure, but I don't know if, I don't know if you were here earlier, but we were talking about Scrooge McDuck versus Mr. Burns, and we, I think we said Mr. Burns in round <laughs> three, probably. Probably in round three. Yeah. Um, what is you guys' opinion on the design of the Robot Master Dustman? Hmm. Is that like from, what, like Mega Man or something? I presume so. I feel like we would have commented on this one. We did a whole bunch of Mega Man ones uh, on other catch-ups. <laughs> Dustman. Yeah. I'm already imagining what that would look like. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> my, uh, my PC just had like a small heart attack there. I'm getting a bit worried. Oh, um... Okay, yeah, he's funny looking. I, I like him. <laughs> so what's the idea there? He like is that like the vacuum? I think he's a vacuum head? cleaner. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like it. <laughs> it's like appropriately I silly, like I it. guess. I think so. It's like his eyes. He has a little goober expression. <laughs> oh, and for people who are trying to like talk about Corvo's powers, you have to. Try and keep in mind, the reason we were listing all of Ratchet's is because I think it was assumed Corvo wins. And it's like, well, you got to keep in mind this, 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 this. It, it's, it's not to undermine Corvo's abilities. Um, yeah, I like him. No, Corvo's really powerful. It was, uh, it was a bit of a, it's a bit of a tough matchup for him as all, well, because, uh, Corvo would do really well against a lot of the, uh, the characters. But Ratchet and Clank are just very powerful. Disarmingly so. Also, as for why are Ratchet and Clank together, we had a couple of doubles just because that's their like almost constant operation. Like uh, Banjo Kazooie was sort of the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and we had the Toy the Story thing is, toys. Though, like even if you even if you uh, that's right. But it, I mean, even if you just did Ratchet, I don't think it changes much with Corvo. Like Ratchet in the deadlocked armor with all of the guns that he has, he's still very powerful. Yes, sir. Right, Ratchet Tedlocked is uh, so edgy. I love it. <laughs> be like, wait, you don't like edgy the hedgy, but you like Ratchet Deadlocked? Yes, because that game is awesome. Has a great soundtrack, really cool vibe and atmosphere. I uh, it's it's a bit unfortunate that 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 was like the end of edgy uh, Ratchet and Clank. It was after that when they started to get more sanitized to where they are now, to where it's like, if you were to compare the old Ratchet and Clank games to the new ones, it's kind of unbelievable how um, safe the new ones are in terms of tone. I think someone would say it's character development, but I, I don't agree. <laughs> I, d I don't agree. I think, I think he's become a totally different uh, entity now. Um... Oh, have any of you seen Sam Neill's Merlin miniseries from 1998? It had quite a good cast. Anyway, loving the war arc so far. Thanks for all the entertainment. Glad you are. And, uh... No, I've not seen that. I don't, I don't even think I knew that existed. Was Sam Neill Merlin? i not heard of it. 1998. <laughs> I mean, I presume so, right? Why have I never heard of this? I guess it's... The legendary wizard sets like out to a raise young TV Arthur thing, as a or... true and noble man, hoping to bring him peace and harmony to the land. Okay. Oh, there's a scheming queen Mab who interferes with, with, with stuff. All right. Anyone in chat see this? <laughs> yeah, some people did. All right. Well, hope it was great. Uh, in 2031, on its 20th anniversary, can we have Rag stream a whole playthrough of Dark Souls? Pretty please? I promise I'm gay. Um, I don't think... I'm back. Uh, <laughs> Rags, uh, you're being asked to stream Yo! Dark Souls. I will... Oh! I think I'd streamed Dark Souls 3 many years ago for a little bit. Also... I was a... I, you, I you... played as a naked boy with a club. Bringy, did you hear that? That's what it sounds like for you a lot of the time. What? Uh, what, of him just being really loud all of a sudden? Yeah, and then it, it's already equalized back now. I don't know what Discord have that, done. Uh, but I know what you're up. talking about. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. That's happened to some other people. <laughs> see, 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 see people, people, in, is, they fucked up. people in chat like, loud, it's like, I didn't press a thing, neither did Rags, and he's already back to normal. So something's wrong. Yeah, it happens every once in a while, Discord. I think it's a Discord thing, because it happens in some yeah. other little calls with people. You, you need but, to uh, embrace your ear balls. Brace your ear balls. Just Thanks, close Discord. your Please ear lids. Please fix it on the next yeah. update. Close your ear lids if it ever gets too bright, and uh, and you'll be good. Um, but look, Dark Souls games, they're just not really my thing. I appreciate them. I've played them a little bit. Had a fun little time, but not just not really my, uh, just not really my, not really my thingy. All so right. I will leave that to you guys, and I'll play my, I'll play my, my Rim Worlds and my Stardew Valleys and my. Risk of Rains and Deep Rock Galactics and 
Apex Legends, and you know, I, I have my own mix of stuff that I play, but just not really into the Souls stuff. So there you go. Rags, your opinion: Joshua Graham versus Lara Croft. I mean, I feel like there is some level of incredible, consistent, and un like almost superhuman dedication that Graham has to completing his objective. That's almost like a superpower, basically. Um, there's like this vigorous spirit inside of him. Uh, then again, Laura Croft, sorry, Laura Croft is. She's, I mean, she's super athletic. She has skills in a wide variety of firearms. She can climb and get into some pretty crazy places. She has uh, really good skills with all kinds of different vehicles. That's quite a matchup. That's really quite a matchup. I think I bec I'm going to go with Joshua Graham just because I like him more as a character. But honestly, like, it's a <laughs> toss up. I think it could go like either way. I think this is a really even pairing. Fair enough. I don't really have much to add to that. I'm uh, somewhat familiar with Lara Croft, not familiar at all with uh, Joshua Graham. Uh, how are y'all's physical game collections? I've kept all my consoles since SNES, but only one fourth of the cartridges. The used game market is so pricey. Hmm. I have kept a, sm ver a relatively very small amount of games as physical versions. Um, I have. They're over there. If you'll permit me just a moment, I can actually go and grab them real quick. So you guys chat, and I'll just grab them. Well, mine isn't fantastic. It's not anywhere close to what I would want it to be, but to be honest with you, I've been building out my movie collection properly first, because I, um, throughout the years, have had different thoughts and feelings about what exactly I'll do in terms of how I would collect or what I'd want to collect with, and uh, the you know destruction of the physical format for everything was something that kind of caught me off guard. I didn't really expect that was going to happen, but now I'm like actually worried that uh, I'm going to run out of time to get the the things that I really want on physical. So I'm I'm working on it, but mm -hmm. um, I'm behind on games. But my films, I'm already relatively happy, but there's still more to get. I have all of my uh, consoles except for my PlayStation One, um, which we is for PlayStation Two. You know, so it's like yeah. Though I would have kept it, but I think it stopped working. Um, but I have all of them. I kept all of them. I've never traded them in, never sold them. I don't want to. I want to keep them. I've got my GameCube, my PlayStation Portable, my DS. Uh, I think I still have my Game Boy SP. I think I do. Maybe. Um, yeah, I like to keep them. Probably the way to go. Um, someone in chat, by the way, asked, what do you think of King Arthur as a lightweight? He is a lightweight. He's a guy. Um... So, well, the chat see. seemed uh, pretty fucking split on that notion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How couldn't he be a lightweight? What would bump him up to medium? Uh, some people were saying he's immortal and invincible, depending on what thing you're talking about. Or for, something. The, for the context of this, he can absolutely... Yeah, he, he can die and get killed. Um, when, I mean, yeah he's, yeah, he's a lightweight. He's really cool. I like him, but he's a lightweight. He's a dude with a sword, and he's a great guy, and he's a king, and he learns a valuable lesson, and he'll be back one day. Uh, so the games that I have, it's a very short list, but some I've just kind of kept. I kept my The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings Enhanced Edition for the Xbox 360. Um, I have also for the Xbox 360, uh, the Mass Effect 3 uh, N7 Collector's Edition from way back in the day. What, did you like I, get rid of the games as well? No, I've got them. I've got them here okay. in the boxes and everything. No, I, I, but boxes. it's just that they're, that you're you because like I've never I don't trade in games either. So like I have all of my games. Like, I had a big trade I've in acquired. a long time ago. A bunch of stuff. Yeah, see, I, some I, of them I, I've I, yeah. I don't know. I like I like to hoard my video games. I don't want to get that's rid fair. of them. Yeah, so I, I kept everything. I even kept games I don't fucking like, like the Order eighteen eighty six. I still <gasps> have that. I, I don't I don't trade in video games. I know I think ever, it, it, even when I was a kid, I was like, dude, this feels like a ripoff. Like I what well, I trade in like my console and five games, and you give me like a hundred dollars off an Xbox three sixty. Like that hardly seems yeah, fair. Like, hmm, I, hmm. like EB games, like the trade in is is bullshit. Like the how much you get for what you're giving them is ridiculous. I don't know if it's changed, but even when I was a kid, I was I like, I couldn't believe I, that. I don't know. I would assume that they still fleece you. 
I've got two copies of Halo Combat Evolved, one for the X, uh, the Xbox, and one for the PC. Oh, so actually, dog, you know, you know what? That actually does remind me of a story. I remember there was a time when I wanted to trade in my GameCube. I can't remember what I wanted in exchange, and uh, they told me basically that they that it wasn't worth it. They would, they basically wouldn't give me anything for a GameCube, um, which is craziness, really. Like that, you wouldn't give anybody anything for a GameCube because now. And as time goes on, considering how few GameCubes were sold, I only got to imagine that GameCubes will be, like, worth a lot uh, in enough time, you know, yep, just because there right. were so few yep. of them sold. Same for the original Xbox. Um, I'm telling you, man, hit up those yard sales and garage sales. You never know when you might get, uh, get lucky with some of that stuff. Yep. But I have one more game. It's actually, it's technically three. It's Star Wars Fan Favorites 1. It's a collection of three games on PC. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and a Republic Commando. So, yeah. Had fun with those. But I think those are really the only physical games that I have, unless I'm just, like, flat out forgetting them. But I think those are really it. But I, I, I just, yeah, in terms of collectability and everything like that, just game cases and the physical games just never, like, grabbed me as a thing to collect. And I needed to make space and... You know, it's one of those things like you're moving, you're going to a new place, and you're like, I just got to get rid of stuff. I have so much stuff, I need to get rid of stuff. But, yeah, I totally understand why you'd want to keep, you know, keep hold on to them, especially the consoles. Because the thing, as far as I know, I've got, like, all my old console stuff. I got my original DS, my 3DS XL, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP. I've got, I think I've got, a, I've got a GameCube. I think it's at my, my, my parents' place in my old room. Uh, nag that, uh, na I said snagged and nabbed, and that became snabbed. <laughs> or, uh, but I, I got that at a garage sale for like five bucks. Um, uh, I think I've got, I, I think that is all I've got. I think the Xbox 360 is just like gone, so I don't even know where that is, but yeah. But I saved all the other stuff because, like, of course, I still have my old D all my DS games and Game Boy games though. So those got kept. I'm gonna Fine. go put these back. Um, but yes. For... Oh, I have the Overwatch soundtrack. That's interesting. Okay. Well. All right. <laughs> uh, Batman and Robin fits well on the intelligence bell curve. Idiots like it. The average person hates it, and only geniuses appreciate its greatness. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, there's none like it, you know. It's, it's a, uh, it's a piece of art I'm that back. really defines, defines humanity. But yeah, uh, there was a super chat came in saying Excalibur's scabbard prevents wounds from bleeding. Apparently, I did not know that. It's interesting. Interesting. I think it just depends on. I what, didn't know that. You know, there's going to be a million versions yeah, which of, version King of the Arthur, legend. Right? Yeah. Yeah, like there's the one we watched for EFAP movies. Yeah, There's, you know, the, of course, the, the Once in Future King version. There's all sorts of... And it wasn't there the... Um, there was that mini series in the late 90s, right? Merlin? Was King Arthur in that? Yeah. Oh, the one with Sam Neill, okay. you mean? I no, think wait, so. Wait, sorry, right? what? The late... Not, wait, now I'm getting mixed up. The, were you talking about the Merlin show? The show that was about, like, Merlin's origins? The one that has Anthony Stewart head in it? Yeah, it's got... Oh, that's so, further than the 90s. Yeah, so that was the late one... 2000s. Then we're thinking of two different... Oh, wait, no, Fringy, I think I know which one you're talking about. Um, it's it's, uh, one, that it's was... Matt Merlin, and, and it's, it's like him and Arthur before they, you know, like, because it still had, like, Uther Pendragon in it. Was that one... Was the one I'm thinking of called Merlin, or was it called something else? Well, that one was called Merlin, um, or The Adventures of Merlin, I don't know, something like that. Like, is that the 90s yeah, one? I assume I've... you might have been talking about the, the one people mentioned earlier, the it's Sam Neill Sam... one. Oh, well then, Sam yeah, Neil you are talking about that about. one then. Okay. But I, I, Fringy, you're, you're saying things that are making me think things. Um, like there was, oh, was it a BBC one? Or... Yes, it was a BBC one. Okay, I think I know which one you're referring to. But well, either way, like the different versions of, um, you know, King Arthur and the. It was like a Monster of the Week show, 
like Merlin would be in, but the you know magic was was looked down upon and persecuted, and there'd be like a new magical creature that they had to deal with like every episode. But Merlin oh. had to do it in secret because if he got found out that he was a wizard, he'd get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That one there. Yep. Uh, may I suggest a detectives and master criminals tournament for the future instead of fighting? It'd be more like who outsmarts who. Interesting. I guess so. Yeah, not not impossible. Though I think we get into a lot of fights that really require knowing this stuff. Like if you put any given detectives, like uh, Columbo versus you know Barrow, you're gonna have the whole chat mm. light up with no. It's obviously oh, that yeah, one. That would obviously be, the other. That would be not. I don't think people would enjoy that. <laughs> no, they get very upset. They'd be like, clearly party. you haven't seen the episode where he deals specifically with this. And you're like, no, I haven't. <laughs> well, it, it, it would just be like kind of a, you know, unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Who wins? You know, between the greatest detectives. <laughs> like, the people who always get it right. Yeah, and you know that Batman will just clear everybody. That's, that's how chat will feel. Well, because he's the most popular one. Oh, yeah. No, thing, it's because he's the best detective. of them all. I wonder. I wonder if people would say that good old Columbo would disarm, you know, with the just one more thing. Like if Batman wouldn't be ready for that, <laughs> he says like, that. That would goes, be his oh, special move over. in Super Smash Brothers when he gets to Smash Ball. He'd say just one more thing, and they'd all, yeah, they'd all instantly fly off the screen and explode. <laughs> What's more annoying, John Walker haters or Wanda defenders? Wanda Defenders. Wanda Defenders. Wanda Defenders. Because yeah. that shit's insane. I can understand, like, essentially having the story through tone convey to you that John Walker's bad, and then you just accept that because that's, like, yeah. what the story's trying to convey through tone. Wanda's is absurd. Like, it's it's actually insane that anybody like, can be like, ah, oh, well, you know, like, yeah, she's morally, like, in the right. That's unbelievable. That's, that's insane. insane. That is insane. Like, I don't know how you can be tricked into being on Wanda's well, side. It's, I can it's believe really simple. Said, I can... It's really straightforward. <laughs> like, on this one, it's pretty. It's just it's Elizabeth Olsen. That's it. You like her? She's a good actress. She's very pretty. That's it. That's basically all that goes into it. The writing is ridiculous. And, like, it, it, I, I don't know. It was, it was just, like, I just couldn't believe, like, that people actually, you know, like, oh, yeah. You know, Wanda didn't do anything wrong when she was, like, destroying Kamataj and, like, killing all of these, uh, sorcerers that were just trying to defend their, their temple. That was crazy. Truly it was. Um. No, it was the Darkhold. It was like, mm -hmm. oh, was it? Because that got destroyed and she was still doing evil things. So what, what's the deal? I'm not unpacking that shit again. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's all in the video, okay? <laughs> it's, it's, put, it, put it away, oh my god. Uh, who'd win, Zorro or Robin Hood? Jeez, that's another toss-up, isn't it? Um, I feel like, like it could go either way. I think Robin Hood has better range because he's like an expert bowman. That's so, true. and so I don't know if Zorro ever was like a a range like specialization. He was like, I can believe that if they meet face to face, Zorro would probably win. I think in a fight, although they use different kinds of swords, so. How you use like the rapier is different than how you'd use like a, like a long sword or like the the swords of that age, um, but oh man, the whip has got to come into play though, and they both have like hideaways like you got Sherwood Forest and the the Zoro Cave. Um, they're both kind of like very similar to each other in what they do you know they're they're fighting for the people against the evil duke slash your sheriff slash baron um oh yeah that's that's a close one that's a really juicy close one uh oh that's like that's like coin toss i feel um because like yeah robin hood has a really big advantage with using a bow but Zoro has it like built into his skill set to not get shot, and he has to constantly keep that in mind because of all the guys he fights. So I think that'll kind of like cancel each other out, you know? Um, oh, yeah, that's 
I mean, it might come down to just like who you like most. I don't know. Some of them did go that way, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know who I'd choose. They're both really good. They're they're very similar. Can be hard to say, but I mean, uh, Zaro, from what I was gathering in a lot of his interpretations, he gets a uh, one shot pistol. Apparently, that's not uncommon for him. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I guess. Andor, what if Cinta died? Season 1, episode 12, Val becomes... Val, sorry, becomes disillusioned with Rebellion while Cassian becomes passionate about it. Val can even resent Cassian because they were hunting him. Yeah. I Interesting. mean, I don't want to change Andor, I suppose. <laughs> More or less. Oh, I mean, you know, it's just, I guess, uh, an idea. It's, uh... but I guess it's uh, an idea, yeah. EFAP 300 in three months. Hope this Gothic phone. Yes, we will Woo! try and ensure that. But yeah, it's crazy. We're already back to a anniversary. Kind of goes quick, you know. As does the year. I've got 90 minutes on my hand. What movie should I watch? Hmm. 90 minutes? A lot of good 90 minute movies. You be looking um, at a lot of animated films that'll get you, you know, like eighty minutes. Is Shrek How long's the uh, ninety minutes? I'm not sure. Uh, uh watch Snow White. That's what, that's mm. even the first animated that, right? movie. Yeah, that's even Snow shorter. White's... Yeah, it's like barely over an hour. The Lion yes. King is eighty-eight minutes, so you can watch the Lion no. King. Two minutes to spare. <laughs> yeah, you can do anything you want with that two minutes. Yeah. And you got loads of suggestions in chat if you want to take advantage of any of them. Mm. Was you playing... watch our whole season of Smiling Friends, that's right. <laughs> uh, hey, there you go. Was playing Cookie Clicker and found Grandma Rags. Oh, All right. yeah, fair. I guess, she sounds yeah. hot. Three hours and 15 minutes in, keep it up, Lance. I know, right? Still haven't started, really, the, uh, the catch-up yet. Just uh, getting through those uh, those messages. Mandatory thanks to Rags for planting the seed to get me to build the death machine. Who else is hyped for DRG Season 5 this Thursday? Rock and Stone. Oh, I'm very excited for uh, DRG Season 5. It's got a... It's a big season. They'll have... They've mentioned a whole heap and helping of stuff to... Uh, to that, that, that'll be in it. So I'm very excited for it. That'll happen soon. Uh, this... Super excited. There's a Wallace and Gromit ride in Blackpool, by the way. Cool. Oh. You can go yeah. vacation there, Fringy. Take the, take the ride. Well, I've been to the UK. I didn't go there, though. Oh. I'll no. I probably end up going somewhere else first. <laughs> somewhere uh, I, somewhere I haven't fair, been before. Like America. Hopefully there's a Wallace and Gromit ride wherever you go. Yeah, there's a, is there a Wallace and Gromit ride in New York? <laughs> I have no idea. Or is there a Seinfeld ride or something there? A Seinfeld, a Seinfeld ride. ride. <laughs> I like it. All right. <laughs> it's no, an icon in New York, like a even though it's a Fraser ride. ride where you're just like, what is it? It's just, he just. The whole shape. <laughs> like, what does it do? Uh, Mr. Rogers would have been too OP to include. Yeah, we knew that going in. Nobody would, in the, in the battles, nobody would harm him, so he'd automatically win. Um, I'm absolutely on board for a stop motion arc. You've got to include Laker Films, Coraline, Paranorman, etc. I love Ardman, but Laker is a close second. Yeah, it probably would. Don't see why not. Oh, yeah, I mean, Coraline's a great film. And of course, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas. Classic. Uh, favorite episode of Smiling Friends Season 2 so far? We did kind of answer this earlier, right? Uh, oh, we mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Sort of settling Wimbley, on... the Allen Adventure, and or the, newest the most recent one. Which, uh, Professor Psychotic. Getting another one in a day's time, right? Something like that. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Exciting. I'm surrounded right now by free-faced Corvids all saying, oh, look at him. Look at that funny little guy with cheese. They're getting happy. <laughs> oh. It's a good place to be, I think. Good stuff. Cheese is good. Synthetic man it vindicated is. Rags was born drinking snowy milk, and that's why he was born shorter than his mother, just like Atreus. 
I was born shorter than my mother. That's true. <laughs> wow, that's pretty soy, bro. <laughs> 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 the baby's coming. Oh god, I get one stop. Oh god, it's so long. Uh new Dragon Age gameplay next week. I want it to be good, but EA and Bioware have not produced a good game for ten years. Oh, that's probably EA's probably made a good game in the last ten years. Name three. But, I mean Oh shit. Well, they they've released a few games in a lot. I mean they released yeah. Mass Effect Titanfall Antonio, 2, right? And they released Anthem. Wait, what? Titanfall 2, wasn't that EA? Oh, EA. Oh, just EA, the publisher. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if we were talking about games that they released that I like, yeah. <laughs> but that was near, that was eight years ago. The old time. Long time. A long time ago. But yes, I, I don't know why. Th th there's really no cause for any expectations at all when it comes to any new Bioware game. It's been like five years since the last one. They've had a massive amount of attrition of stuff. Um, basically, like all of the leadership that ever was there back during the, you know, I guess what you call the golden age of Bioware is gone. Um, I, I don't know why there'd be any expectations at, at, or, or the, if there were, that they would only be negative. Uh, especially given that this game was announced, what, like five years ago? Definitely restarted development once, maybe even twice. Um, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, just, I don't know. See, I guess we'll see. Um, my guess would be that this is kind of their last chance. If this game fails, I don't see how Bioware keeps existing when Anthem was a failure and Mass Effect Andromeda failed. Uh, Rags, what is your opinion on Magic the Gathering? Um, I like it. I haven't played it in a long time, but when I did play it and collected it, I enjoyed playing it, so I don't really have any strong opinions on it. Some cool cards, cool art, some neat rules, you know. No strong opinions, though. All right. Uh, read the synopsis of Hundreds of Beavers. I think we've had that recommended a few times. It's a movie, right? Um... About beavers. A drunken Applejack salesman must go from zero to hero and become North America's greatest fur trapper by defeating hundreds of beavers. That's interesting. Yeah, why not? I hear it's a good one. Here's a super chat to say, I love Glep. I love Glep. Yeah, Glep's pretty good, man. He's a good character. Solid. Mm. I'll wait to see where he ends up. They're probably going to have a Glep episode in Season 3, I'd imagine. They gotta realize the potential. Uh, yeah, you know? a, a Glep adventure. Yeah. I'm hoping they make an Alan adventure too. I, I want to see another one. Uh, also, Muller, if you ever do decide to make any One Punch Man video, I recommend reading the author's original self drawn web comic. The redrawn comic that the anime uses uh, used to be a one to one adaptation, but diverged so much that it's practically a different story, starting strongly during season two. Really? Hmm. That's interesting. It's like the source got adapted into another source that got adapted into the anime. Which has its own issues, well, yeah, from what I hear. You know, like, in terms of... Because I, uh... Adaptation. Right. I, I remember, because I read the volume one of the, uh, the manga, and I remember there being a lot of panels that were, like, one-to-one -one in the anime. But, um... But, yeah, yeah I mean, maybe as time goes on. That's curious, though, right? Like, there would be... Sort of people would be like, nah, it's the original web drawn thing. That's the true one punch man. <laughs> the true one punch man, yeah. All right, fair. Also, more. Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, Excalibur's Scabbard. Oh, I read that one. You missed that King Arthur gets Transformers. <laughs> of course he does. You can call them in when uh, he reaches round <laughs> three. And he can call in Anthony Hopkins. So, uh, see if King Arthur out. can have Merlin transform him. So. Yeah, we did uh, try to address how, like, you know, like in Marvel, like, can Cap call in a bunch of people? And it's like probably uh, not because then that ruins kind of against the, the spirit thing. of the whole of who yeah. versus who. Yeah. Uh, the Excalibur sheath detail exists as early as Sir Thomas Mallory's Le Mort d'Arthur, D'Arthur from uh, Le Mort d'Arthur, the death of Arthur. 60s. I'm actually going to York this fall for my master's in Middle English literature. Oh, well, oh, hey, that's a yeah, that's a pretty early reference. All right, how does it work then? He can't bleed, but can he be killed? 
I weird? think so. If you chop off his I mean, head, it's right? It's called I mean, the death of Arthur. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty neat to not bleed, but yeah, it's not the only way that people are going to get you. Right. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. The Don solos everyone. Yeah, it's another reason why we can't include certain characters, because this just becomes way too obvious, way too not easy. Not fair, not fair, yeah. yeah. Uh, important question, does Batman have prep time? That is the meme, and it is why Batman probably wins 99% of his round threes. Uh, but yeah. obviously he didn't get to have... But round one and two. Yeah, that's what like help helps him. to balance a lot of this in different ways. Yeah. You have uh, fights that give everyone a sort of playing field that they get to stretch their potential out on a bit more. Can't believe some random anime character won the whole thing. It wasn't anime, it was comic, but that's a fair, no, that's... Bit of fair guess. Well, it's American cartoon, yeah. Yeah. Come, Mola, hurry up. Finish all the cyber chats this episode. You'll have more by next anniversary. Also, you... Cyber ob... chats. <laughs> cyber chats. Also, you have objectivity sellout. Star Trek TMP is the best. Star Trek TMP? The... The Mantum Finis. Ooh, I haven't seen that. <laughs> Sorry, what? Star Trek TMP? The... The Mind Probe. I don't the know. The Mind Probe! <laughs> oh no! Shields up! The Mind Probe is Here coming. it comes! Here it comes! Brace your... Fortify your minds! Oh, the motion picture, of course. Um, you think that that's the best out of all six? Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I'll allow okay, it. Okay, listen, you're wrong. I'll allow it. I just, I just prefer, you know, a lot of I the like other all ones. All the others. Most <laughs> of the others. <laughs> uh, look up image of Rayman Origins Bean Platform. Look at those happy little fellas. All right, Rayman Origins Bean Platform. I don't know if I played it, uh, uh, Origins or not. Oh, I hope you have. You seem relatively happy. Which is the one where they really match in the music? Is that oh, Origins? Gosh. Uh, well, both of them have that, but Rayman Legends has these levels that are d specifically designed to be accompanied by and match the music. So you're probably thinking of Legends. I think, yeah, I think that's the one I played for sure. I'm not sure if I played the other one. Okay. Yeah, those guys look like they're having fun. Hope they end up... You know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we're happy beans! Sash uh -huh. Lilac Bodies Classic Sonic, that's my hot take. Who's who's Sash Lilac? Who's Sash Lilac? Is that a Sanic character? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> is, that, is that a Sonic character? Uh... Nash Lilac, also known as Lilac the Dragon, is the main protagonist of the Freedom Planet series. She's a hybrid water dragon of unknown origin. Okay. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, fair, fair enough, Good. I suppose. Nice job. Yeah. Um, sub since 2018 with a bell. Still never had a notification. Tried resubbing, but still none. For the thing like entries, look up Kandra from Mistborn. Well, first of all, that's annoying about the notifications thing. But secondly, yeah. um, Kandra from Mistborn, are they good at dealing with entities such as The Thing? I I don't know my Mistborn. Either of you nerdy enough to? I'm not. No clue, yeah. Nope. You know, we got our weaknesses. That's a Brandon Sanderson thing, right? I think so. Farewell and adieu to you massives of fleam and fair fleamish massives. It's, uh, once again, gay actor Michael Douglas entering the fray of discussion. Uh, each of you say the ghoul's line, us cowpokes, we take it as it comes. Optional one makes the soundtrack. Huh? I don't understand that. I'm not sure what they're asking for. We Optional one makes the soundtrack. <laughs> Optional one makes the soundtrack. Well, I don't know what the soundtrack was. I don't either. The soundtrack of Fallout? Fallout, yeah. Makes the soundtrack. I could just pick a song, like uh, just one of the songs, but I find it all confusing. Okay. 
I'm, I'm, I'm unclear on the request. I am so very sorry. Each of you say the ghoul's line. And so we have to say that line. But why did you ask asking... It feels like you missed the conversation. What about the song? Yeah. Well, I guess we can't. I mean, it's, we can't <laughs> do the song, right? But we could say the line. Okay. Yeah. So go left or right. Oh, all right. I can't remember how he said it. Us cowpokes, we take it as it comes. There you go. I put my heart and soul into that one. I thought it was beautiful. I don't think you did. I don't think you did. I think he's leaving okay. some on the you're table for later. Wow, Jeez. wow all right. Well, you're holding out on us here. He's like, cow that's, when, that's when he's filming his show, right? Or or is it? Us cowpokes? I'm trying to think of... Is it? I, I... Or is it when he's a ghoul? If it's the... I don't fucking know. Either way, us cowpokes, we take it as it comes. Oh, there you go. That's a, that's a good one. I like that. Mm. Us cow pokes, we take it as it comes. Hume. I'm a whistleblower from Fringy's Goo Factory. I don't have much time before they find me. <laughs> the secret ingredient to the goo is... Oh, and he got cut off. No. Oh, no. We'll never know. Fringy's goons got him. Damn. Fringy's goons. Let me guess. Know. You deny I don't know any, about you don't know anything about this. Yeah, yeah of course. I do. I, I don't know why you, like, you made it to where I can't win, but uh -huh. I, I do. I just, I, what is that? I don't know what's, yeah, like. That's yeah, that's crazy. Never heard of that. Yeah. Employer, but, yeah. <laughs> what an insane thing that happened there. Uh, you have fleamish hands, Mr. Massive. You've been counting grumbos all your life. I know, you've, you've sent that one before. I recognize it. <laughs> fleamish grumbos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how dare you all for using the N-word with the hard R around Fringy. Nor is his word. You can't say no. You can say no, uh, but it's also offensive to Shad. Yeah, that makes sense. We get, we get passes for the nor. Uh, they're printed and sealed uh, in bronze. Jar Jar wins all. It would have been funny to have Jar Jar fight Mr. Bean. What, what, what's Jar Jar get at level 3? <laughs> I guess he gets his Boombas. Uh, he got Sith powers, right? No, that's what made up. Oh, well, he'd have them at level one. He, he, that's made up, <laughs> Look, though. Right. That, that's that's the best good. of the fiction, but it isn't official <laughs> fiction. <laughs> Look, okay. He he gets his Boombas. He gets all of the Boombas, the blue Boombas. And his little, his little <laughs> horse monster that he rides. So, you go, Jar Jar. I don't know what that's going to do against Mr. Bean's car, but he'll try. I guess the Boombas probably work pretty good on a car, actually. They seem probably. to, like... They fuck up the AATs, right? So... Um, you really are Flemish Massives, a double Biden? Yeah, apparently we did another one of those uh, Super Chat catch-ups we'd already done. I didn't, I didn't realize... You'd think we would we'd get it from questions we're more familiar with, but apparently we didn't, and uh, it's all right, though. We're still uh, popping out new ones all the time, and, you know, today we've done already four and a half hours of Super Chats. Uh, wow, you know, it just that's a lot. The, the time it just keeps on rolling. I'd be so mad if Jimmy Carter isn't on here. Yeah, I did consider it. It would have been very funny. Interesting. <laughs> um, nine tails only has eight tails. No, he has nine. I counted them on the card. Oof. Now, now we're dealing with misinformation. Can you believe it? Interesting that Super Chat would do this. And he followed up with no he really does count have nine them. Tails. I did. He has nine. Hmm. What are we to do here? Battle. Like I specifically here. I can get you. I can get you a picture. I really fucking hope he's got nine tails now. <laughs> yeah, it's nine. I'm. I'm looking. This is madness. He's got nine. Here, I'll even use the original. Uh, original card art. Do you think the, uh, the rationale is that like tail seven and nine are the same if you count them from the back? All right, so <clears throat> I think one, that might two, be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look, they're clearly segmented. You can just you can clearly tell. It's not even it's not ambiguous. There's clearly nine. Once again, Discord loading this image as fast as oh, there we go. There uh, we go. Yeah. Like I was saying, I believe that someone may have assumed that this tail right here turns out to be that tail, the last one. Um, 
Which is propaganda. That is not the case. This is its own tale. That's its own tale. And to they're, say yeah, they're, they're just lie. so clearly segmented. It's wild. Alan Wake 2 DLC is out. Whoa. Yeah. I'm sure, everyone's jumping How on that. How exciting. I, I, I hear something honestly, I, I didn't really find it fascinating about that trailer that it was like winner of 200 awards. And it's like, but this doesn't mean anything. Your game is failing right now. Like, it's not. Well, you know what um, I mean? It's like, yeah, the gaming journal said it was really good, but that, that doesn't help. Like, it, it just think... doesn't translate. Surely this is indicative of something in the same vein as a film going to streaming. A game getting a DLC, what feels like this early, I'd, I'd be curious to know all of the statistics on when games typically get DLCs, but I always thought it would take a bit longer than this, specifically because it... Oh, well, I guess it's been six months, right? Still. I mean, uh, this is why I, I, I wouldn't mind having a scale. How long did it take for Ragnarok and Elden Ring to get their DLCs? Uh, well, Ragnarok was a year. Elden Ring has been a while. Um, yeah. Elden Ring came out, I think, in 2022, right? So it's been over two years, I think. But that, that seems long. Like, Elden Ring is a case of they finished... Because my guess would be that anything that comes out this quick means they started working on it before the game came out. Whereas the Elden Ring DLC sounds like that's a case of they made the game, it was really successful, and then they set out to make DLC. Well, in any case, uh, I don't think this is going to help Alan Wake 2 at all. The numbers will, of I course, I, I, go up, but... I just don't... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just... I, I think I am just, like, fascinated by, we won 200 awards. It's like, but you're, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody <laughs> gives a shit. That doesn't, that doesn't like matter. if that's the kind of game that wins those awards. If anything, you're dragging down those awards too. Um. Well, I think I think it's just a case of Alan Wake Two is a kind of thing that um people who have insecurities about being reviewing video games rather than like films or TV shows. That's the kind of thing that makes them feel. I don't know. It's just like that. I don't. I don't know. It's it, it's 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 like. How do you how do you explain to somebody how awesome the mechanics are in that game, you know? And how do you do it with a straight face? Like it just you know what I mean? Like <laughs> like what do you what do you ex what yeah, do you so say to people about how great the combat is, for instance? That was one of the much more standard experiences I could ever have had in terms of why I didn't want to play the game anymore. The mechanics were really thin, really short, and really crap, and the story was horribly written. It was, and I had, I, I think, five to six hours of that. I was just like, yeah, I, uh, I would rather spend my time doing other things. As simple as that. I, um, I, uh, I, I've really been starting to think about this a lot. I don't think, I really don't think that you gain that much anymore from simply being a cinematic game or like striving to be cinematic. And I think it really is because a game like Uncharted 2 that feels like kind of one of the early examples of a game that was trying to be very, 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 like, cinematic and, you know, like, uh, it's like summer blockbuster, but you play it. Um, that came out, like, in 2009. And then, of course, if you want to go even further than that, there were other games that were going for, like, you know, a cinematic kind of style in terms of cutscenes and direction earlier than that, even on, like, the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 1. I don't know how... I don't know how much of a selling point it is now of, well, our graphics are really good and, like, the cutscenes are well directed in terms of cinematography. I don't know how far that can carry you anymore. It's like, you know, because people would say, well, oh, God, God of War Ragnarok is a movie game. It's like, yeah, but it's not, though. It has mechanics. Like, it's, it, like that's the thing. It actually has mechanics. Because I feel, I feel like um, Hellblade seems to have suffered from the same problem. Like, it's it's a really hard pitch of like well, it's five hours long and there's not that much gameplay in it, but it looks really good. I like I don't know how much that's worth to the average person anymore. Like I I, I feel like the time of being impressed by good graphics and cinematography is like over. Now you need mechan you also need it to be a game that's fun to play. <laughs> you know, like it's I I don't know um, because it feels like these are some noteworthy notable examples of games that come out have really high production values in terms of graphics um and their main aspiration is story and it's just not working you know like it's it, it just doesn't seem to be grabbing people it's not interesting enough on its own and so it's like well then the story needs to be really really good like to make up for that and in the case of alan wake 2 well you know 
I mean, if um, it was like Alan White, because someone's mentioned the Order 1886, which is like, yeah, that, <laughs> like, I, you know, that was a game that it had crazy graphics and it had a lot of cutscenes and it didn't have a lot of gunplay and it didn't work. Despite Arthur being the main dude, he was never the strongest knight of the round table. Lancelot was the best, and then Lancelot's son, Galahad, was even better. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Lancelot was, uh, better in combat than King Arthur. He beats him. Well, well. I mean, it's part of the thingy. Star Trek The Mech's Penetration? Is, is that a movie I've yet to see? Uh, so sounds... Sounds made up. But also, sounds great. Uh, congrats on Empires of the Undergrowth 1.0 release. I think anyone who hates you has gotten the game and thought, wait a minute. I assume not. Hilarious. The thing is, the most people, like the people who hate us the most, wouldn't recognize us by voice because they're not familiar with anything we do. Like they only yeah, know us they don't by know the anything images. About us. So yeah, it's fine. It's like, um, and besides, I, I I wouldn't want them to have the enjoyment of the game interrupted by recognizing me. I prefer they don't, to be honest with you. Like, do your best to fucking take the game for what it is, which is a fun ant sim with me trying to talk you through killing ants. Uh, but yes, I think the main gleamery of the game is now launched. Uh, Rags, Applin got a new evolution line in Diplin and Hydrapple in Scarlet and Violet. The shiny forms are Caramel Apples. Oh, that's really cool. I uh I I know about Hydrapple and Diplin. Uh and I assumed because there's green apple variants of the original three that they might do something like that with the others. So that's really cool to see. I'm glad they're really leaning into it. That's fun. What you what you giggling about, Fringy? I'm just smiling, friends. I just it's on my mind. It's making me laugh. I'm just thinking about the rotoscoped fight in episode five, and yeah, how he brilliant. grabs Professor Psych Professor Psychotic, he turns into the same style. And it's just, <laughs> it's just funny. Ugh. Look at the Rayman villain, Mr. Dark. He's a childhood favorite of mine. I've always loved his design, especially in the Game Boy Color version. Yeah. Is this lad who I think does look pretty cool? He looks cool. I like Mr. his hat. Dark. That's a big old hat. He's got yeah. some goobly bits hanging down. Maybe they're like magic totems, or maybe they're just decoration, or maybe they're the bones of his enemies that he's polished and hangs up there. I don't know. He's only got three, so he... <laughs> it's not that impressive. But... Yeah, if he had more I guess than it depends three, on who it would they be were. more impressive. Yeah. 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 But maybe he had the, the really incredible, <laughs> the really, really, like really big enemies, so three is very impressive. I don't know. Um, YouTube seems to have I'm added an option to, to like and comment on Super Chats, but of course, no dislike option. They really can't help themselves. Yeah, it's always been funny. It'll never not be a bad decision, and there's nothing, I guess, they can do about those extensions, which is kind of even funnier. Um, but yes, uh, I don't know if people really like the whole ability to reply to Super Chats, uh, but why not, I suppose? It's an additional feature. It doesn't hurt anything. Uh, Fisher is low rent Batman GTFO. Damn. No, he isn't. No, he's not. What? No, he isn't. He's a clearly distinct. Hey. Why would you say that? <laughs> clearly yeah, that's distinct. Stupid. That's a dumb thing to say. Sam Fisher and Batman don't really have that much in common at all. Oh, one wow. uses guns and kills all the time. I mean, I guess so. they both do <laughs> stealth, but like one of them is a superhero with all of that going in in terms of his character, and the other one is like a special, like a spec ops, like super soldier sneaking around and doing, you know, getting up to shenanigans. Use like I guess they. I, is is it really just that they both do stealth and they both use gadgets? Is that all there is to it? Like the context of the like the world that they reside in and the context behind why they do anything is just doesn't matter. Well, simple as that. Uh, all right. <laughs> Veda is Jar Jar's bitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, but the good robot chicken sketch where must, uh, must have been a deleted scene. Oh uh, yeah, Force Ghost Jar Jar visits Vader, right? 
or something. I think my favorite one was the uh, the one where the emperor like goes to the Death Star and <laughs> like he he's waiting for his he's waiting for his luggage. Like yeah. they're waiting there, just going around. Is that your no for the hundredth time? That's that same stupid striped bag uh, or, or that same stupid bag. Mine doesn't have a stripe. <laughs> it's like that stripey bag is mocking me. Fuck you, stripey bag. Well, my suitcase is gone. Sacrifice to the airport gods. <laughs> airport gods. Sacrifice to the airport gods. And then the part where like he's sitting there in his, in his seat, and, the, and then like the vent falls off, and he's like, "Could this day get any worse?" I said that ironically, so I think I'm good. An hour later, what do you do? He put me down. <laughs> Gets thrown off by Darth Vader. Oh, shit. God, that was funny. Robot Chicken Star Wars, that was something that actually maintained its quality rather than the Family Guy Star Wars ones that deteriorated in quality as time went on. Yeah, Blue Harvest is pretty good. Blue Harvest was good, but after that, they just, yeah, started to fall apart. Uh, hello, gents. How about an EFAP about corporate cringe? Good example recently was NVIDIA's CEO's statement, quote, the more you buy, the more you save, lol. See, that ain't anything new. That, that's nothing new. That's, that's, that's normal, that's, yeah. That's, that's a true. normal. That's super normal. But I would go as far as saying the more you buy, the more you save is, is perfect for like a fictional company. I could totally see that. Yeah, that's, that sounds like uh, like a cartoon company, you know? Like, that sounds like something Mr. Burns might say. Yeah, like a penny saved is a penny I wasted want... or something. A penny mm, saved yeah. is a penny wasted. Um, Alan arguing with the six-armed guy was really funny. Yeah, it was fucking great. Just the, uh, the guy in the store who's clearly a personification of everyone who despises their job and in a bad mood and just trying to get them stel shelves stacked and then Alan asking oh, questions. Oh yeah, God, that was so funny. <laughs> hey, look, man, back off or bad shit's gonna happen. Bad <laughs> shit. You don't have to be rude. Okay, what do you want, huh? What's going on? What do you need? Don't get nervous now, what? <laughs> Ask your questions, <laughs> what? <laughs> the fucking manager Look in the background asshole. getting angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, thanks for getting me in trouble, man. Bye, 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 see ya, bye, bye. Get out of here, man. <laughs> and then all the shit falling on him. <laughs> he just crushes uh. him. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so funny. And, and, then, and then, like, to, to have all that greatness, and then just Alan riding on his little scooter into the bad part of town with the guy going, <laughs> 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 and uh... all for Burnout Revenge on the PS2. Which apparently, uh, the average price of buying, like, Burnout Revenge, I presume on eBay, like, went up because of that episode <laughs> by a few dollars, which is funny. Somehow, that makes a YouTube lot of sense Burnout to me. It makes a lot of sense. It's just a funny meme when you, like, actually say it. But, it, but, have, but that's the thing, I need to know. Have either of you played Burnout Revenge on the PS2? Yeah, I'm pretty I sure not, I played a shit ton of it. I don't seek revenge on the road. I think it's a bad move. I, I don't even know why you would say that. I'm asking if you played Burnout Revenge on the PlayStation oh, 2. Oh, the game. Oh. No, yeah, I that's right. I Burnout Revenge on the I, PS2. I have not played that one, no. I think I played it on Xbox, though, not... Um... On, on PlayStation PS2. 2? Yeah. That's, that's okay. Yeah, Man, Burnout enough. was a cool series. It's kind of a shame that it died for, uh, for like, for, um, uh, Need for Speed. Because that's basically, like, why it doesn't exist anymore, because Criterion started making Need for Speed games. It's like, man, that's unfortunate. It's just, that's, it's just lame. It's lame. That's what it is. It's lame. Because Burnout, Burnout's, like, got kind of a U... Like, it's, it's the emphasis on vehicular combat, like, in, in a racing game is really fun. And that was an element of the Need for Speed games, for sure, but it felt like, it you know, that was, like, a focal point of burnout. And, and, and then it's like, oh, well, that doesn't get to exist anymore, because we're going to get Criterion to make uh, Need for Speed games. Which is funny, because it was around that time is when I started to, like, not be paying any attention to Need for Speed. It's like Need for Speed, you know, like Underground, Most Wanted, Carbon, and it's like, yeah, after that, started to drop off. Like a bumper after an accident, yeah. Yeah, that's how it, that's how it do. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess so, yeah. 
Uh, remember when they added Mega Man to Street Fighter X Tekken, but it was the version of Mega Man from American Box Art for Mega Man 1? That's a thing they did? <laughs> I think that's amazing. That's like a meme. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> I would almost be very think, happy if think, they did. Uh, that was the stunt well, double who had to pose that day. Though, was, that, was that the era when Capcom was, like, weirdly ignoring Mega oh, Man? Well, Realistically, I could understand people being very mad at that. I'm just saying it's funny. Because I, uh, yeah. I remember that it was something that was, um, like, th th there was just, like, this era where, like, Mega Man just wasn't in stuff. Um, because it, it was, like, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, that's what I remember, that that game didn't have Mega Man, and even when they did, like, Ultra Marvel vs. Capcom 3, they still didn't have Mega Man. <laughs> Which um, is just like, wow, okay, no Mega Man. <laughs> it's like kind of your mascot, but all right. Play, uh, play Kevin Costner's Waterworld by McCaw45. So, you know the, the game Millhouse plays in the, the Kevin Costner's Waterworld in Simpsons? I think McCaw actually like created it, like recreated it. So it's actually oh, playable. Dude. I don't know what the fuck that game looks like, considering what we saw in the. Um, with Millhouse, wasn't he just like walking forward, or was it Bart? It was one of them, right? I, I actually can't remember this. So it's 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 like it costs forty quarters. I think it's Millhouse, like thirty eight, <laughs> thirty nine, forty quarters. Yeah, Here we go. And he takes a step forward and loses or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's starting to jog a memory up there. So it's like if you want to continue, please deposit forty quarters. And he's like, "What a rap!" And then. That's putting quarters in. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, there, there were some good jokes of them at the arcade. Well, what was the one where um where like uh, George H W Bush just starts kicking? <laughs> what was it like a King Kong game where he gets shot down, and then and then like George H W Bush just starts kicking him on the ground? I can't remember. Damn it. Uh, of the three uh, PS2 GTAs, which one do you think had the best story and characters? Uh, well, it's not going to be GTA 3, um, <laughs> obviously. Uh, that's tough. Um, that's, that's really tough, actually. Um, because in terms of, like, great characters, it's like, well, both games have really fun, eccentric, uh, characters. Um, I think I like Tommy more than CJ, but I like Tenpenny more than Sonny. Um. Uh. Hmm. Uh, I, yeah. Hmm. I'd probably be leaning towards San Andreas, I think. But only, like, it'd be, it's, it's, it's close. Um. I I really enjoy both games writing. I don't know. What it, Grand Theft Auto has like a very unique sort of style of writing, very sardonic. It's uh, it's it's amusing. It's entertaining, and I'm I'm kind of worried that uh, now that uh, now that um, the writer has left Rockstar, I wonder what kind of tone Grand Theft Auto Six is going to have. If it's going to have the same kind of irreverent, cynical, um, vibe. Well, fair enough. Uh, Rags, what are your favorite Dark Souls? Well, it says DS games. That could be a lot of games, to be honest with you, but I assume they mean Dark Souls. Oh, I assume it. I thought it's Nintendo DS games because I've mentioned it. Oh, multiple there you times go. That's probably what it actually is. Today. Yeah. Um, Elite Beat Agents. Hmm. Obviously, Guitar Final Hero. Fantasy. Was there one for the Game Boy Advance DS? The Game Boy DS? DS? Nintendo DS? I had no idea. <laughs> That's the one, yeah. I didn't know. Um, I really liked uh, Final Fantasy Tactics uh, Grim War of the Rift. That was fun. I liked... Hmm. It's weird thinking back and trying to remember. Oh, Wild World. Animal Crossing Wild World. Good shit. Oh, I put a lot of hours into Wild oh, yeah. World. I played that a lot. Uh, so yeah, there's three. Th those come to mind as being uh, among my favorites. Uh, I know there's others that would make the list, but it's weird just kind of poking them out of memory because I've obviously I haven't played it in a long, long time. But yeah, really, really like those. Um, I remember there was a. Um, I think there was a. F hmm. 
Oh, Mario Kart DS was a really good one. That's a really great. Uh, that's a great game. I really like that. That is a great game, but oddly enough, I'd say it ranks fairly low on the list of Mario Kart games for, I guess, fairly obvious reasons. It had a lot of great Probably. tracks. It had a lot of really it, cool tracks. It's just considering a, it, considering the time it came out and the fact that it was Mario Kart, like a real Mario Kart game on DS, and it had uh, like three D environments, and you yeah, could get different say, that's carts and. I guess uh, big. That was a big Super deal. Circuit's cool. I like Super Circuit. Um, and I, I real, I do really like DS. It's just that, um, you know, when we're talking about like the best Mario Kart games, we're talking basically like uh, Double Dash, Mario Kart Wii, and Mario Kart Eight. Those are those are like the ones that would be at the top. And then it'd be like, and then and that's like Mario Kart Seven, Mario Kart DS, and stuff like that. And then. Um, I mean, I'm I'm quite fond of Mario Kart 64, but I'd say it doesn't stack up super well compared to like Double Dash and Mario Kart 8. Uh, it's yeah, totally compared it was... to like, Crash Team Racing. You know, Crash Team Racing is like it's way better than Mario Kart 64. I really liked uh, Advance Wars: Days of Ruin. I really enjoyed that. I thought that was a fun game. Uh, Phantom Hourglass. I remember enjoying that as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this the more time goes by, I'll remember a lot of the many, many amazing games that was on uh, the DS. What an incredible system that was. I like how Hadel takes the animation side of Smiling Friends seriously. In an interview, he bemoans adult cartoons' reputation for being all writing but lacking visual artistry. He wanted uh, Smiling Friends to be a proper cartoon. Oh yeah. Uh, um, well, a I mean, lot of well, a lot of it American... depends on budgets and what they're expected to do with the team they have. So when you have shows like Space Ghost Coast to Coast, which basically uses a hundred percent like recycled old sixties cartoon animations and stuff in order to tell narratives, it's part of the wonderful charm of it. My or stuff like Aqua that... Teen Hunger Force, which is has basically has very little animation to it in its stories and its stuff, then I think a lot of it really is, like, they have to keep the budgets down, and they only have so many people working on it. My guess is that what he would be referring to is, like, how so many shows essentially have the Family Guy style of, like, yeah, a I know very sterile kind of, like, art direction and animation. It's like they're yeah, not fully a house, a I doubt that Because mm-hmm. he would definitely not say that about The Simpsons. Like, Simpsons relies heavily on visual comedy and animation like it 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 very much relies on that south park does as well really i mean a lot of the ones that people think about when they think about the great ones do do that um but he's definitely got to put like there is definitely something to be said about how like the family guy style became particularly prominent and i feel like the rick and morty style had the same thing kind of happen to it as well where you started to see a lot of shows emulating a similar sort of, like, visual language, like, similar-looking character designs. Um, it, it's kind of like this unfortunate kind of, like, I guess, thing that happens, right, when, like, one animated show becomes particularly successful, that, um, that like, you start to see kind of a, almost like it coalesces around whatever that show did, um, and, and then you need, like, a new show to come out that is, has got, like, unique vibe, and then that starts to be the one that a lot of shows get molded on as well. Um, but, I mean, you can see it in Smiling Friends. Smiling Friends is a show that is, like, absolutely rooted in animation. Like, I, they're, they're, I mean, you know, I was laughing about the fight, right? What part of the joke of the fight between uh, <laughs> Professor Psychotic and his brother is that when his brother grabs him, he turns into that art style. It's like, that's great. What a great use of the medium that, like, the very mode of animation that's being used is, uh, is the joke in and of itself. Yeah. Oh, smiling friend. So good. I think a lot of the discussions surrounding it, uh, it put it in, like, this group, and it's why it floats the top for a lot of people. It, 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 with the, um, I, think, I don't know if there's, like, a name for them, but the, uh, the adult cartoons that are all really shittily animated all look the same and all sound the same, as in, like, the jokes. The shock humor, that sector on Netflix slash 
Well, yeah, and like that, that, um, what, it, what's that one? The Bertram? What's the, that new yeah, one? Yeah, Daily Wire's response to yeah, a Daily bunch Wire's of shitty one. adult cartoons is to make their own shitty adult cartoons. <laughs> it's like, they're right. just like, as soon as you see an image of it, you go, oh, God, like, oh, I've okay. seen this, I've yeah. seen 17 <laughs> variations exactly. of this already. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's, um, which is really odd that that's happened because you think about like in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Okay, so what shows do we have? It's like, okay, we got The Simpsons. We have South Park. We have like King of the Hill. It's like, oh, already you've got like three totally different styles yeah. and tones that are being pursued. Um, and and you know you compare it for the even the the shows that were by the same creator, right? Like Beavis and Butthead is not King of the Hill. We've got like very different goals and 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 uh, aspirations. And then you know even something like Family Guy that I guess even then you could say was more of a generic style. Like Family Guy used to have more of an identity in its animation. You watch the early seasons, like seasons one through three, there's way more energy in the animation there. And part of it is because it's not like, um, it's like the longer the shows have gone on, the more that the um, art has to be very unified to where you lose a lot of that spontaneous energy of the imperfections. You could, you could almost say like the inconsistencies of, it's clear that different people, you know, like did the drawings. It's, it's clear that different people were doing the storyboards rather than the way that Family Guy is now, where it's almost like, it feels like they have, like, this list of uh, moves that the characters can go through. So it's always consistent, and it never has any errors, like, just clear categorical errors, um, but it's lifeless. You know, it'd be interesting. Do you feel that maybe the animation is one of the first things they cut to try and save money over time? Because they know um, that people will still watch if the animation isn't as, you know, vibrant or interesting uh, like people will still tune in because they'll have the, the the jokes and stuff and that won't put anyone away if we just save money on animations i don't know i i, I don't know if it's like animation or if it's a matter of I, I, like i i don't i don't know i actually don't know why that's the case um it's it's uh all like yeah i i don't know why that's happened um because well, I mean, it's something that's happened with a because The Simpsons definitely now, like a modern episode of The Simpsons, doesn't have the same kind of um, almost chaotic energy in the animation of the old episodes. And I feel like it's just got to come down to as time has gone on, you start to narrow it down into a specific way of doing things, like you know the way that Homer should look all the time. Um, that it it never goes off model. It never it never it is goes like wrong. Um, and well, it's consider, like, okay, well, yeah. One, one good example is you've, we've already mentioned Ardman before, but if you look at a grand day out and you compare that to like curse of the Were rabbit, you're like, dang, they've come a long way, but it Absolutely. hasn't lost its, it hasn't like lost anything. It's just like, oh, we've got the time we're learning how to do this ourselves. We're getting better and better. It's so much more clean now. Because if you go back then, just it's just like, oh, this is like the first time you're doing this. And it looks like it, but it's such a wonderful um, kind of... It, it's got this roughness and that human touch quality to it, where you can see the little indentations from fingers and tools and stuff here and there. And the animations aren't as smooth, but that kind of gives it its own fun style in a way, where it doesn't feel like anything's been lost so much as it's transitioned from one style into a different style. Um, yeah, you, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a matter of they can spend more time per frame and it shows with the amount of things that are going on in like later Wallace, you know, in Curse of the Were-Rabbit, like some of the, the, the things that they're achieving is, uh, remarkable. Um, what I was going to say was like an interesting video idea that someone could do is, uh, you take a lot of those shows, including like the Mr. Bircham one. You chop them all up for audio and visuals, and then for about five minutes, you review this show that doesn't even exist. You like combine all the characters, all the plot lines, and you just talk about an episode that doesn't happen, and you mix them all up, and just see how long it takes before anybody even knows. Because like, just just how much does he, does anyone, is anyone familiar with any given show of any one of these things, or at least how many people do you think you managed to get away with it for how long? Like five minutes, and you just mm. reveal like I've just been talking about seven different shows all at once. I don't know if you noticed. Like, I wonder how much you could trick people on that just from. Uh... And it's not like this is the unprecedented. We get this happening all the time throughout history, like a bunch of clone shows, sort of thing. Um, 
It's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, Smiling Friends is getting a lot of appreciation for how it's breaking the mold in so many different directions, even though it's uh, two YouTubers making a fun little 10 minute per episode thing, which is fun for yep. it to have that kind of impact. Um, speaking of Rockstar, Mola, did you ever play Red Dead Redemption 2? Story's really good. Always hope for an EFAP review of the game, but I guess that would probably be a 24 hour stream. It probably would, and no, I have not it played uh, RDR2. Bringy has, he likes it. I like it a lot. Just a quick reminder that Samus is a star buster. Is What's that, that? I, I'm not entirely sure what that refers to. Sounds pretty badass. Sounds like it would hurt. If I was a star, but I'm not, so I'm okay. Hmm. If she was a dog buster, then I would be concerned, and I wouldn't... I mean... I would I would hope that we'd get along, you know. Yeah. I think you would she would. She's pretty chill, I think when I stuff think is we like... yeah, we would get along. I'm a pretty sociable guy and I'm friendly and she seems all right. A bit of bit of a you know, been a bit of a quiet type, but you know, that's all right. That's okay. You know. Yeah, like no don't shoot at her or anything. Job. You'd be fine. No, no, I wouldn't do that. No. God. Uh, animal of the day, uh, English bulldog puppy. Uh, just we'll just uh, post an average one. It's, it's, oh, look at him! Hey, yeah, pretty cute. Feeling out. I, mm -hmm. I guess animal of the day really can just be uh, not an obscure one that we've never heard of. You know, maybe this like a picture of an animal, like this particular <laughs> dog. Well, they, they did say it's part of the obvious picture. animal of the day. <laughs> it's just like all right, fair enough. Uh, funnily enough, when you open the Super Chat comment section, they try to sell you a Super Chat. That doesn't surprise me. YouTube is, uh, any opportunity, you know? Like I said, even on the behind the sort of scenes, uh, stream studio thing, they're like, you should insert an ad now. And you're just like, that's okay. <laughs> I, just, I you... still get bugged about, like, hey, your channel's eligible for memberships, you should set that up. You know, they really want you to... I mean, the ads are the most blatant thing, like like Muller was saying. And for those of you who don't know, you, you ads on your videos do not require your consent. Well, I was about you to say, can they, just put them there. They are moving it to mandatory on there. I wouldn't be surprised if memberships become mandatory eventually. Um, it, I don't see why they're not already with how YouTube operates. I, I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, at all. Them, I'm, I'm certain they always try to find ways to make as much money as they can without having to uh, share with creators. No offense to YouTube, but I'm sure they've got people specifically designed to try and find the best ways to do that from a business people perspective. Specifically designed <laughs> from birth. Designed yeah, from do. honestly, Google probably does have people specifically designed <laughs> to do certain things. Implemented that decades ago. <laughs> they've been. What is my purpose, it. Father? <laughs> to sell YouTube memberships. To convert the average man into a dollar sign. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Do not speak to me. <laughs> you do not have that privilege. At peak power is straight up invulnerable to damage. Oh, they're talking about Samus, I think, still? Um, mm. I don't know if she can take on some of the things that were dealt with in Heavyweight, though. Sorry. My money's on yeah. Link. Uh, Link, his entire thing is punching above his weight class. Full load includes an infinite number of infinitely powerful wishes. I think... However, one of the issues is that many of Link's enemies seem to be kind of somewhat tailor-made for him to beat in terms of the mechanics with the yeah. items that he gets <laughs> and the glowing weak spots and stuff, which is, like, great for video games, but in terms of his ability to kill things, sometimes, maybe, like, you know... Just a little bit. The Doctor versus Nick Sanchez. My money is on the Doctor. The Doctor has a way of defeating almost any creature that they ever come up against. But the Doctor, um, I mean, has died many times. Uh, and obviously Rick just needs to kill him permanently, which is well within Rick's potential. Rick is ridiculously OP. But as we've gone over the weight classes, there are ridiculously OP, and then there's super mega hyper ridiculously OP. Um... We're going over the round two. The Doctor just needs to get into the TARDIS. Um, which, depending on his opponent, can actually be difficult. 
Uh, the double repeat of Super Chat Catch-Up shows just how fleamish and massive you fellas really are. Take your meds. I'm gay. All right. Oh! Oh, well, have fun with that. Michael Douglas? Just, I will take uh, my meds, yeah. though. Absolutely. I don't really take meds. Every once in a while, I'll take, like, an Advil or something if I get a headache. Yeah. I stopped taking melatonin because it, it, <laughs> it gets too unreal <laughs> with the dreams and stuff. But um, I don't really take any medication, really. So. I drink beer sometimes. Rags is snow versus Fringy's goo. Final destination. So who wins? <laughs> Final destination. I don't know. I don't my know snow, what that fight looks like. My snow is just snow. It's just lovely, <laughs> wonderful, cold, cool, refreshing snow. That's yeah. the, the, I mean, like if my goo would probably be I able to know. sleep it off. Actually, though, yeah. Wow, we if just got confirmation like of something it, Fringy's goo could do. Interesting. Just add Interesting. that into the lore, folks. Add that Same. to the lore. Yeah. I'll, I'll be right back. Just one moment. I uh, hope my boy Frank Horrigan is on here. I'm afraid not. Mm -hmm. Not everyone could make it. How far are you Lots taking? People. How far are you taking personality into this? Like Bond's a suave player. Could he talk and manipulate people around uh, Chris no. or similar? No, not, really. not typically. Take we we did mention at one point like this is this is going to be impossible to do a full breakdown of exactly how they would act in every scenario sort of thing. We had to we did take personalities into account somewhat, but uh, we were struggling. But the to get general through. idea was that it was meant to be like two people really setting out to get each other. Yeah, and just a test of their power levels and their intelligence related to essentially combat or countering that sort of thing. Hmm, uh, Popple the Shadow Thief is one of my favorite Mario characters. Look the boy up, he's great. All right, let's see here. Yeah. I've never heard of Popple the Shadow Thief. Unless he's someone we did get shown before, because there's a couple. Uh, I've probably forgotten more Mario characters at this point than I remember. Oh yeah, yes. this was one of the ones we had on a Super, ca super Chat Cash before. That might not have come out yet, maybe, I don't know. But um, you remember this guy, Fringy, the classic? Uh, yeah, he puts a smile on my face, that's for sure. Yeah, we like him. <laughs> he's a funny-looking guy. Would have been good and to get him. he looks like he's having fun. Get him in, uh, the old, the old <laughs> leaderboard. Um, I'm not, not sure of his powers, you know? Don't want him to sweep yeah. too easily. Uh, hello, you massives. I watched Rebel Moon 1 and 2, Army of the Dead, Morbius, Madam Web, and the Eternals all in one in a row throughout the week. It was rough. I despise Army of the Dead now. Madam Web was hilarious. Yeah. Madam Web was hilarious. How does the reaction... Why'd you do it to yourself like that? Well, if he was with friends, I could somewhat understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, what's funny about that reaction is, like, like that kind of captures... I like Madam Web's coming out. Um, I do not like Army of the so Dead's coming out. Army of the Web. Uh, Army of the Web. <laughs> <laughs> Army of the Dead is painful. Madam Web is funny. Yes, it's uh, it's that different because I think Rebel Moon crosses into movies I'm happy to get released in the sense of they are funny to watch and how retarded. But uh, Army of the Dead, it was painful. We've gone over this a couple of times. Yeah. that was a tough one. And Madam Web is yeah, so cool. wonderful that. I wish we got the same team to make a sequel. <laughs> and um, and you know what? You know. Tell them that they've got X amount of time, and then as soon as they're a week in, cut that time in half. <laughs> 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 they get the same money. I'm just saying. I just want. I wanted to see what happens. <laughs> just be like, well, you got to find a way. Get it done. And uh, you know what? If there's any any skips in quality, that is okay. Just get it done. We'll see what we end up with. And you know what? We'll actually we'll we'll allow unfinished CG. You could have some unfinished CG in there. Oh, would have loved more of that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's just funny when you get movies that bad. Yep. Will the ultimate orgy of homosexuality be next? Maybe. Maybe. The Don versus Fat Geralt. Oh, the Don's got that one. <laughs> Fat Geralt would like <laughs> bow to him. He would recognize his strength, would. his courage. <laughs> he would kneel before him. <laughs> um, now I'm just imagining it's just the, you know, all hate, like the Simpsons joke with King Homer made of gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all hail King Don, and then he's there in gold. <laughs> uh, 
Thanks, gents, for making this world a better place and making these bathroom visits in my house longer and more enjoyable when watching while I can. Wow. I was going to say, that'd be a long bathroom break if you were watching the Ultimate Showdown episode. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what? Fair enough. 13 hours on the toilet, jeez. Yeah, like, the boss says you can have one, you can watch one video in your break, and you're like, well, just one. Steve can hold that relic that brings you back to life. Yeah, Steve was presenting us a lot of issues. Uh, that was yes. just an example of my unfamiliarity with Minecraft. New South Park special, yay. Yes. Yes, watch this, it. funny. Good schnisms. The big action scene that was like a Mad Max sort of parody <laughs> was funny as hell with all the that mascots. Was funny. I do think that the best joke was Butters suddenly being in the interstellar like place. Yeah, that was funny as <laughs> shit. <laughs> Uh, how does respawning factor into this? So, yeah, we did mention, essentially, uh, I'll use Jason as an example, even though he wasn't in there. If he gets killed, <clears throat> and then he's capable of being hit by lightning that would resurrect him, at that point we just say, like, well, if you get killed, that's you're out. You've been defeated or disabled. We even entertained the idea, and this is what made um, you know Batman and Wolverine a potential complication. If you can, like, tie someone up, and make it so that they can't do anything, but they are invincible to you. Like, it, it creates an issue of, like, so what happens then? It's like, well, we'd probably give it to Batman if that were the case. But um, still pretty tough for him to be able to pull that off. So, yeah, dis disable, defeat, kill. There's a complicated... Because, like, you know, getting thrown off Final Destination is not going to kill many people, but it will deal with them, you know? They'll just fall forever. Uh, a question, if you will. Which do you like more, Futurama or The Simpsons? The Simpsons. The Simpsons, but Futurama's great. Uh, yeah, obviously I comparing like the them Simpsons the best. I like Simpsons more, but Futurama's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, look up the Yu-Gi-Oh card Potato and Chips. It's cozy. Sound familiar okay, to you? Okay, let me take a look. Uh, no, it doesn't. Hmm. Uh, that's the first thing that pops up. Potato and Chips Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh! Look at... Okay. What? Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> is this? Wait, is is the this? What's this flavor take? Is this real? Oh, it was a promotional campaign Konami did in Japan with a snack company. Um, it but <laughs> for those, <laughs> it says potato and chips always get along. They always idle in their room eating potato chips. Consomme punch chips. Uh, oh, consomme punch ones are delicious too. Norishio ones are delicious too. Potato and chips, delicious life. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you it's gotta a, appreciate it's a the normal vibe. monster. Of course. I love he's earth type vibe. and plant. He's an earth plant. A little two star with 200 attack, 200 defense. <laughs> it's fun. That's fun. I like that. Uh, one of my new favorite Smiling Friends scenes is the man with the specifically shaped nose. Yeah, who uh, who ended up in heaven that he needed to clarify he was not absolutely not a flashback. I thought that was, shit was funny as well. Uh, <laughs> the caves are Steve's domain. Price has to stay above ground and utilize range. Yeah, Rags, we have to discuss uh, Captain Price versus Steve from Minecraft. Steve from Minecraft wins. He He's, I mean, the kind of magic shit that he can do, and the fact that he could tunnel through the, the Earth so quickly. Um, I mean, he could fly at super fast, fast speeds with Elytra. Um, yeah, I mean, his ability to instantly erect bulletproof defenses is, in, in, like, insane. Um, and if he traps, like, Captain Price in one of those, like, there's nothing Captain Price can do. Like, it's cobblestone and dirt and that sort of thing, and that's just going to take him forever to get out of. And Steve can hold an insane amount of weight in his inventory, and he can survive a lot of damage, too. He's way more durable than Captain Price is. He can take many, many arrows, and he can take magic spells. He can be set on fire for a while and be okay, depending on the gear and enchantments he has. He might even have like thorns, which will reflect damage back on uh, back on Captain Price if he gets in melee. He can walk on water. 
he can get he can specifically get projectile uh protection to give him protection against projectiles i mean he steve has got some incredible abilities well so i think steve i think steve wins if you remember round one it's price he's gonna punch that little character and he's probably gonna kill him uh if not just toss I, him off final destination anyway oh no i think steve beats the punch off too steve can take a lot of punches um he's getting thrown off Steve get is getting thrown off. Probably, yeah. Thrown thrown off where? Remember round one is final destination. Oh, um. Oh, I don't know. I just I I think Steve is super resilient and he can punch too. And when he punches people, they fly back. So he can keep punching Price, and Price will just keep bouncing back and back and back. I don't think a human being can just like stand up to Steve's power. Um, at that point, though, that's they've both they've got their wields have conflicting physics, so it, picking Steve's wouldn't be fair. Well, that's what happens when Steve punches things; is he hits them and they fly back. So yeah. I, but <laughs> what happens when Price punches shit or kicks them? Uh there's a. I mean, is this it? It might not be part of the world. It might be part of like Steve and how what what happens when he does things. Because whenever you hit, whenever Steve, because it's not just punching. It's whenever he hits anything, that's an, an entity. They will bounce back a little bit. They'll, they'll there's knockback. Sure. I mean, I feel like that's... so. I think that would apply to Price as an entity. If he hits Price, Price is gonna get knocked back. Yeah, I mean, but those physics would be applicable to him then as well, right? Um, I think there's a little bit of knockback with Steve, but I don't think there's nearly as much as him well, doing things. Well, you can't really know. And it, I think it he's would be way... dependent on how would Price be calibrated into the world of Minecraft. Maybe he would be OP. Oh, he'd be an entity. He's, he'd easily be an entity. He'd be a person. Any living, uh, any living creature is going to be uh, an entity. Yeah, but they have different levels of impact and damage. As far as I know, whenever you hit any entity that's an animal, it will have the knockback applied to it. I don't think you're not getting think what I'm saying. If Steve is a person in the world of Minecraft, if he's taken to Price's world, he becomes a man. But you're 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 exclusively putting Price into Minecraft world. You're not accounting for how you're letting one I uh, still fiction win over the other. I think that it might be just an element of how Steve interacts with everything around him. Yeah, but you, why can't like I say that about Price? when he hits things, the force of it. Because when Price... So when Price punches things, then he exerts a certain amount of force on an object, and that will just be determined by just, just like the normal, what we would consider normal physics for him. But I think one of the things... I think it's... an. An, an element of Steve that he does that to other things, regardless of the world. As long as it's within a certain parameter. I don't understand. Like, I, I feel like my question's not being answered. The, uh, why are you picking the physics of Steve's world over prices? Why does he get Because I, I don't think it's necessarily the physics of the world. I think it's um, a trait that is a part of Steve, the character. But I could just as easily argue it's a trait that's a part of Price that things react to him in his world with his physics. Like, why can't I argue um, the Price is the hyper Steve regen that... and the when he does a melee attack, it kills things in one? Or sometimes in two, I guess. Depending on, like, juggernauts or whatever. I think that it would be. I, would, I think it would depend on what kind of damage is, is intuitively expected from that kind of an attack that he's doing. When Price does a melee attack, he is like stabbing something with a knife, will, which will realistically be able to kill a person, an normal person, in one or two hits. But the nature of Steve's attack, a, you know, a, a, whether it's a punch or hitting with an object, is such that I think it is an element of Steve in and of himself, that it has those 
abilities and it has those attributes, regardless of where he is. No matter where Steve goes, when he hits things, that's what they will do as a response to being hit by him, by Steve as a Minecraft character. He brings those with him. I don't see why I can't argue that it's brought with Price. The things so Price him. goes to Minecraft World and no. Price hits Steve. They both go to Final or Destination. My... Okay. I s don't see what would change about Price's punch anywhere he goes if it's just a normal punch and Price is doing it. Yeah, I agree. So Price's punches would be like a human punch and Steve's would be like Steve's punches. Well, Steve hitting Price to Price is a person hitting him, so why do why does the physics switch over to Minecraft physics for uh, Price's reaction instead of what it is like for Price to be hit by someone? Because I don't think it's Minecraft physics. I think that it is an element of what happens when Steve punches things. I think that is a trait that is a part of Steve, that he imbues maybe, um, on things that he hits. Maybe to help explain, uh, we had this problem with a couple of other characters, but like, Kirby can swallow anything. But can Kirby swallow things that are part of their own universe, cannot be swallowed by anything? Like, well, Kirby can swallow anything, though. And it's like, yeah, but they... That's not how it works for them, in their world. Yeah, but Kirby's world, it does work that way. And so it's like, so what I, happens? Well, I think that there needs to... Uh, yeah, I think the distinction is, what are the traits that are intrinsic to the character versus how does that character... How is that character able to do things just because they're a part of a different universe? I think it's easy and for as long as the there's not they... an explicit contradiction. There's just nothing in Price's world that... It counts for them. It would be like putting uh, cartoon characters against real physical characters. All real physical characters that live in like a anime versus this. This is the complication of like how much damage can be done to everybody. Like um, you know, like Rick can get thrown around a hell of a lot more than Doc Brown can. In fact, Doc Brown probably one good punch to the face and he might be dead. While Rick yeah, can like be, yeah. you know, even in old man Rick, no, no, like cybernetics or anything, he can take a hell of a lot more because he's a cartoon. But is that fair? Should it be done that way? I don't know if it's fair because there might be, an, but I think that is just kind of a part of the contest because some things are, because if we're transmuting characters and universes and putting them into quote unquote neutral ground, if we're, if we're talking about Final Destination, wouldn't that, so they would bounce back if you're hit in Final Destination. It oh, it doesn't Super take Smash the Brothers Smash course, Brothers, right? uh, like, physics automatically with something Oh, like it's just that. like a floating platform? Yeah, it's to, to what you're saying across an okay. abyss, okay. essentially. Um, okay. I, but, like, there are, there are fair Maybe our understandings of... Like, you know, like, if someone said, well, it's not fair to have King Arthur versus Price because Price gets his gun, I'd be like, that's, that's the kind of unfairness that we're expecting. But yeah. having someone's fiction overwrite someone else's fiction is where it gets complicated. Uh, we had one with Saitama versus Cthulhu, whose whose fiction outplays the other. There is he immune or is he not? And we had to uh, we left that one up to chat. I would assume I think. Cthulhu would win because Saitama's mental faculties, as far as I know, they're a normal person's. That's so, what we concluded. Well, oh, uh, you, now, basically. See, it's now happening to Fringy. Fringy's the loud one yeah, now. Yeah, he's, he's very loud. I would, I would agree <laughs> with that, that that would determine the winner of that. But well, so, interestingly, ER think... said he has complete immunity to, like, psychic manipulation, but we still, I think, all agreed that Cthulhu's, like, the Lovecraft world. Cthulhu's not... It's not like manipulation. It's, it's not like he's applying some psychic... Like power to Saitama, it would, it would. It's a matter of like Saitama's own thought process. You know, it's well, kind of like the nature of Cthulhu driving somebody um, insane. It's 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 someone's inability to comprehend it. Like someone just said, Saitama probably can't feel fear. Uh, I don't know, not to open this up again, but it's a lot more complicated than feeling fear when it comes to Lovecraftian yeah. uh, forces or realities. It's, it's kind of beyond fear. It's beyond. It's like impossible to comprehend. Yes, which is why I believe. And also, Saitama, Saitama, like, does have negative emotional responses to things. 
Like well, as he, far as um, fear for his life, maybe not, but fear, fear for, for other people, certain right? things. Yeah, yeah. Well, social like that, embarrassment right? kind of yeah. fear. Um, you have plenty of excitement. You'll have plenty of rage. He yes, can be apathetic right. in the middle of a battle. He knows he's going to win, but the uh, most of his life, he has strong emotional reactions to all kinds of things that happen. Yep. Um, I don't know where this has come from. This whole Saitama doesn't. It, like emote <laughs> or doesn't care about anything. He's quite he's stoic, <laughs> Mahler. He's, I mean... <laughs> no, but he he does emote though. Like he, I mean, remember when he he Even cackled about going left instead of right? Well, yeah, um... <laughs> like that wasn't very stoic when, uh, at all. That was when he when when Genos starts making fun of uh, Tornado and he's in the background like cheering. <laughs> he's like really happy that that's happening. <laughs> He does yeah. care a lot about a lot of things. And in fact, I think the show would be worse off if he didn't, rather the the IP, right? Like, he cares a lot about the decisions people make. He cares a lot to try and inspire people when it comes down to it. Um, mm -hmm. I love the decisions he makes that relates to the fact that he's very aware of trying to make the right decision morally, emotionally, that sort of thing. I, I just think that... Going down to deliberately deliberately making it seem to Boros that he was having a real fight. It's like, well, yeah. why did he do that? It's because he wanted to give him something that he could never have himself. Exactly. Well, and he saw himself in uh, Moomin Rider, right, against the... Yes. The, 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 was it the Sea King? Against the Deep Sea King. Deep Sea King, Deep yeah. Sea King, yeah. Now just thinking about how awesome that show is. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah. There was that super chat earlier about it. Uh, season 1 inspires me a lot to talk about it. Um, moving through Season 2. Only seen two episodes of it so far. Uh, not as much. It still seems like a solid show, but very noticeably is not as good as Season 1. Yes, unfortunately. Yep. Yep. Sometimes Muller repeats himself when doing Super Chat catch-up. Sometimes Muller repeats himself when doing Super Chat catch-up. Hmm. From the father too. I hope not, but... Yes, I do. It happens. I try to make sure we're, uh, we're on point, though. Uh, will y'all watch X-Men 97? Honestly, really good and was surprised by it. Also sucks Master Chief went out so quick, but it wouldn't matter against Steve or Unicron. You reckon Steve bodies Master Chief, huh? <laughs> Maybe. I think, I think Maybe Steve is legitimately. Un do not underestimate Steve. We didn't. No, Steve that was Rex. We removed that him because he was too OP. We, we had to get rid of him. him. He was too oh, real? Powerful. Holy yeah. shit! Oh, wait, what was I was talking about was round he, one. Yeah, um, like in round two and three, the conclusion was always that he could escape and, and then build an empire. Insane. Yeah, <laughs> built an empire. Pretty much. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 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 Um. Uh, I think Master Chief might have round one if it just becomes like a punch fight because Master Chief is like a superhuman with the the crazy armor. Um, oh well, he wouldn't have the armor in round one, but he still wins for sure. Oh okay. Uh, oh, does he? Even without um, the Mjolnir, yeah. Even without it, he still wins. I don't know. A punch fight against Steve is like <laughs> actually like that's a big deal. That's that's Steve is not to be fucked with. The difficult um, thing with Steve is that he has a very short uh, animation on his punch. It's basically instantaneous. It's basically, yeah, once you get within range and he quote-unquote clicks, then, like, you're taking damage. Um, yeah. So he can just, like, keep you kind of stun-locked if you get close. Um, and also, you can only... Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I really like them both. I, I can't underestimate Steve. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I think Steve might win without the armor. Once he gets the armor, I think Master Chief wins. And then when everyone has access to everything, I think Steve's magic bullshit is going to be able to... And, and his enchanted armor and stuff and everything that that does, it's uh, pretty pretty wild. Uh, well, uh, as for um, X Men ninety seven, I have heard lots of good things about it, which honestly is yeah, good really things. good news in general. I'm happy that they made something that wasn't cringe. Good, good stuff. Um, if I was to check that out, I would I probably wouldn't mind trying to check out the uh, you know the older the nineties series uh, just because it is it is in same continuity, right? Like it's like a sequel series. I believe it is. So yeah, uh, but on that note. You know, I've got so many other things to watch, I'm not sure I'll be able to get around to it at any particular time, but as I said, I'm, I'm happy to hear it's good. Um, 
Last Super Chat, gonna step out, mending a migraine. Also, an anime recommendation, Fate Zero. Great characters and story, badass fights, and beautiful animation. Also, hi Rags, good night, Fringy, and hail the long Cthulhu. Hello. Well, uh, thanks for the recommendation, and the take care of that morning. migraine. Yep, do it. Mm -hmm. For me, I gotta get up, I gotta take a walk outside, I gotta move around. If I just lay around, my headaches only get worse. I can't lay down in bed and try and sleep. Get up, get moving, get outside. That helps my headaches go away. I always spam drinking water. Just uh, seems to help. I don't know. Maybe it's, I feel like it's commonly happens when I'm... It's a combination of a bunch of things and also dehydration, but just... Plenty of water. Though that's good for just general advice anyway. Yes. Drink water, everybody. Yeah. Don't stop. Keep going, Massives. We're at, uh... You know, five hours and 20 minutes still going. <laughs> Just a short one yeah. for today, guys. Definitely check out St. Maud. I have heard of it a couple of times. For sure. What's that? It's, uh, it's another anime, right? Or... St. Maud. The okay. name has come up here and there. <laughs> Oh, 2019 film? Oh, maybe I'm completely wrong. Trouble ensues when a devite young nurse, Maud, who faced a tragic past, gets obsessed with saving her dying patient's soul. All right. Never heard of this. Like I said, I've heard of it, but uh, somehow I never realized it was a movie. Um, fair enough. Uh, do, do, do. Once again, definitely check out Mob Psycho 100. Well, Fringy is, and he'll be able to report yeah, well, back I'm, soon I'm enough. Mm -hmm. If Fringy gives a big recommendation, who knows what will happen. Uh, no idea if you guys read out my last Super Chat from episode 286, but I'm continuing on the older episodes. On EFAP episode 39 now. Love you guys. Thanks for the amazing content. Screw the last Jedi, lol. Yeah, uh, screw the last Jedi. Like I said, it was Fuck a... that movie. <laughs> It was a throwback on the last episode to be having those uh, is Ray shittily written or not conversations, you know? Yeah. Damn. It's been a while. Um, as for episode 286 Super Chats, I can't confirm if we have done them yet or not, but they will be done for sure in future. No worries. Fun fact, in the Bayverse, Unicron is Earth. Really? Oh. Uh, I don't know what okay. to make of that. <laughs> I don't. I. I got. I don't know what that means. I got nothing. I guess give me out. Is, 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 is the Earth and the last one going to go and be, be a big old robot and transform into another planet? Yeah. Well, then again, the oh. Michael Bay ones like came to an end. You know, did, like yeah. that. There was the fifth one, and then that was just it. Uh, still working my way through EFAP on 77 right now. Love the foreshadowing for COVID you guys worked in. Play Trails in the Sky. Fair enough. Foreshadowing for COVID. Did, did the spiders give us a, a preamble on that? And we were like, oh, I see. Because uh, I am in contact with the spiders. It's part of the production of Eve. Are they? Oh, yeah, they, uh, you know, they feed me some stuff. They speak to you, these spiders? Yeah. Can you confirm the existence of these spiders with independent minds just to make sure you're not going, like, insane or anything? Um, I just no. want to make sure they, you're okay. They you told know? me explicitly that it's something they will never be able to do, and if they did, it would destroy the universe, so... Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, then, you better like, oh, pay, okay. yeah. I thought that was fair enough. I was like, alright, fine. Don't want to don't get in the All way. All I gotta do is, yeah, just don't do this one thing, you'll be fine. It's, it's fair. Uh, Steve's max would slightly limit, uh, would be slightly limited by the world. Earth has no end portal, no certain loot. He has obsidian for the nether and fishing, though. Um... Which, once that happens, that opens up the whole universe to him, right? <laughs> What's funny is the forest the was never that, given yeah. any kind of description of what he could find in its soil. You know, that's not a rule we came up with. No. Anymore. I think we just viewed it as just, it was just like a, you know, forest, boreal forest. Like pine trees and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of what I imagined. Well, yeah. Reminder: based on the scaling units of Minecraft, Steve is around two meters tall, and each block he breaks is around one meter. Oh. Yeah, I think tall. these meters. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, he's a big guy. 
This tall boy. Look at him go. <laughs> Was watching your Suicide Squad kill the Justice League, and the fact Lois Lane mourned Batman but not Superman was kind of fucked up. She didn't even acknowledge the others. Yeah, because it was put in late the for the Kevin was, Conroy yeah. stuff. Um, but, I mean, they could have done better than that. It's, it's a mess, dude. The whole thing was a fucking mess. They... And they slapdashed it. Having that in there, and then it cuts to like, oh, here's all the loot you got. Yeah. So gross. They fucked that up. Thanks, Kevin, for the awesome loot drops. And they lost $200 million on it. How did that happen? It's crazy. Mm. Clearly, the cast isn't aware of Minecraft Steve's power scaling. Dude can literally carry mountains in his pants and still jump a meter in the air. I'm carrying mountains in my pants. Well, it was it's a weird oh transferal God. of because the, the implication with something like that is like so if he hits you, you'll just go off in you know like into a different universe. And it was like, well, I don't I don't think that's how it works because he doesn't do that in his own game. And so he's strong, but you know what I mean? Like it's not like it's it's a video game, so it has confusing sort of ups and downs in terms of what yeah people interactions are with like yeah. the average person in Fallout at max capacity, if they were to be transferred in real life, are holding a fucking like house worth of items, <laughs> just like here where I go. Uh, hello, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. I like it in the back because I'm gay. All right. Oh, fair enough. Thanks for sharing. Not all gays like it in the back, though, just to be clear. So I don't think that, like, logistically speaking, your, I don't think your syllogism there was really... I don't think it was sound. Back for one more. Thank you guys for all the entertainment. I listen to you guys throughout work, and they make the days fast and fun. Also, no, EFAP movies, great. The New Mutants. It's a mix of X-Men and horror, and it's also quite cringe. That's the one oh. with... Um, uh, a bunch of actors, right? That went through like all kinds of production hell. Was it one of the last like Fox ones? I can't remember what uh, exactly, so I never watched it. But I think Arya Stark was in it, and um, uh, Anya Taylor Joy, uh, possibly some others. But yeah, maybe we'll check it out at some point. I don't know. And thank you for letting us know. Good to hear. Hope you're all right. Yeah. I totally forgot about that movie. Yeah, well, apparently it is the one I was thinking of, but I, I, I never saw it. The CJ can spawn waves of growth. Hmm. I don't think anybody saw it. Oh, what a shame! Yeah. CJ can spawn waves of Grove Street families. I mean, um, I mean, GTA that powers would not be were. An ability to be able to call in, you know. Well, the, the, the GTA abilities at third rank, we had to like lock out, you know, cheat codes. Because I, I feel like that somehow crosses some kind of rule, <laughs> but at the same well, time, well, it is by definition cheating, isn't it? I think so. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it would be more so that because in terms of round three, you could just appeal to yeah, like they all know how to operate a tank. <laughs> you know, like well, any GTA protagonist just knows how to fly a plane, fly a helicopter, operate a tank. Mm. You can look it up on the internet. Uh, making Rayman have a cocaine addiction in Captain Laserhawk was exactly what we wanted, Ubisoft. Rolls eyes, laughs to self. What's well, this now? we didn't get a hot cow out of it. Oh. Well, I'm glad Here. for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I still have the original Vice City and San Andreas on my phone. Good stuff. Never deleting them out of fear. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much at the point of encouraging people to just... You know what? If you can find a way to get your favorite media physically, you should probably do it. Or at least backed up in some way. Uh, Battle of the Day. Surviper versus Zangoose. Entrius. Oh, Entry Sapphire. Wait, are these Pokemon? Zangoose is a Pokemon, right? Who's Surviper? Also, I don't even know what their power levels are, you know? One of them's like a snake, and then one of them is the, wait a minute, how is that? Oh, right, images. What? I'm getting a bunch of links to the Zen Goose wireless charger. <laughs> oh, yeah, Zad Goose, sorry. Is that, okay. So it's this guy... 
I have a fucking loads. God damn it. I'll just do the, uh, light shot. What this forces me to do every time. So this is the snack, Saviper. <laughs> hey, <laughs> he looks cheeky. I yeah, remember this one, cheeky. and that's Zangoose. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I like the snake. I like them both. I th the <laughs> snake, though, the snake's expression is kind of funny. Yeah. It's perfect. He's a sneaky little guy. He knows what he's up to. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, Zango seems he, he's he's a lot more by the book. He's gonna do some. He's got some business to conclude. He's a little bit upset, maybe. He's got that protagonist mm. look in his eye. You know, he's on a mission. Well, so who wins in a fight? Oh, I don't okay. know. I've if seems really evenly matched. Oh, I don't well, if I mean, it's uh, I mean, a mongoose the classic tends snake to come out on top. So that's the thing. On Does that transfer to the Pokemon world? How, how big large is, uh, are they? And the then do they have yeah. poison or any kind of? I mean, it's the Pokemon world, so it's really just a matter of which one has the higher levels. Has the right abilities? Unless yeah. they count well, which one has the weaker uh, type? Yeah. Well, let's see. Zangoose and what was the first one called? Uh, hang on. The Viper, I think. Yeah, S E and then Viper, so Viper. All right. Um. Well, let's uh, let's take a look here. Let me. I mean, it says so Viper shares a generations long feud with Zangoose. The scars on its body are evidence of vicious battles. This oh. Pokemon attacks using its sword edged tail. Um. Let's see. So Viper and Zangoose are eternal rivals. It counters a Zangoose's dazzling agility with its sword-like tail, which also oozes a horrible poison. Damn. So looks like, yeah, it looks like, uh, I mean, it seems that we even have a, a little showdown depicted here. Oh, geez. Them being like, oh, we're gonna, oh, what are we, oh, they, they just don't like each other. They don't get along. They don't get along. Well, that's I don't know if it's, uh, some deep, familial feud or uh, abhorrent racism on from one or both parties or i maybe we can yeah, get know. the animated film where they become friends that would be really nice that would be really nice i would like to see that i like to see that mm -hmm. you ever don't do those videos of like the snake versus mongoose is crazy Mon mongoose are like they're really cool like is it is it mustelids is that is that how you pronounce Otters. it mm. I assume That's so. Like, I, I've always considered it mustelids. Yeah. It's just a fun category of animals of just these. They punch way above their weight critters. I don't know if it's true, but I know that the rumor is that a wolverine once took down a bear. <laughs> I want to believe. I want to believe that I that's possible. Believe. <laughs> I like the idea that the bears are like, that's fucking propaganda. That never happened. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. Lies. The amount of people Nathan has killed in all four games. Uh, Nathan Drake, of course. Hey, man, yes, body count yeah, doesn't define the... your power level. It's 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 about uh, your power level. Well, I, I guess it's about what feats he's accomplished. It's like when Nathan Drake fought a dude who drank from an Im Im like an immortality, for, like from the Tree of Life, like, <laughs> and he beat him. Yeah, we've all done that. So, you know. But then again, Lazarevich should have beaten that, but he, he just... The problem was that he was too he was too arrogant. He was just running around instead of like he could he could have won. It, really, he should have won, but he uh he just screwed up. It's kind of mm -hmm. it's it's weird. It's like it's something that the Uncharted series has very occasionally kind of um kind of tried to explore the idea of well, wait, what what who is Nathan Drake, this guy who does all of these things? But, like, every time that they ask that question, they kind of run away from it because Nathan Drake is a very fun, likable guy, and you don't really want to de delve too deep into the, the havoc that he's caused. Uh, why are we talking about Nathan Drake? Ethaf 300 is coming out. Not yet, but it's on the way. Give it mm -hmm. time. Soon.
Uh, holy shit, the ultimate showdown. Pin hit me hard with nostalgia. Sent me back in time for a minute. Yeah. Uh, just a classic animation. Original internets. Always remember, some suspension of disbelief is required for all media. You should meet all media at least halfway in terms or in terms of it, or else art will be considered bad. Not halfway. Um, I'm willing to I, 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 I'm willing to work with media to a degree, but not halfway on everything. Not, the thing, well, I, I think what I'd add is um you don't really choose Suspension of disbelief is not something that you choose to maintain. It's true. It, it, yeah. it is maintained until it breaks, and it it breaks at different places for different people. But like, it's it. You don't con. If my suspension of disbelief breaks, that's it. I don't. I don't get to choose. Like, we'll choose not to have that thing upset you so or bother you so much that it actually made you not like take the story for what it is anymore. Like, it can't be helped in that case. It's it's pretty much a story. There is a. You know, it's like a writer has a task that they have to set out to do, and that task is essentially convince somebody to believe that the story that's playing out before them is real when they know that it isn't. Um, and, and there's, like, a lot that people will accept, naturally. People will accept a lot. So really, when the suspension of disbelief snaps, it's, it's really, like, to place the onus on the viewer feels kind of unfair because it feels like viewers are very willing to give you a lot of leniency and leeway for the kinds of things that you can do. Um, it's much more the task of the writer to make sure that they essentially meet the expectations of the reader, the viewer, which is that it will make sense, essentially, that, that, that the things that you set up will be paid off, that the rules that you establish will be maintained. Uh, they, they said in response, that sounds subjective. It's like, what else could it be? What, like suspension of disbelief? Yeah, it's literally fr fringies, belief, suspension of disbelief, belief rags is, is suspension of disbelief, and mine are all different. It has to be subjective. Yeah, it's it literally is. The the individual. Belief, yeah, belief is a mind's acceptance that a proposition is true. It literally reques a mind. If and, every mind yeah, in like, the cosmos disappeared, then nothing I belief so, wouldn't I exist as a concept. I cannot transfer my suspension of disbelief into someone else's mind. It can only exist in my mind. Yeah, and it doesn't, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it does not determine whether or not the story was well written. Anyone's no, like if somebody said that my suspension of disbelief was snapped the second that, like, Luke grabbed the lightsaber, it'd be like, oh, well, shit. Yeah. I mean, it just sounds like where it's like you just can't, you, you like, we can't share the same experience with. I, I think the, the best way to describe it is like when your, your suspension of disbelief essentially subs like describes your subjective experience with a piece of media it describes your feelings about it like directly and whether or not you believe it essentially um another follow-up question from them is well what if someone's suspension of disbelief breaks when the setting is fantasy and as far as i'm concerned the, i mean then, if it breaks it breaks I it, that's what i was gonna say it. that it's valid for anybody to break at any time and i believe there are people in my life that i've known that they can't watch Lord of the Rings. I mean, like, there's, there's, there's a few people I've come across who just think, like, it's all too silly to be. I, my mum couldn't watch Blackadder. She thought it was ridiculous and stupid, and that everyone, like, she couldn't oh, possibly wow. believe it's, uh, it's a real thing that's happening, as opposed to essentially a bunch of people trying to do stand-up on, like, a shitty set. I was like, okay. <laughs> like the, if, if that's how you feel, like, yeah. that's fine. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, it's different for everybody. Yeah, I, I get it. And you can't really, you can't rationally, like, convince somebody out of a feeling like that. It's, it's just like, uh, I, at least I don't think you can. Or not with, not with any regular success. No, and, and, and like I said, it's, uh, I think it's interesting to know what any given thing breaks or doesn't break someone's suspension of disbelief. It just doesn't define or determine anything on its own. We need more than that. If I said I was pulled out straight away, I think you'd be like, well, by what? What happened? And then you judge for yourself if you think that would be a fair thing or a thing that would pull you out. Um, as as Fringy just said, like someone, the activation of a lightsaber might make someone go, "Ugh, I can't, I can't watch this shit." Yeah, you're like, "Oh, okay." And it's not necessarily that something is wrong with that, and it doesn't, pr but it, but it also doesn't prove anything about a story. No, like that your suspension of disbelief snapped. You got to figure out if there's like an argument that you can make right about a break in continuity.
Well, and, um, it's, it's so determined on, like, information, too. Like, I've been more pulled out by gun stuff in the time that I've known rags than before. Because I've just become more aware of how mm -hmm. gun things work. And so... Yeah, man, yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Somebody who's very, you know, like, if somebody works as a doctor or a nurse, they're probably way more likely to have their suspension yeah. of disbelief snap watching Grey's Anatomy than somebody who doesn't know anything about, you know, how a hospital actually works. Uh, once again, try out Crow Country. It deserves love. Alrighty. And, uh, Andor provides the best glimpse and immersion into the Star Wars world, but gets shafted by so-called Star Wars fans. Damn. Listen. Mm. I think that even when we would have... If we'd seen Andor before they'd released it, and then knew they were releasing it in the state of Star Wars as it currently is, it's not like... I would have said to them, like, yeah, this is a sure thing that's going to be hyper-popular. I'd probably be like, hmm, this is a bit risky, guys. Like, I think... Um, yeah, it's fair. Fair, yeah. I think we, we talked about it in, in the coverage of Acolyte's first episode. It's like, you, you... Your your place to put the good effort and writing was probably in the thing that would get the most eyes on it, which is probably going to be something like the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Uh, obviously the sequels. So, you know, like, not doing it for those things means unpacking it into this, this show that is considered a spin-off of a spin-off. It's like, yeah, this isn't going to go well, I don't think. Um, it's an, I'm, I'm fine with people not liking it, but I just don't know that it ever had a huge chance. Um, it, I'm curious if it'll be, like, it'll do better in Season 2 if they involve some more heavy hitters from the franchise or iconography people. Or maybe pace it up a bit, go a little faster... But uh, ultimately, it won't matter. It doesn't matter how good it is. It doesn't matter how much people like it. Because once it's done, it's done. And liking Andor season one and two put together changes nothing about the next season of fucking like the Acolyte, for example. It's kind of sad, actually. Uh, and I, I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't even know if Tony Gilroy would want to commit to keep doing Star Wars stuff as opposed to you know moving on. But even if they did move him mm -hmm. or prepare like offer him something, I wouldn't be surprised if he just moved off. Um, we shall see. Why was Tarin from the Pradane Chronicles not in the Ultimate Showdown, Mola? He has the Fire Sword. Hi, Rex. Gernwin, he does. Yeah. I associate the, why that. Is there, why were many people not <laughs> there? I associate that with uh, Pinna Park now forever, because that's where I was in Super Mario Sunshine when you said that. Like one of my favorite highlights that's of all time. That's how I'm... <laughs> It is a fun. It, it is. I. I. My mind works like that too. Where whenever you recall a conversation, if I was a playing a video game at the time, I'm like, oh yeah, I was playing that game when we were talking about this, which can be very helpful when you go through cycles of games to kind of date when that conversation happened, because it'll be like, mm -hmm. oh, I was playing this game at the time, which meant it was probably at this, you know, <laughs> at this time. Made you look. You did indeed get me. Book John or Show John, meaning uh, Game of Thrones slash Song of Ice and Fire, because Book John isn't that amazing a warrior yet. Probably would have been Show John at least at that point, but I don't think he won his first fight anyway. It was uh, King Arthur, I think he fought, funnily enough. Strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of governments. <laughs> Supreme executive power derives from a mandate from the masses. Ah. Uh, Good shit. I Check mean, if I, if I came up saying I was the Emperor because some moistened bin threw a sword at me, <laughs> they'd lock me away. <laughs> oh, some now we see the violence inherent in the system. Be quiet. Oh, the violence bint. inherent in the system. Help, help, I'm being help, repressed. I'm being repressed. <laughs> Gotta do an arc for that movies at some point as well. Yes. Ah, uh, I, I see... Someone wants us to check out a wholesome critter as part of the, you know, animal stuff we, we usually oh do. Oh, boy. Uh, Nematomorpha. Um, yeah, look, look at this little critter. Fuck those guys. What? 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 Is that? That's a tape. They're like terrible parasites. They're, yeah, they're, they're just horrible things. <laughs> that yeah, don't that add anything nice stuck. to the world. We, uh, I think they're trying to be fun. We give that one a thumbs down. Uh, That's a yeah, thumbs, thumbs down. down. But it's okay. Uh, you know what? It's nice to balance things out. 
Uh, been rewatching the OGE faps on episode 23 now. Love you guys a lot. Always excited to catch a live one. Hey. Yay. Yeah. It's, uh, that was a long time ago. That would have been what? Around 23 weeks after we'd started? 22? <laughs> the... Still, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of weird. I don't know what um, amount exactly we'll have to get to before I'm like, fucking hell, this, this podcast is going for fucking ages, man. Because we're, we're up to, coming, coming to our seventh year, starting it up, right, after the next anniversary. Because we're in, I always forget exactly where we are. Every 50. That was probably a good decision early on, 50 per year. Even though we make a hell of a lot more than fifty per year, but you know the the numbers have yeah, to be in terms uh, of the moved. quantity of stuff that's being made. Yeah, yeah, it amounts to more than fifty episodes a year, but still. Have none of you read the Once and Future King? You know, I mean, I have. Listen, I, have I don't read remember the Once and Future King. all the stuff. All right, King Arthur's not as cool as someone like a Homer Simpson, where I know all of his lore. Uh, that would have been an interesting battle. Not sure who would win that. You know, it'd be close. Rumor says that Anthony Mackie repeatedly asked unprompted for a romance with Black Widow. Bro was down bad. It, you can't blame him for giving it a shot, you know? Just gotta hey, man. Try and argue it really works for the story. That Oh, that story would be so good. It's such a great story. And you should just, you know. I wonder if you'll uh, have, a, have a love interest as the new Captain Falcon, you know? That'd be, uh, that'd be good for it. We go, we go, what is it, the third round of reshoots? That movie's gonna be great. I think so. I gotta know yeah. its budget. The final budget's gonna be so funny. <laughs> what, like 400 million bucks? Yeah. <laughs> um, in my opinion, you should allow people slash connections, but only who they can reasonably have on call. Just being part of an organization doesn't necessarily get them to fight for you, but being the leader will. Connections are power. Nah. We allowed... Within a... Yeah, it... It's it's an element of like yeah if you fight Banjo you'll have to probably fight Kazooie you know because they're just like kind of like a pair they're they're just that's part of an element of who they are uh, but yeah Cap can't just be like oh I call an Iron Man I win oh well. I think <laughs> you know, yeah like, this is why you spec charisma bitches there is <laughs> a line uh, I think we allowed Leonidas to call in Spartans and Maximus to call in the Roman Legion somewhat but we we were like we can't do Cap calls in Iron Man because Iron Man's another contestant like, yeah. how does that make any sense so named characters seem like so they if they fight he has to call an Iron Man to fight on his own side against <laughs> himself and then Iron Man calls in Cap to help out <laughs> yeah. Hey, Fappers. I like y'all. Here's a McMuffin. Thank you. Oh, thanks, man. Cheers. Appreciate that. Thoughts on the Iron Claw, my favorite movie of 2023. I need to see it. I've heard nothing but good things. The Zac the Efron. Iron Claw? What's yeah, this? It's like a... Um, it's about uh, wrestlers in real life story. I, I don't know enough about it. Mel will be able to explain it well, but all I know is it's good. The main thing. Gets recommended by everybody. Oh, neat. I don't know anything about wrestling, other than they wrestle. Um, someone in chat will probably have a better summary than I can give, but... Mickey Mouse gets the Death Star. Well, maybe at round three. Mickey Disney? Mouse can be OP at round three, but uh, he didn't get to round three, I think, with one of his first fights. No, he did not. Slaughtered. Does Mickey Mouse get his army of brooms? Again, probably a round three thing. Round three. And they're not really his army. Like, they, they were fucking things up for him because he doesn't know magic. How about a DreamWorks versus Illumination fighting game? That could be fun. Oh, um, that could be fun. Man, I would not give a fuck, really, about the Illumination <laughs> side. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I realized when I was thinking. Was wow, like, you, okay, don't like, so, you don't like Mario? Wow. I don't Damn. count Mario as an Illumination <laughs> character. Mario is Mario character. I was thinking, like, Mario. the problem was I was sitting there thinking, like, well, who would it be? So you got, like, Gru and, like, the minions. You got the... And does that even count, like, Dr. Seuss characters? Do they count in, in, like, an Illumination matchup? Like, do they, are they, do they get the Grinch and the Lorax? I don't know about that. They'll put um, in as many as they can, I'm sure. I guess they get, what else, what else, uh, the, the pets from The Secret Life of Pets? The characters from Sing? Dude... Illumination's Crypto, film right? is like so, like <laughs> it's so like it's so generic. I don't, I don't. It's it's like it's it's so uninteresting. 
Uh, but they make so much money. Clearly a hater. They're like, this will only make a billion dollars. Even that migration movie that nobody watched, that's not true. Plenty of people watched it, made its money back. Meanwhile, Pixar can't make its money back on anything they've made, <laughs> or, or Disney. Like, Illumination is, it, and DreamWorks even has inconsistent results as well. Like, Illumination is the only animation studio that reliably makes money all the time. Well, I guess Studio Ghibli tends to make money on their films, but in terms of, like, Western 3D animation movies, they're, like, the only one. That, my favorite Western 3D animated movie is Rango. Is it your favorite? Yeah. Of, of all the 3D <laughs> animated movies that are Westerns, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you got me there. You bamboozled uh-huh. me with your words. Everyone, everyone watch Rango. It's great. It's good it's shit. It's really good. Mickey Mouse has never hurt anyone in his cartoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Doctor true. doesn't kill. Batman doesn't That's kill. That's true. What are you talking about? Yes, he has. <laughs> if we're talking about the old cartoons, he's hurt a lot of people in those. Talking about old Mickey. That's right. Um, Mickey's power level isn't something I expected to hear ever. Yeah, well, you know, I have interesting <laughs> conversations here. We got to figure it all out. In a Mickey vs. Bugs fight, Mickey has access to any magic spell present within the Final Fantasy universe, including Stopza. What the fuck is that? Because of the... Boy, isn't... Because of the... What is it? The Kingdom... Kingdom Hearts, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know anything about Kingdom Hearts. Other oh, than I thought that's what you were going to explain. Because I don't know anything about it either. But, uh, I don't th- like I said, I don't even think he got to round three. He was getting his ass kicked by, uh, Bugs Bunny. Which I'm sorry, it just, if, if everyone felt it was intuitive that Bugs would annihilate Mickey, okay? Mm. Bugs, uh, Bugs can be a killer, man. Yeah, he had to be He's removed. He was, too OP. he was pulling, he was pulling all kinds of materials from off screen. He was, uh, <laughs> That's right. he was impossible to beat. Uh, we need to disqualify slapstick toon characters. They're immortal and cannot die. To be fair, we've got quite a few characters who cannot die uh, in their own fiction. But, you know, you have to, you have to be reasonable <laughs> with some of this stuff. Uh, the Cortana EMP thing is referring to a thing where your shields go down in a mission uh, to betrayals. It happens three times. Uh, also, I want all of you to know that Kirby is eight inches tall. Uh, okay, well, I remember that, but I don't... I, I just... I don't know how... I don't know if I believe that that would work against the T-1000. I'm not sure if it would. I don't think it would either. I don't see... Because she has, like, a very deep and... Like, like a direct integration within the suit systems uh, of the Mjolnir armor. So, yeah, I don't see how she would... How I, Yeah, I don't see how that would work against T-1000. I mean, maybe. Maybe it might have an effect. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Um, procrastination versus you Dumbos playing DDLC. Fight. Procrastination. We're also watching other things, playing other things, you know. Huge list. Filled with stuff. Remember, mm-hmm. there's a guy who, I mean, I haven't seen him in a while, but he, 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 there's a guy out there who wants Long Kong, and he hasn't gotten his Kong long <laughs> in a long Kong time. Hmm. Mm. You're right, he hasn't gotten it. According mm. to one of the old shorts, Mickey Mouse fought in World War II, so he has military training. I don't know yeah, if that's going to do anything. I bet Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Well, yeah. I bet he probably fought in World War II as well. <laughs> so Bugs I bet all those cartoon did, characters yeah. were like in the Air Force or the Marines or something. I'm rewatching all three Lord of the Rings movies re-released in cinemas right after just watching EFAP 93. Very convenient. Yo. It's a classic. I'll have to go when they do that uh, again in the theater around here. I didn't get to do it last time because of some scheduling stuff, but boy, I really want to. Does it bother you when video games make guns left-handed, bolts, or CHs on the left side, even though the PC is always right-handed, i.e. Fallout 4? It does kind of bug me a little, but 
Um, not really. Uh, it's one of those, like, I can get over it. Like, it's realistic. You can do it. It's just weird that they would make it that way. But now I would prefer that they kept the standard bolt on the on the right. Um, it is a, the mildest of annoyances. Isn't Kermit useless without someone to control him? Well, isn't no, isn't uh, everyone uh, useless uh, without a writer and... to define what they're doing? They, yeah, I made it. I don't need no writer to define <laughs> what I'm doing. Well, it's just how. That works with Kermit. Kermit is, he's up and about doing stuff. That's how it works. It truly yeah. is. Uh, <laughs> what mythology is Chris Evans from? Do they mean Rich Evans? He's from the Red Letter Media cinematic universe. Wait, why did you think Rich Evans I mean when Rich they said Evans. Chris Evans? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Because they, was... they talk about him in their Marvel <laughs> reviews. Yes, he's uh, Rich Evans is definitely from the Red Letter Media fictional universe. He's uh, that's why he was in the listing. Rich Evans, not Chris Evans, for fuck's sake. Yeah, that makes sense. You'd follow up with that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Gromit knows nothing about TNG. Huge edge. What? Gromit knows the nothing next about generation. <laughs> I'm not oh, sure. Why would that? What? Why would that <laughs> be taken into account? I guess because Gromit is fighting Rich Evans, and so uh, Rich Evans has a, a really strong knowledge of TNG, but Gromit doesn't, which gives him an edge, according to the Super Chat, which is probably true. None of that nerd shit. Gromit is just going to fuck him up. Everyone agreed Gromit won that fight. It, was, it wasn't even close. So yeah. Gromit against Rich Evans? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'll be fair. Yeah, I, I agree. He ranks doesn't disagree either. I can't believe Rags sold his PC to get a bus ticket that went to Trump's rally in the Bronx, and he missed out on EFAP's best episode. Hopefully it was worth it. Incredible. I was mm. at a friend's wedding, but uh, that's a fun story, too. <laughs> uh, I get out of Fellowship, and you massives are still going? Since it's fresh in my mind, who wins between Farmer Maggot and Sackville Bagginses? Um, oh, Farmer Maggot. Gotta be Farmer Maggot, right? Yeah. The Sackville Bagginses are a bunch of fuckers. Yeah, they're like vultures. and uh, They're just jerks, man. Farmer Maggot's gonna fuck them up. Farmer Maggot's got... He's got some... He's got some ideas. I'll just he say really that. Does. He's got some ideas. Um, best Final Fantasy and why is it 7? I can't answer that. I've never played them. I thought it was Tactics Advance. I don't know. I feel bad. I, I don't think we, that any of the three of us can give a decent answer to that one other than uh, we thumb you up. Sure, it's seven, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Chat, uh, what's the best Final Fantasy? Go. What What is what is commonly understood to be the best one? Most people say seven, right? Mm. I don't know. I never played it, but that's what I I'm think it's say. like seven, six, uh... I don't know what else. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, I feel like Hannibal is a better hunter, whereas Bateman lures his victims, which wouldn't work on Lecter, maybe. I think we did decide Lecter won, ultimately. But in a physical I fight, so. Bateman has it, right? But Hannibal is the smarter guy by far. Yeah. Hear me out. What if Simba chokes him out by jumping down his throat? Chad win. Interesting. Hmm. You Can know? he hold his breath long enough to be able to do that? Because Simba's got to get air too. Uh, what if what if it's like you both die? He does it does first, it do draw right? or was it whoever died first? You know, I like... think a draw. I think it should be a draw. Well, if it's not down to the millisecond, like if someone, if say two guys shoot each other, but one of them is better with accuracy and shoots the guy in the head while he was shot in the leg. And so he will bleed out because Final Destination is just a, you know, a place where... I don't know if he'll... I, I don't think that... I, I would... I, it might... Okay, contextually, if someone uses a move that they know will kill the both of them, it ends in a draw. Um, if somebody... If, if they both shoot and one of them kills the other, and the other one just was like, a, yeah, like a worse shot, and he hits him in the leg, and he gets an infection and dies of septic shock two weeks later or whatever, then yeah, that doesn't count. But if it's like a, it, it depends on a lot of it is intentionality. 
and like skill and decision making. Um, what would you say if they were shot? One goes in the head, but the other one's hitting the neck, and he's he's like, ah, oh, geez, oof, ouchie, uh oh. And then he just then yeah. he just dies. That's a draw. I think that's a draw. So it, surely it's like it takes it's the amount of time it takes to die then, right? Like if it's within a minute, I it's think... a draw. Maybe, maybe more. I think so. If you mortally, it's like if you mortally wound someone, and just because of the the almost indistinguishable randomness that can result from some of those things. Uh, but if you mortally wound someone and make like a kill shot, it just they, they just linger on a little bit. Then I think it basically counts as you 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 got them. Uh, T Rex gets a respirator to breathe. I love Vader rules. What? <laughs> Why would T Rex get a respirator? Well, sure about that one. Extinct animal of the day, Pelagornis, the giant sawtoothed seagull. My goodness. The, the giant sawtoothed seagull? I feel like I should have heard about this before <laughs> now. I feel like I should have too. You said giant sawtooth, and I was like, oh, is this like going to be like a shark or something? And then you said seagull, and I'm like, whoa, hold on. Apparently this, well, hopefully this image works. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. I bet that's for, like, grabbing fish and making really sure they don't wriggle out of his beak, bill. Yeah. His yeah. beak, yeah. They, 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 I've got you, fish. You're not getting away. Well, because uh, seagulls have, like, stuff on the inside of their beak, right? The, like, jagged stuff that helps them gobble stuff down. I think a lot of birds have that. Yeah, they have, like, the ridges. Mm, but not like this. <laughs> not like that. That's, like, uh... Mm. That's a that's a nasty bite, and plus you got the spike on the front too. Jeez. Uh, Jack is very acrobatic. Not sure which Jack they're referring to. We had quite a few of them. Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack, yeah, he had to climb. He had to climb up that thing multiple times. And you got to be pretty. You gotta be to do Jack that. is indeed one of the Jacks. Uh. You know, I was thinking to myself, I would love it if we got another Captain America where he actually was fighting the Red Skull in World War II. Well, uh, that ain't happening. <laughs> like, not any time soon, anyway, if you mean specifically the MCU continuity. Maybe it'll happen in some kind of what-if with some other character. Why not? Nah. That's just as good. Well, in Final Fantasy 16, you transform into a Balrog and you fight a dragon only to escalate to a space battle once you fuse with your brother who is a phoenix while epic music plays. Epicest boss wow, fight. Wow, that sounds like Final Fantasy. I say, I was, oh my uh... god. No, it's great. It's really good. That's really that's what I meant. It's really mm. good. It sounds just like Final Fantasy story because it's so good. Do you feel the tone really switching around there? The thingy I felt. What? Stuff, the tone no. Is doing some stuff. I would never change... Mm. <laughs> I don't think an engineering rig is good enough to deal with I don't rifle know. I feel like... uh, ammo. The advanced rig, sure, but not Isaac's default one. Joel wins with range. What do you think? I think this I is would the... agree. This is round two. Probably. Isaac Clark versus Joel Miller in the forest. We did say Joel. We 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 went. You know, we we argued in favor of Joel for a decent bit. It's just that Isaac's. It, it's just not clear cut. Um, it could be tough. Isaac, yeah, he has a good command of military weaponry because he does get the the assault rifle. Um, and depending on the suit he has, he might be able to resist some damage because he does have access to military suits, military grade suits. His default engineering suit. I don't think that would be designed to stop bullets, though. It would be pretty resilient, and if it hits the metal bits, then he might be a okay. But of course, that'll depend on what uh, well, you know, version felt, it is as to how likely that may or may not be. Fringy felt that when he spawns in the forest, he would use the plasma cutter to chop down a tree, and then he would grab it with Kinesis and just fire it across the whole forest, and it would fuck everything up. Um, I don't think his Kinesis module is that powerful. Well, if Fringy were here, you could have this, uh, this, this back and forth, but he's clearly discussing something with his uh, bird friends. It must, must something must have come up. They're just yeah. There's a, there was an emergency meeting. Mm -hmm. The the whole flock got together and they had to discuss what their winter plans were. 
we'll yeah, uh, upcoming... we'll come back to it when he's um, when he's available. These matchups are better than death battle because they're actually fair fights that require some debate. Hey, not all of them, right? I did try, but some of them went a bit wild and nutty. But uh, hopefully they were fun. That was the main thing. The next MCU villains could be Yzma and Kronk, and I'd still take them more seriously than anyone <laughs> in Phase 4 and 5. Yeah, I mean... Dude, the, it's funny being like, yeah, the villains aren't so good. It's like the, the everyone isn't so good. But, I mean, not that I disagree Yzma or anything. Kronk. <laughs> um, Picard is mad and bald. True. Molding. Wow. Molding. Fighting Rambo would be like fighting an Enderman. Oh yeah, Rambo versus Steve, that was one. I think actually Steve won, though. I can believe it. Uh... It takes a lot of arrows to kill Steve. <laughs> Nathan loses a melee fight against Lazarevich. Oh, this is going to be another one for Fringy, probably, to comment on. going to little notes in these. We'll come back to them. If Shrek can out funny bugs, he can win. Yes, they, they kept entertaining the idea that whoever's funniest wins in the cartoon fights. But, uh, you know, it's got too, got too hmm. complicated. Bugs lifts buildings and survives TNT to the face. He is a god. <laughs> he is a god. <laughs> Bugs is a heavyweight. He's too OP for this tier. That is something I learned very quickly, yes. Fringy versus Bugs Bunny. I think even Fringy would admit Bugs has got it. Bugs would come in and sweep them both. He's a powerful guy. In the Enterprise, teleport a bomb onto the Sulaco. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. this is um this was Corporal Hicks versus I want to say Picard, uh, round three. So he gets the Sulaco and and uh, and Picard gets the Enterprise. I feel like the Enterprise. Now the Sulaco is what again? Remind me. Well, it's a big old space starship, but um, and it has the power to like raise a planet, from what we gather. But I don't know. Obviously, we know way more about Picard's Enterprise than we do about the Sulaco. The Enterprise is a pretty darn formidable yes. ship. It has very strong shields. It has the proton torpedoes, the crazy laser beams. It has the ability to do all kind of crazy science stuff. And if he gets the Enterprise, does that mean he gets the Enterprise crew as well? Because they're, like, insanely smart and very resourceful. The kind of scrapes they've gotten out of are nuts. I don't know how you can stop them. They're... Oof. Yeah, it's, um, I think we settled on the Enterprise side winning. Um, it's just a matter of there may be things I don't know about uh, alien fiction to make up for it. We had this problem with Predator in his round three because mm -hmm. obviously he gets a ship but it's like, yeah, but we don't know the full capabilities of Predator starships. It's hard to say, but yeah. A shilling for the ultimate showdown of Ultimate Destiny. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. A shilling for the confrontation of Calamity. A shilling for oh, oh, oh the civil discussion of Consequence. These are all very good names. These are good ones, yeah. Ah, Fringy has returned. Yes. Uh, Rags does not believe that Isaac would be able to cut down a tree and use it with Kinesis to essentially sweep the forest. Uh, well, cutting I think he would. Cutting down the tree, that, that's a, yeah, he could easily do that. Um, but I don't think that the, the power of his Kinesis module is such that he would be able to use a tree to, like, bash through the whole forest i don't think it's that i mean he he can he seems he appears to be able to move some really big things i think once you in the yeah. games though once you start picking up some big stuff it can be like practically impossible to move like you can't pick up the body of a of a charger for instance hmm. now kinesis is oh. really good but I don't think that it's necessarily the raw strength of the how heavy the things it could pick up is the fact that it can shoot things very quickly and accurately. That the real strength sure. of, of what it comes through. And plus, if I, it's I would agree with tree, that. Yeah, if it's tree on tree violence too, it's like how like to use a tree to chop down a tree. It's like that will not give you necessarily the results you want. Um, mm. 
But if he like if he can use this module like rocks off the ground, like that shit will that would easily kill a person. I go straight through. Yeah. So. And uh, the other one that figured you'd want to mention uh, comment on is uh, Nathan loses a melee fight against Lazarevich, but he can melee kill the big armored machine gunners in four, though. Lol. Yeah. Um, look, all right. Ludo narrative dissonance. Uh, plagues uncharted. <laughs> and he loses a fight to a lady. Yeah, but that was stupid. That shouldn't have happened. Yeah, but that was stupid. It was, uh, he lost two on he lost two on one. Like that's bullshit. <laughs> he wins. <laughs> that's it. Played it simple. Yeah. Sir Raggleton, if you were to pull out Exodia ah. against Movie Blob at full power with the stones of diabetes, would Sir Rags one shot Movie Blob? I think so. Exodia wins you the game, so I mean I don't what's stronger than winning the game? Is that what the description says, or does it say like it wipes out the opponents? Is there any defense no, against it? No, it means it, you or... win the game. Okay. No, once you have all the cards, you you uh, you win the game. The only defense against it is making sure that the other player Belch. can't get all five pieces. Once I like the idea that you like there's one defense and you you see it, he assembles all pieces, then the other opponent pulls out a gun. Like, <laughs> don't <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Uh, the angry video game nerd beat up Bugs Bunny and took a dump on him. How would the nerd fare against Ye Unicron if he had his Nintendo Zapper available? Why would he do that? Bugs um, Bunny's a fun guy. He's a fun goober. Well, maybe... Who knows? Bugs has been known to make some social faux pas, with purpose, of course, but maybe he he fucked yes. up. I mean, angry video game nerd, as we know, he he's quite respectful, quite uh, got good etiquette, so I'd imagine it was Bugs' failure in this interaction. Unfortunately, uh, don't know really, really what happened. Um, but yeah, we uh, angry video game nerd, uh, angry pissed off video game nerd. We we didn't put him in again because we felt like he was too OP. I mean, Boogie ended up winning, so maybe we should have put him in because he would be the only person that could defeat Boogie. Um, <laughs> be interesting to see what would happen. Which mutation would you prefer: a prehensile tail or opposable thumbs on your feet? A prehensile tail or opposable thumbs on your, well, the prehensile tail. However, if they meant to say, the problem is with the feet thing, is that if you just have two thumbs sticking out of your foot, that's not going to be that useful because you need like the other fingers to grab things with. Now, if you were to ask, do you want a prehensile tail or like um, like monkey feet, which are like hands, I'd take the monkey hands instead of the prehensile tail. But the way that they worded it, I'll take the tail. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what I would get more use out of in my day-to-day. -day. I'm not actually sure. I feel like it would be fun to have uh, hand feet to do all kinds of crazy jumping around and everything, but my average carrying of things or using things, I feel like the tail would come in handy more. I think so. In the daily, I yeah, in, in the daily. That. It's but... like a third limb. A um, third hand arm, um, I guess, in a sense. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a limb. third hand. It's a third yeah, helpful. A hand, a third. It's a. It's a helpful, like maybe tentacle, for lack of a better term, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or you could. It. It is very useful, but it ain't an extra hand. But, in order to. But if you had like, like I said, if the question was like phrased poorly and they meant to say you have feet for hands, or sorry, hands for feet very important distinction, um, then I would take the... the I would I'd rather have feet... Uh, I'd rather have hands for my feet instead of just a prehensile tail. I understand that. That makes sense. Um, obviously, I, I wasn't expecting to use it like a hand, more so all the little things in life that can be done with just the tail. Yeah. It can open the fridge. It can hold a... Like, maybe hold, like, a cup or something. It can do a lot of really basic stuff. But... A lot of the times you just need to do basic stuff and it's really it, you could just like have it there and you could put something on it. It could grab a towel if you need to wipe something up. It, it would be both would be very useful. Um, and someone said, yes, I mean, hands for feet. So there you go. I figure that's enough. what he might have been, because if you just put thumbs on your feet, it's not, not actually going to do that. Not much that good. useful. Uh, Stanley Cup finals is starting. Well, exciting. We'll all be checking that out, will we not? 
Sorry, what? Uh, say that? <laughs> no, that was the perfect response, honestly, to what I said. It kind of captures oh, right, the point right, I was right. making, so it's all good. Uh, <laughs> okay. Watched everything, everywhere, all at once with my brother. Great movie. Thank you for the spotlight a while ago. Yeah, we love that movie. Oh, I'm really glad you liked it. That is a really good movie. Doesn't Steve have something called a locator map? What is, what is that, Rags? Tell I, us. A locator map. Let me double check. Uh, a, a lo Oh, it's just like, is that just what the... I think that might be just what the basic... A locator map is an item which can be used as a visual aid when exploring the overworld or the end. It allows a player to capture surface features of areas they visit, plotting them on a handheld map. It also allows players to locate other players, as the name states. Oh, which is All interesting, right. because being able to know if there's another player... Yeah, this is just like the map that you hold and you fill out. So, yeah, potentially, as far as I know, you can't hide from another player on the locator map, so you wouldn't be able to hide from Steve if he had a map in his hands because oh he could God. see all the other players. God damn, Steve. It's getting, he's Steve is... Look, don't fuck with Steve. 1% uh, win is still a win. Let's go, Steve. I mean, yeah. Uh, we, we gave a lot of votes to the chat, and he might just edge them out by 1% sometimes, you know, but that still counts. Go, Steve. A lot of Steve fans. A lot of Steve fans. Guy is the limit. Steve's build limit is 255 blocks. Is that right? You Steve's mod it to be more. Limit for, to, it, Steve's, like, jump limit? What do you mean? Sorry? I don't know. They said, uh, they said, sky is the limit. Steve's build limit is 255 blocks. I think that is the limit. Yeah, I think that is the limit of how far... How how high up you can build, as far as I know. Unless they've changed it. Mm -hmm. But, um, I am almost certain there's probably mods that lift it up higher. The original Tarzan from the comics is a genius and a scholar. Oh, well. The who from Tarzan, sorry? Well, Tarzan. From the original. Oh, Tarzan from Tarzan is a genius and a scholar. I did not know that. Neither did I. I didn't know that he was... I didn't know that in the original. I thought he was... Not an educated man. We considering Disney he, he had, Tarzan or he had what we called Tarzan, which it's it appeared to, that we were kind of working with Disney Tarzan. He still beat the shit out of a lot of people. He got really far. I w I always thought he was like the like he's a he's a man he, street smarts. That's what Tarzan has. He is street smarts, not book smarts. Uh, I feel like a complete stranger being the only one who knows a lot about Minecraft. Steve, should I be worried? No, Rags does. There you go. Yeah, I love Minecraft. Yeah. Uh, Minecraft Skyrim, is great. Skyrim Nazim versus Legend of Zelda Tingle. Um, I feel like we're the worst oh, people to ask check. that because. Wait, you do you know who Nazim is? You would, right? Because you played Skyrim. I'm. I'm just double checking. Oh, he's the guy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> he's the one who says do you get to the cloud district very often oh what am i saying of course you don't <laughs> he's that annoying asshole in uh white run yeah i think that's why they compared um, him to tingle in zelda who's also yeah, as far that... as I'm aware, an annoying asshole <laughs> somewhat he's like a little uh that's... little leprechaun creature yeah i know tingle because of super smash bros yeah that's how i know about tingle uh, who wins out of those two, though? I I'd leave it to chat. I have no clue. Does Tingle have any powers? Or is he just sort of around? I don't Some actually know. I don't someone know said Nazim, really. so it's Nazim. There you go. That's that's the objective way to do that. Uh, Steve takes bugs if he makes an Albuquerque sign. Yeah, this is where the problem started happening, because it was like Steve versus Bugs Bunny was, was essentially like, wait. How do we determine a winner here? As you can imagine, Rags, it was very difficult. I can understand why. Uh, Asura from Asura's Wrath versus Kratos from God of War 3. But I don't know who Asura is. I haven't played Asura's Wrath. I, I have not played that either. Help you. So I will say Kratos is pretty OP, but then I'm sure this Asura person is as well. 
another one for chat speculation, presumably. This might be really important going forward. Does the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man get Gozer as backup in round three? Oof, I don't think so. We probably wouldn't allow that because Gozer could just be their own entity, you know? Probably not. Robocop for the win, lol? Yeah, that was a controversial one. We had Robocop versus mm. the T-800 rags. Who do you think wins? Between Robocop and the T-800? Mm-hmm. Uh... I feel like T-800 can shoot him in the mouth, right? A lot of people <laughs> are saying that the mouth isn't actually, like, a, a weak spot in any way, shape, or form. It's just a form on top of you know, steel as strong as the rest of the body. I the thing about it is for me, like that information. I I feel like it would be very dangerous for Robocop to be shot there still, even from the movies. I don't know. Mm. I think I'm going T eight hundred here. I think that uh Robocop's a bit he's a bit stiff, you know, in the way that he moves around and everything. And I feel like T eight hundred has a lot more like blending in capabilities and um in maneuverability and I think he's just stronger and more resilient than Robocop is. And he's a lot I think he's basically completely bulletproof, isn't he? My impression was that Robocop doesn't have the capacity to defeat the T eight hundred from Yeah, I just the only thing maybe would be the data spike through the brain, but that's only if you permit that it could stab the T eight hundred through the brain or the skull rather. I don't I don't know. And I feel like when it comes to grappling stuff, I feel like the T eight hundred beats him in grappling because of his like his, his maneuverability and just raw strength. So yeah, I think the T eight hundred T eight hundred beats Robocop. And people compare, like, uh, their weight, and uh, apparently Robocop is way heavier than the Terminator, but it's it's definitely an intuition thing going off their movies. It feels as though, to me, that if the T-800 punched him, it would do more than if he punched the Terminator. Um, yeah, because I think he, I think just the speed at which he could actually move himself, you know, he's... The T-800 has a lot of flexibility and dexterity, so being able to actually make that punch is going to transfer way more force because he can just actually move himself that quick. But, uh, of course, that I, th I think we left that one to a vote as well because uh, we knew it was hyper-controversial, right? You can't just determine a winner for those two. You crazy? Insane is what that is. Um, where are we? Working on Phantom Menace comics still, and I got questions. Fringy, bird-slash-human hybrid or ultimate Australian monster? I, what do you mean, like, like a choice between the two of those as things, or what? I fucking hate Discord, dude. How could it think that's acceptable? Why would it think that's acceptable? It just cranks what, your voice really so loud, hard. All like, of a sudden? It, it makes you uh. sound like you are retarded for not knowing how loud you are, but it's not your fault in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> like, all right, like, well. You'd think it would have the software to react a little fucking faster, you know? Mm. But why even do it? I don't know. They fuck something up, which is not a surprise. Uh, I mean, luckily for me, the I mean, audio honest, goes into OBS, yeah. so that's never gonna piss off the chat, but it'll piss you guys off every <laughs> once in a while, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, I'm awake. Yes, yeah, this is gonna. Everyone's gonna be like, "Too loud." Yeah. Oh, jeez, I'm awake. <laughs> that's <laughs> how I start all. I start every day. Oh, jeez, I'm awake. Yeah, I guess they're asking whether or not you should be designed such as a bird-human hybrid or as your own sort of thing that, that, that grew in Australia, some special monster. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'd say I'm neither, but like if I only had to choose between the two, I guess I'd probably prefer the first one. All right. Uh, more I'm thinking EFAP is a tile of party like the Fellowship, maybe? Oh, I think they mean type of party like the Fellowship, maybe? And Rags, dog-human hybrid or dog? Dog-human hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm just a, just a dog, you know? I'm just a dog, just Started. hanging out over here. No need no need to pay me any mind, I'm just a dog, you know? Just, uh, just a dog. But yeah, EFAP's a kind of fellowship, for sure. We have our uh, yeah, main Yeah, we have assembled and... a fellowship, that's yeah. for sure. Many friends and allies who light the beacons and come to our aid, and vice versa. You asked earlier who'd be the most powerful female character in fiction. Obviously, the correct answer is the Force. Oh, yeah, well. 
That'd be a no, tough the one. The force to is defeat. female, from what I've heard. Yeah. I know evil empire trope was criticized in EFAP for RM part one, but what do y'all think about the royal family fucking with their people by becoming gods? What? Uh, I don't know. What so you, RM is that a? What is that a? Rebel reference? Moon. Oh. I didn't know they became gods. I'm yeah, I, a, I don't know anything about look, the context. Don't ask. There. Look, look, my dude. Don't ask. Ask me a lot of things, but don't ask me about Rebel Moon lore. Okay, <laughs> just just don't do it. Just don't do it. It's usually pretty funny when we discover more about it, though. Just saying. It is. It does get funnier. The world gets funnier the more I learn about it, which is yeah. not typically what you want. Like the the captured really cosmic good, space god they have in their ship to power their engine of coal or whatever. The the Kala. Right? Yeah, that's some shit right there. Oh, boy. Uh, I guess you guys didn't have Shaggy because he'd sweep. Yeah, obviously. No point in doing that. The discussions will be over instantly. We're trying to encourage discussions. Shaggy's too powerful. Hey, EFAP crew. Just wanted to thank you all for EFAP boogie episodes. I've lost 85 pounds, and I'm only 20, 20 pounds away from my goal. And being on the transplant list... Nice. Losing this weight is the only Yo. thing that brings me joy in this world. Excellent fucking news! <laughs> well, I, I that's a that's a huge congratulations, man. We've we've said before, uh, Boogie is very much, uh, you know, benefiting from a bad example type situation. He is, uh, you don't want to end up that way. That's not good, um, for many reasons, of course, not just related to his physical state, but his his personality. You want to, it's a cautionary tale. His learn, yeah, from his failures, but, inside um, and outside, basically. Yeah, good to hear it, and uh, best of luck with whatever end up uh, dealing with there. I don't know what the implication exactly is of a transplant list, so I assume you needed to get access to something, and you need to be a particular weight, or uh, that's a misunderstanding, but best of luck. Did we ever take into account... Yeah, that's account... really awesome. Good. Congratulations. Yeah. Did we ever take into account how strong Steve is? He can carry one million times one million blocks of gold that stack up to 64. I think I watched a video saying Steve can carry like eight Empire State Buildings worth of weight. <laughs> Listen, don't fuck around with Steve. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very casually walking around with eight Empire State buildings. Why not? Yeah, it, 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 the stuff like that was getting complicated with the uh, game things. Guys, Kung Fu Panda 3 is so annoying and terrible. What the fuck? I don't know, is it? Do you mean 4? Or is, is, is the four? third not liked as well? I think people fight over 3 a bit, but I know that 4, it seems like nobody likes 4. No one talks about it. No one has said any. I don't know anything about it other than the porn. Yeah, I just don't see don't like anything. It, yeah. No one talked about it. I... And I'm like, it's interesting that nobody talks about a Kung Fu Panda movie. Hmm. I have only seen the first two, and they are awesome. Yes, they yeah, are. Yeah, the first two are great. I need to. I think I need to see three, and I, I only see four maybe. of these two. Want to see it? <laughs> I would see it out of curiosity, but only with these two if they wanted to see it as well. Or if they were uh, curious. Boom, boom, boom. I meant in a different story, not not Rebel Moon, lol. So, the question... I mean, the answer is probably going to be yes, if you're asking, is it possible to make a royal family fucking with their people by becoming gods? It's like, there's a context that could work, sure. I mean, yeah. you know, um, it's not about evil empire in the sense that we can't have them doing anything immoral. It's more so like the cartoon aspect. We don't want them just being stupid evil. And, um... This kind of applies to, like, the ruling of your people. You want people in your kingdom, your civilization. Stop fucking killing them for no reason or doing silly bullshit. Like, if, if you, say, for example, to become a god in that universe, you have to sacrifice a thousand children's blood or whatever. I'd be like, oh, I, I understand that better in terms of, like, some power-hungry crazy man who wants to do it. As opposed to some of the shit we see, like, in something like Rebel Moon. Uh, all the the first order, final order, all the all the crazy, terrible, idiotic organizations, whatever may have you, just have a little bit of a brain going on, you know. Even if it involves crazy sacrifices and killing people in some way, just just get some writing in there. I think the strongest female character is one from DC Comics. Tend to have more infinite stuff, like Raven destroying everything. And uh, no to anime, even Dragon Ball's limited by having everything be finite. Um, well, I mean, Fringy suggested, and he's probably right, right? Dark Phoenix, does she outclass this raven person? Or I man? don't know, actually. I don't know. 
she is kind of super ultimately powerful. I'm pretty sure she's like her yeah. power listings are essentially like she, she can tear everything down to the atomic level, which is you know, I know mm. I know a lot of people have that That's power. Cool. Like Raven's <laughs> magic, so I don't know how that, you know, like how Interacts. that slots together. Yeah. Uh thoughts on Inside Out. The sequel is looking bleh. I mean, oh, yeah. I think Inside Out, the first one's like overrated. Um, it's fine, but it ain't it ain't like incredible. I yeah, I I th I can't remember if I have seen it or not, but I just remember finding it eh. Yeah, oh, yeah you know. it's it's fine, but but it's not. You know, like when it came out, I was saying it's the best movie since Up. That was uh, I mean, it might have been, but like yes, it was. It's not. It's not that good. Uh, can we get an EFAP review of X-Men 97? It's actually good, and it's faithful to the original. A blast from the 90s Marvel. The best Marvel, objectively. We did mention this earlier. Uh, if we were to watch it, it would be on a list that's very long, and um, I'm afraid we're probably just not the people for it, because we weren't, I assume, between the three of us, not super invested in the original show. Um, no, core episodes of it, done. but that's about it. So, um, but I'm happy to hear it's very good. Fringy, watch the Larry Sanders show. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it at some point. All right. Uh, oh my right, god, Fringy, you go. did you buy my Fringy Nor sticker? Huh? Is there a Fringy Nor sticker? Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess no is the answer on that one. Uh, yeah. Thoughts on the Iron Giant? I mean, same awesome. as everybody's great film. And there you go. To think mm -hmm. otherwise means you're not human. That's unfortunate, but you know, true. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, if you want more in depth thoughts, I'd have to rewatch it to give you more of like analysis and stuff. But just it's Iron Giant. It's good shit. FMA Brotherhood does the ruler sacrifices their people to become god very well. Well, it's not. I don't. I don't think it's difficult to do. It's just that a lot of people would make it retarded. Um. And you can always rely on Zack to do something retarded with any kind of concept like that. But I'd agree with you. I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff for the accumulation of power in the world of FMA Brotherhood. Or rather, just FMA in general. In what universe does a gun firing standard ammunition bring down a T-Rex? We need specialized weapons just for elephants. T-Rex weighs more and is way tougher. I don't buy that you, you need you more than need an assault bullet. rifle. Yeah, an assault rifle will probably it'll it'll put a lot of hurting in that thing. Consider assault rifle will shoot. Let's take an AK forty seven, uh, AK thirty rounds. You can hold. You let's say you bring three extra magazines with you, right? That's a hundred and twenty rounds that you have on you. You can spit that thing downrange, pretty darn good distance. A T Rex is a really big target, and you're gonna have those pretty chunky bullets all of them going into that Tyrannosaurus Rex. And, like, that's, that's just a shit ton of damage, okay? The reason that we hunt elephants and big game with really big bullets is, one, for, like, humane reasons. You don't want to just, like, have it suffer with all these little bullet holes inside of it. You want to shoot it once and have it die quickly, and that be that. And also because it's just more, it's just more reliable to hit it with that one bullet. And if you're going to hit it with one bullet, you want it to be a really big bullet. It obviously wouldn't be difficult to just go around and spray down animals with assault rifles, but it's cruel and inhumane and it's messy and it's way more expensive than it should be. It's that's just not how you would do it. But if you had a guys with assault rifles shooting at a T-Rex, it, yeah. it would just you just you'd shoot a whole bunch of lead into it and it would die because it's an animal. And yes, it would take a lot more rounds than a rabbit or a dog or a deer, you know, or or a bison, but like you'd You'd bring it. You'd bring it down. It's like God, bullets are no joke, especially well, yeah, um, if they're the scenario like is said, just a standard AK forty seven shoots a big bullet. Not that this actually happened in the in the competition, but I think we speculate about it. Like spawn in forest, you have Captain Price on one side with his rifle, and the other side T Rex. If he gets to aim and shoot, like I just I just don't think the T Rex has got a chance. I think he's gonna fuck it up. Um, you would probably have a grenade too, which is, I imagine is gonna hurt the T Rex quite a bit. I just um. And then there's, of course, like, I don't know the nature of someone battling a T-Rex in a forest in terms of their ability to move around it, confuse it, annoy it. And uh, what happens if you shoot into its mouth or its eyes? Mm. 
and then of course if you just get away from it long enough it'll bleed out like i said i just uh i feel i'm not going to deny there's a chance the t-rex can win this fight i just think that it's way more likely the guy with a gun does yep yeah it's just you got to remember that animals don't evolve at least not in any meaningful sense they don't evolve to withstand like gunshots you know if they can it's sort of incidental um or it's due to some other just like the sheer mass or something else it's it's not like a, a direct specific thing that animals are just like built to withstand in the same place that, that that's why like bulletproof glass and like really high grade kevlar is really really good at doing the thing it was designed specifically to do so yeah but i mean obviously we can get into what if it's a forest what if there's a lot of cover in the way what you know how much how much time to shoot does the person have is it just one person what's the gun that they have is the t-rex or are they like barreling toward them these are the things that'll determine it not whether or not you can kill it with the assault rifle um i need to use the ludos i'll be right back all right bathroom time the leftovers had the best ending of any show christopher eccleston also shows his dong in one episode okie dokie i've heard of that i think that's the is that the one where he's jesus or is that a different tv show i'm not sure no clue uh, yeah fair enough a uh, double KO on the table because she could lose to anyone wearing a reflective item while taking them out. Talking about Medusa. And I think uh, we just had to balance probabilities in terms of who do we believe would win more often. I think mm -hmm. some came up against the trouble of, like, we really don't know. We came down to votes. Uh, Ratchet can summon micro black holes. Oh, yeah, that's another thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his <laughs> weapons. <laughs> that's crazy. Throw that in there. Uh... Everyone forgets Excalibur's scabbard is the best magic canonically. Arthur can't die while wearing it. He is defeated only when Modred swamp swaps in a fake. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know these things about Mr. Arthur. <laughs> uh, he's been around, you know, as fictional characters go. Uh, or the fictional versions, anyway. Uh, Covenant ships can tank nukes easily. Yeah, they're really strong. Mm. Oh, oh, pardon me. Uh, would an Arbiter have access to an entire fleet? Yeah, we did kind of deal with that. We we were like, they should probably get one ship per uh, space ability thing per, per A character. strike team, maybe. That might be a good limit for something, because he often gets those with missions. And... Does yeah. Boba get his back to tank? I don't know if that was going to make a huge <laughs> difference. What you should be asking is, does he get, does he get his bantha? <laughs> <sighs> like a bantha. Like a bantha. That part got memed so hard, even though it was just a tiny bit of cringe. But it was cringe, so that's how it goes. It was definitely cringe, that's for sure. Uh, to answer Fringy's question, yes. Phoenix can destroy the multiverse in Marvel Comics, but the scope of DC and Marvel's multiverses is far different, with it being very one very uh, very one-sided in DC's favor. Raven stomps. Mm. Fair enough. No, I, I, got, I just have no idea. We need some efabs on horror YouTubers. In Praise of Shadows isn't even the worst one. It's, a, it's just a realm I'm less familiar with, I'm afraid. The horror YouTubers. I guess they like read out creepypastas and stuff like that. Oh. I don't know. I, 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 stories about cryptids or, or relatively like unknown yeah, yeah. things is... I don't know if that's considered horror YouTuber, horror YouTube in general, or if there's more to it. I'm, I'm just not familiar. Uh, Corporate asked you to find the difference between these two pictures. They're the same picture. And this was regarding, mm. uh, what was it, Captain America and... Uh, oh, V for Vendetta. So, V. I guess because they're both super soldiers somewhat. No, that's fair. I think Cap got the win on that one. Cap is max human potential in law, which, um, yeah, like I said, I don't know if V isn't just that as well. I'm not sure about specific references. Mm. Hypothetical. There's a show about a son and his adventures with his dad. The show's first episode has the son resurrecting his dad with a magic wand he found. Magic never comes up in the show after that, and the show is 100% down to earth, son, dad stories, but with the episodes are brilliantly written. The best. 
It ends never properly explaining the existence of that magic. Would you consider the show good or forever flawed by such a foundational aspect being impossible? It, it I, I mean, kind of sounds kind of crazy. It would, it would, it would have an infection into a couple of issues. Like it, it establishes a magic system is available, and it would affect all future examples of anyone having died and not having been resurrected and not being addressed by in terms of mechanics. It's uh, you just have to figure out where it would affect and how, and um, it would have to be a, just referenced as being like, unfortunately, there's this thing that they're not addressing. But hey, and by the way, lots of shows and and long term long form stories do this. It's just you have to highlight the good and then the the ignored mechanics. Right. However, many there are, however big, but that would be strange. Yes, if he used magic to resurrect someone, and then it's never ever referenced again, nor is magic in general. That would be strange. And uh, would probably be referenced as a bit of a problem. Uh, agreed. I mean, but in reference to how good would the show be considered overall, I suppose it would it would be in reference to just how much they managed to build um, that isn't dependent on that as ruining it. Yeah. Uh, it should have been Frank Hargan. No, rigged. I don't know who that is. I'm sorry. I don't know who that is either. Sorry. Uh, Fringy, your 12 Angry Men video is gone. Uh, yeah, copyright. <laughs> Three years Yay. later. So that's fun. Um, so yeah, I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do there. We love copyright. The best. Yeah. yeah. I sure do love it three years later, though. That's great. If Wait, the... this guy's talking about how great this movie is. Take that shit down. Especially if it's an oldie, okay? That's the worst when they do that. Mm. If the werewolf's name is Hubert Blaine Wolfenschlusenstein and Hausenbergendorf Senior, then Light is screwed. Yeah, it would take a while to write that name in, but we, we kept going over the uh, the deal he can make, right? That one took a little bit of time, because he was against uh, Geralt. Or... Mm. Yeah, didn't didn't one point he goes up against a T-Rex <laughs> something light? It was like, oh no. <laughs> How does that do? work with animals? I don't know. We have to like, can he kill Old Yeller? Maybe. Or or Lassie? Those can an animal have, have a name? Like if it's if someone else gives the animal that name, but you know, like how does does the animal have to be smart enough to comprehend it has a name? Or hmm. Who can say? Uh, they review horror movies mostly. Well, at that point, it's just movie review, but I guess horror specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, where does Acolyte rank in all Star Wars shows? It's not doing great. It's probably above Obi-Wan and Boba Fett, but mm -hmm. I don't know. If they, if they fuck yeah. up a whole bunch further, they might just sink to that level. Um, I feel like, I think... We say, like, it's very similar to Ahsoka at this point for quality. Not too far away from it. Yeah, um, feels like it's at, at about that level. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Hey, Leafap. Just wanted to say thanks for all the work you do hey, and for inspiring me to start teaching myself video editing such content creation, hoping to get decent enough to be a freelance editor. Cheers all and high ranks. Oh, hey there. Um, well, excellent to hear. Happy to hear it. And best of luck. Whatever it is you get up to in whatever way with editing. Thanks for letting us know. Please look at the multiverse map for DC Comics. It more or less gives a basic idea to how the DC multiverse works. Uh, I want to know. I don't know that, and like, because it could be anything. I wouldn't. It wouldn't give me an idea of how it works against Marvels, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Especially because I'm just not familiar enough with um, either of them. Yeah, like I'm seeing an image. It it says, I don't know how to make sense of this. <laughs> like it's it's a god sphere of the the god sphere of the and I can't read the rest of it. Oh well. Uh, yeah, there's there's just lights, colors, and shapes all over the place. I I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's, yeah. I'm sure it's very intense, and having control over it makes you very powerful. I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, what movies? Like a really useful thing to have, yeah. What movies did you watch most as young'uns? I had Attack of the Clones and Robin Hood Men in Tights on basically infinite repeat. Uh, 
the great mouse detective and the rescuers down under i watched those a lot as a kid i watched the grace i watched the lion king a lot um nightmare before christmas i watched an, an insane amount of times toy um, story 2 <laughs> uh terminator 2 <laughs> i watched that an insane amount of times <laughs> uh what else I'm trying to think of a couple because there are movies that I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, of course. I remember watching that a billion. Oh well, Jingle All the Way. I kind of watched an insane amount of times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Batman and Robin probably watched that a whole bunch of times. Hey, Arnie movies were very popular in my household. Okay, it didn't matter what oh. quality they were, just get them going. Um, oh yeah, anything Pixar, pretty much. That was that was just repeat. Mm-hmm. I remember loving going through the uh, bonus features on Pixar movies. They're really good. The passion. So much. The sheer passion. Anyway, uh, what's next in the War Arc? Did we released the list. It was in the trailer. It was all in the list. It's yeah, you have to know. watch the trailer. Can I get uh, recommend Gettysburg or The Patriot? Two great films that are largely historically lyrics... Histori lyric historically accurate to boot is the I thought the Patriot was considered very much not historic. <laughs> <Patriot, laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree that it's a well. I would say it's a good movie. It's better well, we, than we are. We are, we are Patriot is, enjoyers. But... Uh, so is that? It's just the how accurate it is is, is the whole thing. Um, but no, neither of them are in the War Arc. At least the current War Arc. Maybe we'll do more in future. Who knows? Who could say? Uh, I still find it funny slash scary that in the DC Comics lore, if one of the gods die, their corpse is big enough to where it can kill all of time and space, the multiverse and concepts by falling on it. <laughs> what? Wait, fall on it? They fall like, on the multiverse. Gravity? You <laughs> fall on the How do you fall on the multiverse? That sounds, like, that sounds like something DC would have. <laughs> Don't kill that thing, it'll slip and fall on the multiverse. <laughs> Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Uh, if this is Bath's Breath of the Wild Link, he should have all of his magic like stasis and magnetism since those are all gained in the tutorial area. I can't remember how we tried to sort out Bath's Link. It was a little bit tough because there's so many different versions. Uh, chat is dumb for not picking Demon God Killer Link. Oh, yeah, we left it to chat. So it's not our fault. Haha, <laughs> be mad at That's each other. Right. Can't blame us. <laughs> Can Charizard breathe in space? Oh, this is for his fight against Ridley. Uh, I don't... I don't know. I don't think Would so. they go to space in an arena? As an arena? I mean, in the round three, Ridley's winning anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think we gave that to Ridley. Ridley has a it ship. It makes long. sense to me. I know. Charizard gave it his all. All right, he tried. <laughs> Sure, Ridley would be resistant to fire as dragon type. Ridley has it. It's fine. You don't have to worry about it. Next time when you mm -hmm. put Pokemon, do more research. No. <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> we had this before. It was, I think it was on a real BBC. It was like, next time, uh, you know, make sure you know everything about the, the IPs you're talking about. I was like, no, of course not. Are you insane? I'll never be able to run this thing <laughs> if I had to read about every IP. Especially when you have shit like God Emperor Joker. There's no... I'm yeah. familiar with Joker's many iterations. I had no fucking clue there was God Emperor Joker that, <laughs> again, eats planet. <laughs> it's supposed God to be Emperor fun, Joker. not like an actual scientific fucking thing where we, we actually like have test dummies and we create all kinds of, you know, we gotta get this right, we gotta figure out who the winner is. We, we crowned Boogie the King, guys. I don't think it was that serious. <laughs> <sighs> but fun, though. Sweet crispy critters, this is a long boy proper. Late to the party, we'll watch the full thing later. Looking forward to all sorts of tism and fleam. Hell yeah. Uh, Destiny is in the title and he's not even here. Shake my head. Yeah, I know, that's crazy. Also, hi Rags, who is also not here. Hi. Also, watch I'm Paranoia Agent. Nine months I've been birthed by EFAP. Ugh. Paranoia Agent. I don't know that one. Interesting. Ever watched the show Louie? Uh, I think I saw clips, but I didn't watch the show. 
Either of you guys? I've not seen it either. No, no I haven't seen it. That's the Louis C.K. one, right? I assume so, yeah. I've uh, not seen it. I've not seen it. Q teabags the multiverse. Yeah, Q is uh, he's, he's the very opposite of underpowered, you might even say. Listen, the Patriot is Hollywood historically accurate, but overall, that's largely how the war was in the southern colonies. I feel like you'd get a lot of fighting on that, depending on the person you talk to. Um, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of YouTube videos about how Patriot is inaccurate, but I, like, all I'm saying is I cannot speak to that, but fair enough. Uh, the Phantom Menace re-release just put it back into the top 50 highest grossing movies of all time. Sequels could never get that kind of traction again. What an embarrassment. It would be funny to see what numbers they'd all pull if we did a re-release for the lot. Mm. I just, you know, I don't know. I, I, I feel like we all know what the results would, would look like, but eh, who, who could say? I think it would be pretty, pretty, pretty funny just to have some comparisons. It's still funny how people think Goku beats Superman when Goku can't breathe in space, isn't a living concept, can't time travel by moving, and can't one-shot Darkseid. The guy was, I was referencing with the falling on the multiverse bit. Yeah, that's, I mean, a lot of people are saying there's a, uh, I don't know, it was Superstar Superman or something? I can't remember which one, but he's like apparently insane in round three. Um, and he does outclass Goku, but... A lot of people mm. think Goku outclasses Superman, and this is just not one that I feel we can we can decide for you. We had to leave that to you guys. Um, but I understand the frustration. It happens. Superman, 10 billion? That might have been it, yeah. 1 million. Something. No one can breathe in space. That is, that is true. The question would be, can you survive in space? Which Can Goku That's survive fine. in space? I wouldn't be surprised if he could at his max. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't know. I have no clue. Maybe. I have no clue, man. I grew up with dog, uh, the, 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 the Dragon Ball Z, but Superman beats Dark Goku Walker. easy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> he was a grand inspiration to us all. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, can't, I, just, I can't help out with that one, but uh, it was a close fight. You know, the percentages, they came in real close. Uh, when will we finally get a Lindsay Ellis EFAP? That is, uh, we, we have a sort of idea for how we would do one for that, uh, that'll happen eventually. I swears. Robocop tanks rockets. The T-800 was severely damaged by a pipe bomb. The Terminator doesn't stand a chance. What's interesting about that, though, is that the nature of their first battle doesn't involve anything like that. It's just the, the body versus the body. In the second round, you get both of them get weapons, and that reasonably, uh, the Terminator will end up with a plasma weapon. Um if it would be considered a standard loadout from his actual creation, which is not when getting sent getting sent back in time or whatever, that's very unusual for a T-800. Uh, what's usual is he's on the battlefield with his, like, his pew-pew. And uh, I think everyone yeah. agreed the pew-pew was probably going to annihilate Robocop, that gun. Mm-hmm, definitely. That's no way Robocop is equipped to deal with that kind of weaponry. Yeah. And so then, round three, Robocop might be able to beat him on that one, but the the T-800 then has access to a bunch of future tech and Sky... I was about to say Skyrim, Skynet at its uh, potential maximum. Yeah, it, it, it gets complicated. But I understand. I like Robocop. He's a real cool dude. I, uh, I wouldn't want to see him beaten up, especially because the T-800 can be very mean. Depends on if he's on your side. Yeah, um, that's, that's a big difference. This question was already answered in the comic book Robocop vs. the Terminator. Okay, but I didn't write that. So I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I might disagree with how they have the outcome. Uh, you need to dissipate the T-1000's whole body to beat him. Yeah, you gotta, like... There's a couple things you'd have to potentially do, but... We were saying, like, plasma Melting weapons. Melting is the main thing. Yeah. Plasma would be effective, for sure. Oh, as we said, the, uh, the energy sword, I feel like it would really fuck him up. Um, yeah, he wouldn't be ready for that. He'd like he'd get swung at and be like, "Oh, what the what?" Like he wouldn't know what. The way this we is. saw it was Arbiter would toss a plasma grenade at him. The T one thousand would be like, "What the hell is this?" And he'd blow him apart into a little puddle, and then the Arbiter just yeah, walks up to him with already. the empty sword and starts, you know, buttering the floor yeah. <laughs> with the sword until it all melts. Uh, if the T eight hundred kills him, there's no time travel, and he can't go back to kill him. Doc's invincible here. Oh, the, the, we had some difficult questions to answer with the time travel characters. 
Yeah. We had to figure out what the past of like the forest place even looks like. And can they even get back there? What what is that? It's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's getting complicated. Won't time travel keep him in the forest in time? You know what? If we did or didn't answer that question, I, I, I hope we it didn't complicate the hell out of everything. In the comics, the Hulk is the last person on Earth spending every day being eaten alive by giant insects while constantly regenerating. What the hell? What the fuck? What, is, what horrible comic is that? <laughs> Where he's just eaten all the time and regenerates. What's the story? Giant insects? How did this happen? <laughs> oh my goodness. Is this it like is a terrible. horrible what if or something? To, to be specific, I didn't mean like the writing was horrible, just like what a what a tragic end for the Hulk, I suppose. Very Prometheus. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know what to make of that one. Still can't believe we got Ridley, but not Samus. We did get Samus. Samus's first fight was against Iron Man, and uh, she won. Santa is also ageless, right? So there is a time that Doc could go to. So is there a time Doc could go to? Oh. I'm not sure if Doc could do anything against Santa, though, because he was too fast, right? Mm -hmm. he's, got, uh, he's got the flash Yeah, power, Santa just moved so fast. Just a quick boy. Uh, did y'all see the 12 Angry Men AI thumbnail? No. No. I, I have not I, seen this. I do not know what you're referring to with that one. Have you seen well, that bit like a YouTube like what like on a YouTube video or maybe yeah like I, a like film a, poster? I genuinely have no clue what they're referring to. Um, I, I maybe not on the up and up on that one. Have you seen the Tony Scott directed and Tarantino written True Romance? I have. It's awesome. We actually did a uh, audio commentary for it with a friend of mine years ago. I'm not sure if it's listed on my channel, but you might be able to find it if you just try and see if anyone's linked it somewhere, but... I was, uh, quite fond of that movie. It's real neat. I assume... Oh, are there any SCPs in this list? Missed opportunities if not. SCP-682 or 96 would have been great additions. Well, no, but to be fair... You gotta read up on lore for a lot of those, so... Well, there's a lot of characters just in general that didn't make it on, right? Like, it's, uh... Yeah, that's... Even with 192, it was exclusive. Uh. I assume you excluded Maxwell from Scribblenauts for being too unfair. Weekend reminder to play Trails in the Sky. Fair enough. That would have been a good uh, one, the Scribblenauts guy. Yeah, that would That'd be down to, like, his speed of being able to make... That's one of those, stuff. like, Green Lantern-esque kind of... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who was in the listing, so, yeah. Dr. Manhattan's power is canonically enough to fight Superman. Real thing. That doesn't surprise me. Like, Manhattan just, to me, seems like one of the most powerful beings in, in, in DC. Or slash whatever. Yeah. Like, whatever continuity you put him in, I feel like he'll, uh, he'll be incredibly powerful. Did Chuck Norris make Heavyweight? Like the song? He was not in the listings, I'm afraid. Omen noticing this stream. Nerds! <laughs> True. <laughs> the Flash literally outran death. Yeah, that's not that special in Heavyweight. <laughs> 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 You know what I mean? Like, it is funny whenever someone says, like, did you know they did this thing? And it's like, yeah, have you seen everyone else's stuff? It's crazy. We're dealing <laughs> exactly. with crazy, crazy people. Amazon had a very bad AI thumbnail for the movie. Oh. Oh. That's not good. That's... God, you can't just hire someone to make a great work of art. You're, you just hire someone. Pay someone 100, 200 bucks to draw a really cool piece of art with your Amazon money instead of having some fucking robot just spurt out pixels. I don't know. You're asking a lot, aren't you? Yeah, I guess. See if I can find it here. Oh, God. Oh, no. Is it that bad? I think it's this. At least that's what I'm seeing as a common result. Oh, f I, I... Why? Why, though? Why? Why? You couldn't have taken what? a still from the movie? 
Why don't you just take us two from the film? I actually would love to know faces, how, this how this happened. How did this happen? <laughs> there are so many reasons why this should never have happened. <laughs> oh, God. That's so gross. <laughs> That's so shit. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh... God damn. I just I just love the idea that whoever was set to do it was like, yeah, hopefully nobody notices. <laughs> like, yeah. Anybody who's familiar with 12 Angry Men will instantly recognize that it's not 12 Angry Men and some other shit. Um uh, anyway. Uh, on the Headless Horseman, the Washington Irving story short story might hint that it's actually Brom Bones who dresses as the horseman. He's just the frat bro of the story. He might be cosmic, maybe. Mm. Uh, he's unstoppable in my heart. <laughs> the mummy could use the Book of the Dead to end Freddy forever. Yes. Possibly there's some kind of interaction that could happen between Freddy Krueger and the mummy. I don't know. This It gets real difficult with stuff like that. Uh... If it is EU Palpatine, he can take over Darkseid's body using essence transfer and win via destroying his mind. It was weird. When we brought up uh, Palpatine and Darkseid, like, I would say 98% of chat were instantly saying Darkseid. There's no chance for Palpatine. So mm -hmm. I, got, I got the impression straight away. I was like, oh, okay. Darkseid is probably pretty powerful. Especially with those he Omega Beams. He can beat Creamy Sheev can't handle those Omega Beams. Yep. Uh, look up TFP Megatron. Where do you think he would be in this fight? Yeah, TFP Megatron. What does TFP stand for here? No idea. Hmm. The Phantom... The, the Phantom Phantom. Um... Oh, it's like Prime Vision, I guess. This is like the best version of them, I guess. Well, uh, I would have to read all of his skills. If they're anything close to Unicron, then you already know. In terms of uh, trying to figure everything out. How that goes, yeah. Listen, Transformers was wild when we started to discover more and more about it. Uh, what do you think? Nightwing, the first Robin, versus Spider-Man, the first Marvel hero. Nightwing more skilled. Both, if you don't take the highball for Nightwing, are close in speed. They're close in speed? Are they? I just would have thought Spider-Man would be... Isn't Nightwing like a guy? I thought I mean, Night... Yeah, yeah I thought much. Nightwing was a guy with a guy. gadgets. Yeah. Spider-Man is just... Spider-Man's insane, though. He's, like, really... Very powerful. Really powerful, yeah. He does seem to be kind of the guy who would destroy everybody, especially normal dudes, but I know Nightwing's very skilled, but I don't know. Sometimes that only gets you so far. Exactly. I don't I wouldn't expect Nightwing to be the winner on that one myself, but maybe it's because of my lack of knowledge. Does Vader get loud soup in round two or three? Probably three. That's an ultimate move. I mean, you don't, he doesn't get that on standard loadout. You can't just toss loud super people. Uh, he beat perfect chaos in generations while base. Oh, we're talking about Sonic? Oh, yeah. Uh, I forget. I don't know if you remember, but Sonic went against uh, King Ghidorah. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just King love Ghidorah that matchup. King Ghidorah won that one, right? Yeah. Well, round one... And then people were arguing about whether or not that should be the case. The thing is, I don't think Sonic can do anything to hurt King Ghidorah ultimately because it regenerates, right? Yeah, which it has, like, like normal Sonic, Super Sonic, Sonic maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember if he was booted out then or not, but yeah, I think people would be mad no matter what Sonic got booted out by. He's a, he's a, he's a favorite. Superman doesn't lose. Superman shatters multiverses, infinite multiverses, with ease, and Goku still can't reach infinity. Okay, Stop. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> well, it, he shatters it might be fair. Damn. It might be fair that that's a thing that happens, but at the same time, of course, we we left it to chat, and I, I 
I guess the way to do it would be to have the the biggest, brainiest, sort of like knowledgeable person on both Goku and Superman to answer this question. Somebody must have across the internet. Of course, like, you know, I think gun to our head, we have to choose. I would just be like, I legit have no fucking clue. I don't know anything about their ultimate powers, but Superman having the kryptonite issue always made me feel like he's probably uh, got a, you know, like Goku. Does Goku have anything like that? At least in the first and second rounds. Not that you'd get access to it necessarily. I don't know. Somebody's got to have answered these crazy questions well before we did. I was just enjoying watching everybody sort of uh, you know, try and figure it out. It was good stuff. Enjoyed and finding out how fucking OP Steve was. Yeah. <laughs> Naturally. Uh, seriously, not everyone you might want to win will win. These are limited and should let the group have their wins. There are other videos and streams that will give your winners your wins. Oh, yeah. A lot of people do end up taking this seriously to the point of being like, this is our one chance to prove blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's such a goofy goober conversation that's been had by everybody all over the internet. Don't you worry about it, right? Like, just because... Just because we said we think that, you know, character X beats character Y, it doesn't mean anything, ultimately. They're okay. They'll they'll have the fight for another day. There's just some, some battles here that were kind of fun to, you know, simulate. Um, uh, key is not magic in Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball has its own thing called magic. Dragon Ball has limited power. Superman has infinity. It's I very... don't... Yeah, it's very difficult Inf to understand. Superman has infinity. No, he doesn't. Well, they'll say that in the comics. I just don't know what it means. It's powerful. You, he can smash the multiverse, Rags. Can you smash the multiverse? I, I can't. I can't even shatter he can, universes. He can fly around Earth and make time go back. Can you do that? No, I, I guess yeah, I can't. Yeah, well, so maybe consider these things, you know, I'm just saying. Goku is like, uh, guess... oh, like powering up, and then Superman just goes, nah, -uh, and goes, wee, 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 and then he does it until Goku is a baby, <laughs> and then he punches him, <laughs> and he splatters, and that's the end of the fight. Maybe, though, maybe it goes a different way. Maybe, uh, maybe Goku can fly around the Earth and uh, set it, send it back in time, I don't know. I assume you just have to be fast enough, right? And I, I have to imagine Goku can fly pretty fast. Uh, lots, Probably. Lots to consider. This is how strong DC speedsters are. They outran the concept of death. You can outrun, you can outrun teleporters, time travel, travel the multiverse, vibrate fists. He outran the concept of <laughs> death. <laughs> that thing, he said, is he that, just say these things. Is the thing Theo was talking about where he said stronger than the color blue. <laughs> like, what does it mean? <laughs> like... <laughs> Stronger than the color blue. <laughs> uh, vibrate fist to have the mass of stars. The list goes on. Yeah, but you're right. It's just the they have these lists for it. This is what the Unicron listing was hilarious. Uh, I would I would read it out to you, Rags, but I don't have it on hand. Just the fair um, enough, man. Fair enough. It's good. It's good shit. Um, very entertaining, and and that's why we left them to votes a lot of the time because we just we just couldn't answer these questions. They're beyond us. Can Goku snap Zod's neck? Whoa. Ooh. The ultimate challenge. I think he might be able to. I think so, right? We'd probably vote yes probably on that could. one. Yeah, probably vote yes probably. on that one. Now, I'll admit, again, Goku, I have limited knowledge on Goku's power level and what he's capable of, but I would imagine that Goku could. If Goku can't do something, then what a thing that must be. Let it be known, Goku only won because he's popular. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them can be decided that way. It does happen. Then we had Odin and Zeus. Who do you think wins, Rags? Odin or Zeus? Zeus and Odin both have so many different iterations. Are we using the MCU ones? Oh, I think you're going to want to just gun with whatever the most powerful version of both are. I don't, I feel like, uh, uh, I don't know. They both feel like it's just a coin toss. I don't know enough about the details to really, I don't know enough about the details on each individual one, because they probably have all sorts of crazy powers and things of that nature, and they can do all, all kinds of stuff. So I just, I don't know. I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, we left it up to a vote. I think they went with Odin. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people saying or Odin's the fair, winner. Yeah. Zeus turned into a goose and ravished a woman. Zeus spends yeah, most of his later. time cheating on his wife. Name. Hey, man, you know. He, what he gets up to. Hey, you know, you see a hot lady, you want to fuck her as a goose. You know, you just, hey, look, That's you're Zeus, Zeus and you can do that sort of thing. You just, you do. You Zeus do. versus slightly bigger Zeus is the real question. Ooh. wonder if we'll ever find out the answer to that. Uh, I think mm. with characters with a million iterations like Superman, an iteration should be decided on because, they're sure, there are stupid, infinitely powerful tr iterations, but the mainline iteration sure isn't. It genuinely gets complicated because it's like the most well known question mark. And then when you stretch into like how well known are the ones where they're way more powerful but adjacent to the most well known ones, and do we use those? And, you know, we did the best we could. It's definitely a um, take it case by case sort of thing. Uh, to give Goku his credit, he can destroy a universe millions of times over because of how he can grow rapidly in strength. He can move faster than light, and he's pretty hacked out in terms of skill. Yeah, I mean, that's probably why the fight is often referenced, right? People want to know the answer. Half of these matchups depend on the version. Correct. Yeah, it's very Definitely. difficult to figure that out. Use the Transformers 5 Merlin. Was Merlin in Transformers? Was he... Yeah. Well, yeah, King Arthur's in it, right? Was that Fuck. like... What? Does it like go... I think that... The... I don't think... I don't fucking know. <laughs> I can't really like... I don't know if it was, like, Transformers shit or what. Like, that the magic was actually just Transformers stuff. Uh, even the creators agree Omni-Man wins. So the matchup of Omni-Man versus Homelander, or Superman versus Homelander, of course the creators of Homelander, and many people should agree, Homelander loses, because in his own sort of shit, he's kind of a coward, and he's definitely not as strong as Superman. Like, the, the implication is mm -hmm. that he's the equivalent for their universe but that he's kind of, he can like be beaten up by a lot of people with really good strength. And uh, anyone who yeah. gets the, the, the upper hand on him in any way, shape or form, he like runs away. So, it, you know, the implication, of course, is that he's a lot of bluster, whereas um, it just, it's almost like a, th a thing immediately people think of. It's like Superman would fuck him up. Yeah. And it's funny, Anthony him, Starr apparently Anthony said Man. he would fuck up Superman. It's like, of course he said that. <laughs> he's, but, he's like... But I mean, obviously not, but okay. But, I, I you know, kind I of appreciate it. that he did say that. It's almost like staying in character. Like Homelander would absolutely <laughs> claim you would beat Superman. Wolverine gets nuked and then regenerates in three minutes. I don't know what that means. When people said he could be reduced down to one cell and regenerate fully, it was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> if, he can, if you can be reduced down to one cell, so you can destroy all the cells, so you can destroy the cells right but you just have to get all the cells yeah well you know, i guess the last more. one is immune to destruction that is what that's the core of wolverine rags that one cell it's what like, happens if like two individual cells get split up and separated do they regenerate into two Wolverines? no there's only one portion of his body that will ever contain that one super important cell you know like the um mm. what's his name the creature they fight at the end of season one of one punch man who has like the marbles and they and they have to. The marble is the mm, core of him. Yeah. Is, the, is Wolverine has like that, but one cell. That's, There's only one cell. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> and the, yeah, I just want to make sure I put that on the end there. Okay. <laughs> Drop a building on Wolverine. I mean, it, it would fuck him up, but it wouldn't kill him. Look up the Hellbat. He fought Darkseid with it. It's a say, Batman suit. I'd imagine. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, that's some armor for you. This is the thing we said, if mm. Batman makes it to round three, we are not going to underestimate him. It's just that it was nope. tough for him to win all three rounds against everybody. Look at that armor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he calls up the Hellbat. Why the wouldn't he? Was, uh... Why wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, man. I feel like he's a little bit mad when he's wearing that. A little mad, <laughs> like little like mad as an angry or mad as an insane. Let's just go both. Let's just do them. both. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Fair enough. Uh, Yellowstone was a blast. Surprise! You're still streaming. Have y'all been to any American national parks? And would you want to see any? Recommend Zion. 
I have been to, yeah, I have been to a number of them. Uh, it's hard to say which one's off the top of my head. Uh, I think that my biggest trip, I've gone there multiple times, was to, Grand, uh, to the Grand Canyon. Um, hiked across it. It was an excellent trip. Incredible stuff. But, yeah, we yeah, go around, do a bit here and there. Of course, I've gone to a lot of any. state parks, but... Yeah, I haven't uh, yeah. been to any. I'd like to go to uh, Yellowstone and Zion and stuff, though. Who knows? One day, maybe. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like because yeah, I thought maybe they were talking about. Isn't there a show called Yellowstone, or am I thinking of someone else? I there think is. You're, yeah, there is. Yeah. Kevin Costner. Um, but I'm not sure if they're saying they went to Yellowstone and it was a blast, or the the show was a blast. So here it's good. Uh, uh, case, yes, yeah. we are still streaming. Seven hours. Another one of them. Uh, wow. Short stream. <laughs> Y'all are eating well. Right? Yeah. Getting them you got the 12 and a half hour, here. then the seven hour, and then this one, which is just, this was supposed to be the easy, break, easy one. Chill, easy, chat, short, easy one. And here we are. My here we goodness. Are. Wolverine's regen works as it repairs as fast as the damage took place. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you, what? No. You know, not only does it definitely not do that through many different iterations that we've seen I actually think they don't want it to work that way because it's cool to see him covered in wounds and then for all of it to start coming back you know what I mean like, he doesn't get he doesn't heal as fast as he takes wounds uh, there are characters who do that though. no way like um, um my guess would be if you were able to take chunks out of Manhattan he would probably heal as fast as he takes damage but uh, yeah, Wolverine, one Amazing. of the coolest factors about Wolverine is seeing the battle damage on him repair. So it's cool shit. The only way that I think you can take chunks out of Manhattan is just zoning, right? Nice. Just because he regens doesn't mean he wins, Spider-Man. 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 <laughs> uh, what's the coldest place you've ever been? Hmm. Um, the coldest, well, I don't know about the coldest place, but, um, the coldest temperature I have ever been in is six degrees Fahrenheit. I was camping during a search and rescue training trip. Uh, it was at Haw Creek Falls here in Arkansas, and it was six degrees, and it was cold. It was really fun, though. Really fun trip. Well, that's as cold as I've been in. I don't think I've been to any kind of extreme colds. I'm trying to think of, like, there was probably a time where I went into some kind of big industrial freezer or something. It was like, wow, gee, it's cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing, I, I don't think I have any strong memories of being like, oh, God, I'm so fucking freezing right now. Other than, you know, when it's snowing um, and windy. I went to Mount Hotham. That's probably the coldest. That's probably the coldest place I've been. By the way, someone in chat said Wolverine has survived being eaten by the Hulk. I don't even know. Okay. What the, what's funny is that doesn't actually surprise me compared to other stuff. Because, of course, it's like he would he would eat him, and then Wolverine is just sort it of would in just there. Be like, a horrible okay. death, slowly being like, broken down by the acid and then regenerating, but a perpetual cycle. That would be rough, to say the least. But it would surely yeah. be uncomfortable for the Hulk if he's got the adamantium in him, right? Well, and also, if Wolverine's stabbing him constantly that in his too, stomach. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are we? Prime is like, I didn't have to be like this Kong before stomping the king. I'm not sure I understand the reference, but I think this may refer to when we had Optimus Prime versus King Kong. I think that happened. Speaking of Wolverine, check out Logan the Wolf by Godfroy Reichvat, the with music by Rock Nodin. It's a real good fan film. Fair enough. Logan the Wolf. Okay. Yes. Openclassactions.com Moola. Uh not sure why why would you why? <laughs> what is that? I don't know what that relates to with uh, at this point we're talking about Doom Guy versus uh see here. Doomguy versus... I think it was the Balrog. What do you think, Rags? Doomguy versus the Balrog? Ooh, that's quite an appropriate matchup, isn't it? Um... Mm. I don't know enough about the Balrog's lore 
to really say for sure because I feel like it could go either way depending on the kind of crazy stuff that uh, Doom Guy can get his hands on um, in the arena in which they fight. It would be like a big old mega boss battle for Doom Guy. I don't know. I feel like it. It's really close. You know, it could go either way. But I just don't know enough about the Balrog to say. But I wouldn't be hasty to answer in either direction. Yeah, we we gave round one to the Balrog, but um, from round two and three, it was complicated because it it just the determining factor is how much uh Doom Guy's weaponry will affect the Balrog. Uh, you know, yeah. d depending on your assumption, it could be that he annihilates the Balrog with it, or it could be that it does nothing to the Balrog. It's, it's not exactly clear. But, uh, you know, fun to talk about. I Bat think so, yeah. Batman fans be like Batman Solo's Goku. Well, with enough prep time. <laughs> with enough prep time, he's got to learn Goku's weaknesses and <laughs> yeah. that sort of thing, you know? Hmm. Got a really important question here. Fringy versus Kermit the Frog. Um, I mean, I don't know, man, Kermit, he, you know, he should surprise you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, don't count Kermit out, but hopefully I'd win. I'm just picturing you violently trying to tear him piece from piece and realizing halfway through, like, what have I, I become? I don't like to imagine <laughs> that, that's, that's not fun. You're standing there over Kermit with your fist raised... And he's all bloodied, and you got your teeth gritted, and you yeah, realize what like you've this. become. Mm -hmm. And he just looks up and say, "Go on, finish it." <laughs> <laughs> you see a reflection of yourself in his eye. <laughs> like, no. Oh my god! You've you've come this far. <laughs> <laughs> <End it. Jesus. laughs> god, I don't like this at all. I, I don't. We didn't. We didn't make this happen. You did. <laughs> we, we, we're just uh, golden effect. What can I say? Uh, to give credit to Goku, he can destroy a universe several times over, and is severely faster than light on, and pretty skilled. Also, yes, it is how Wolverine's regen works. He just gets nerfed by adamantium, a la Fata Attraction, Fatal Attraction. Wait, nerfed by adamantium? Wouldn't he be? Well, that's. I guess that's a given. Well, I guess, you know... It, They're talking about the poisoning Adamantium eventually happening, but away. before mm. before that happens, it's more of an upgrade, wouldn't you say? Somewhat? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, you would definitely want the Adamantium, because whenever you're not healing, it's just a straight-up upgrade. And yeah. it probably prevents an insane amount of damage. So it's it's like one of those video game balances where it's like, hey, you found an item, and you heal slower, but it gives you incredible all these other abilities that might potentially not even factor into it because, well, if you don't take the damage in the first place, or you're super resilient to the damage, you don't have to heal it as much anyway, so. It's a thought, definitely. Uh, man, you guys did Joel dirty. How does he not sweep the tournament? He's the cause of all death and suffering. A very smart YouTuber told me so. He may be responsible for all death, but what about characters that can't die? Then what is he responsible uh, for? Just, or it. characters that can run faster than the concept of death. Mm-hmm. Uh, some Balrog lore. No Balrog has ever been killed without his opponent also perishing. Glorfindel and Gandalf both died in the act. Oh, well. There you go. Will Doomguy be the first to take on a Balrog and not die? Find out in uh, Rings of Power Season 2. Say. Uh, also, I appreciate you guys going easy on Unicron by not putting Shaggy at 1% power in the tournament. Yeah, we we felt like that was... That fair. was really nice. Just yeah. give it a bit of a sporting you know, chance, you know. Um, to explain how Adamantium nerfs Wolverine, it prevents his full mutation, which made his regen, senses, and physical abilities stronger. Interesting. How does that work exactly? Is it because, like, I just, I don't know. For some reason, I'm having trouble, like, imagining why that would be the case, uh, at least when it first comes up. Because, like, I, I get the whole eventual poisoning thing. Um, but making his senses and physical abilities stronger without adamantium? I would have thought you would hit harder with adamantium than without it. I would imagine he'd hit way harder with it, too, right? Um... 
Okay, well, I mean, some people are saying that it's, he's getting constantly poisoned from the get-go and that his healing ability is constantly hampered by having to account for that. I can, I can see that making some sense. And it's one, like once it's he's a built-in nerf in a way. Yeah, like, and once he's older and his healing factor is much worse, the poison actually starts to take over sort of thing. Um, hello there. I don't know if anyone pointed this out, but in Call of Cthulhu, the madness is not always instantaneous, and Cthulhu was popped open by ramming a steamboat into him. All fun, though. Also, high rags. Uh, hi. Well, one, I'm pretty sure he healed instantly after that happened. He's got hyper regeneration as well. And then two, the killing of Cthulhu is actually less of an issue for most creatures. You just have to get past the madness part, um, which is real difficult. And um, yeah, we we th there's a there's a, a a sort of thing on you know how long does it take to take effect, and can some of these characters vaporize him before the madness takes hold? I think we did mention some of that. But uh, his deciding factor really was whether or not you would be immune or not, which was kind of the main discussion. Some not, you know that sort of thing. He wasn't even damaged by the boat hitting him; it just woke him up, like tickling someone, uh, tickling someone's feet to wake them up. Yeah, I don't think the boat would have done much to him, but I think the implication is if the boat could do that, could you then do it to the whole body? And if you did it to the whole body, would he be dead? You know, it's the, it's the standard sort of nerdy thoughts. Um, more Balrog lore. Every Balrog death required some sort of fall damage, so if they are in the woods without cliffs, Doomguy is done for. Well, to be fair, though, Doomguy has weapons that nobody in the Lord of the Rings universe had, so it's kind of hard to figure out whether or not those would be effective. That's so why I think at the time we were asking whether or not magic is necessary. Um, and, you know, I just, I just don't know enough to say. Wait, does, does Elrond not have a shotgun? Um, I, have to, I have to reread the that, books, maybe. It's that elvish magic, right? I think so. Uh, Santa and Doomguy team up, obviously, guys. Yeah, Santa and Doomguy had to fight. It was really sad. You know that Doomguy I thought it'd be, um... hated that. <laughs> It wouldn't it be um it would be Doom Guy and Isabel, right? Well, um, maybe. Animal what, what, Crossing? I don't know what to I, I don't play that game that much. Well you were well, I was you know what I'm talking about. Those games came out at like the same time, so there was a big crossover of Doom Guy and Isabel as like a pair and they'd go off and do Kinda stuff like Bob and, and they'd be friends and everything. Yeah, the, except those two actually stuck. Those two pairings. Uh, a little bit. Yeah, those actually kind of stuck and worked. What was the cringe one they tried to do? It was... Oh, the Saw, poor Saw Patrol. Saw Patrol. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. There's just not the, the cross. They wanted it to happen, just... but it didn't. No. So... The only reason for the definitive editions of GTA is for the nice GPS system. I don't, know if, um, I don't know if Fringy has anything for that. Yeah, know. those uh, those uh, were not viewed favorably. I hear bad things about the that re-release. Uh, my gay actor PFP is a Cuphead version of a Lek a Lek man. Neat. Um, is that custom made, or did you find it on the? Uh, when I say custom, sorry, I meant like, did you make it or did uh? Mission, or is it some fun flism you find on the internet? That's what he's talking about. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, just please, yeah. Gotta love that art style. I, it's, oh, it, I thought that was just from the game. I didn't know that was something he got custom made. I just assumed it was from the game and it was a character. I wasn't well, that's kind of what I'm asking because I don't know. Um, I assume it's not. Uh, like I said, don't want to assume anything. Probably wrong. Uh, fun little character design. Though, yeah. with a little mask and the ear thingy here. If you could travel 100 years to the future with all of the resources and assets you have now and live there, or would you rather stay here and receive $2 million? Your family and friends will not be with you in either scenario. Uh oh. Oh. Um. Mm -hmm. Damn. Hmm. Damn, dude. Does all family my family and <laughs> friends just get wiped out? <laughs> so, no matter, no matter what well, you they... choose, you're essentially resetting your life. Well, I. Well then, I I have I have an obligation to go to the future, so all my friends and family get to keep on living. 
an interesting. I'm going to the future. Oh to save. yeah, shit. That's I've got to go to the. I've got to go to the future to save all my family and friends. Damn, interesting. I gotta. Yeah, I, I agree I with Rags. Yeah. Yeah. And I would just then, try and make the most of it and be like, well, here I am, hundred years in the future, and you arrive. It's just fire. You're, you're like starting with less than what you have, because of like whatever money you have is gonna be. Well, um, I, I think you're going to be a huge novelty. You, you could definitely monetize yourself a hundred years from now if you That's like. That's true. I am the time. I come from the year twenty twenty four. Yeah, it would be. It'd be worth more than. Uh, it'd be worth more than two million dollars. <laughs> um, y'all need to stop making fun of the anti-life equation. It's not a goober Never. power up for Darkseid, who is already yes, too strong. Yes, it is. And when Superman beats him. But it's the story of Superman. He is the concept of hope. What? <laughs> I don't know what it to do. It is with... the gooberiest. I don't know what to do with the anti-life equation or the concept of hope, like as, as a weaponizable thing. Is cringe. It is. Concept it's cringe. The, <laughs> the equation is like despair multiplied oh, by no, anguish don't, don't. plus regret. Like it's it's stupid. I don't want to think <laughs> it's about tough. it. <laughs> it's so stupid. Sadness multiplied by depression <laughs> multiplied by <laughs> like, not like, feeling come good. On. It's stupid. Multiplied by not feeling good. <laughs> and then <laughs> times by everyone. <laughs> multiplied by being a lazy asshole. <laughs> um, yeah, multiplied by leaving your mother's text messages on red. No. Doom guy is Christian. He would never hurt Santa. Listen, some, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. If Santa were were he, contextualized as being like controlled or possessed, and he's got he's got to kill him by he's got to save him by killing him. You know. Uh, so many great drawing ideas coming out of this EFAP. Yeah, oh, yeah, I, I can imagine. Um, Fat Man 2020 shows that Santa has a healing factor that can take a few shots. Also, watch Fat Man for EFAP movies, please. Hi, Rags. Oh yeah, we still Hello. Out. we did uh, Violent Night, didn't we? Which we did Violent Night, and that was dis yeah, disappointing. Very disappointing. disappointing. They could have done some cool stuff. Uh, thanks for listening to my pleas and read Super Chat live again. Well, clearly it was a crazy mistake because we're still not through. Like we're we're, we're still into the yeah. early of heavyweight battles. Uh, right. <laughs> it was a short one, he said. <laughs> I don't think I ever said it was a short one. You implied it. Nope. This is all. This is the lies yeah, you told before. Fringy. All right. Fringy, he did it. Get yeah, fringy, trying back, to get just back, make yeah. your lies louder. Rags, nice. Wolverine can regenerate from just one cell, so clones of him start growing under his fingernails every time he scratches himself. No, it's like a special cell, like the core cell. I don't know if his brain stem is is the cell, like the well, there's one cell in there. Otherwise, yes, he would be able to very easily clone himself. <laughs> Just like, I don't know, chop his arm off and then a wolverine grows out of it. I, I, I wouldn't want to entertain that, but someone said he can regenerate fully from one cell. Uh, work has been annoying for this gay actor, but EFAP is making it much more bearable. Much like a cigarette, <laughs> but healthy. Hey, healthy oh, cigarettes, hey. EFAP. <laughs> healthy cigarettes, I like that. Um... Gonna watch A Haunting in Venice, love the Murder on the Orient Express book, skip the film, I will complete your review beforehand, though, for fun. I would probably oh, yeah. recommend the um, Death on the Nile as well. Um, upon upon rewatch, I actually quite liked it. Uh, for, for, I don't think it's as good as um, A Haunting in Venice, but I think it's better than A Murder on the Orient Express, specifically not in reference to any of the ways that the stories were done in the books, just the movies themselves, the uh, uh, Kenneth Branagh ones. Not a fan of the first. Was was kind of a fan of the second one. Actually, I was I was surprised on rewatch. And then the third one, I really like. As we covered it, we talked about it. That's right. Mm. Haunting in Venice is really good stuff. I'd highly recommend. I really dig it. Uh, howdy, EFAP crew. I'm currently trying to play every game that has a Smash character, and I'm interested in how you feel about the games I'm playing right now. Kingdom Hearts is the first one, which I don't think any of us have much to say on, do we? I have not. I don't know. I know nothing about Kingdom Hearts, so yeah. I know nothing about it either. And Fringy's silence tells you everything. And the other one was mm. Final Fantasy VII, which I also don't know anything about. Well, 
<laughs> so I'm glad we go. could help out might, with that it's one. Just my, I mean, it's being a bit with me here. That's all. Uh, and then that's being a bit plism. Sai oh, Fring, you ready for this? You okay? You are you gonna say Saitama something? Uh, uh yes. So, you, you, Fringy, you listen to the UK? You, you strap down. Okay. Got right. your sanity juice. You might want to mm -hmm. take a few. Uh, Saitama is as boring as Superman, but worse. Oh shit, man! Oh, 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 oh. all right. He's gonna put on You're, his hell suit. Right, that's your opinion. That's <laughs> look. That's your opinion. Okay, and you've expressed it. <laughs> Boy, did you! And that's yep. you know what? That's something you can do. I, I disagree. Do. <laughs> I mean, I'll, uh, yeah, like I'll, vehemently. I'll, I'll but, just disagree you know. with it too. There you go. Nice, done and done. Santa would gift Boogie a coal mine. <laughs> yeah, but Boogie would make use of that. <laughs> Uh, guys, I think you should Google feats, too. As in, like, the things that were achieved by any of these characters in, uh, somewhat. I think at this point we would definitely, like, we gotta keep moving. Because, uh, we were entering, like, hour 11 or something. It was absurd. Yeah. Um, boom, 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 boom. Absolutely play Rayman Origins and Legends. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I played one of them a whole bunch. Uh, really good games. Yeah. Please watch OPM Season 2. It will have your favorite character, Garu, and shows and expands more on the S-Class. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to do it. Definitely. We'll finish it. Go through. Unicron is a weaker Galactus, and Galactus got beaten. I haven't watched the entire stream, but I don't know how he's still here. But Galactus isn't. Galactus went up against Q, and everyone in chat was like, Galactus stands no chance. So we were like, oh, shit, okay. And then Unicron... Apparently, his ultimate power version was so insane that he just like automatically won. We couldn't envision yeah, anybody beating that was, him. We weren't ready for it, but no. yeah. The real lesson we learned today is that everything is OP, powerful, and cringe, depending on what we pull from. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> we truly did learn that. Theo's reaction to Unicron was the highlight of my night. Thank you. It was very entertaining. We all know. Why? Was he. Thrilled. He was he was losing his mind. He was melting. Like he couldn't. He, the <laughs> Unicron's description of powers was making Theo like die inside. He couldn't. Un, he, he, nobody could understand it. It was like, oh, I wish I had examples for you. It, it was something like manipulation and creation of you know bio density, extra dimensional, multiversal black hole di filter formats or something. You'd be like. What does any of that mean? You're like, it just means okay. he's real powerful. Okay? <laughs> like, okay. All right, all right. We all know that in the end, Garrus will be the champion. Yes, people felt that Garrus was improperly uh, booted from the, the leaderboard, but that was chat that did that. Was it not for me? It was not our fault, if I remember? Or was it? <laughs> Who did Garrus uh, get pitted against? Do you remember? Hmm. <laughs> Who did Garrus lose to, chat? Was it Bugs Bunny remember. or something? Well, it was Steve, right? It wasn't because of oh, bugs because people were pissed off. Yeah. Oh, I, I think it might have been Steve. Oh, yeah, Rags. One of his powers was Apocalypse Induction. What? Who? Exactly. Um, um, Unicron? Omicron. <laughs> Unicron, yeah. Apocalypse Induction? Oh, yeah, and, the, and in the description right. among all of these insane powers, it said, like, mid-tier swordsmanship. <laughs> 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 Mid-tier swordsmanship. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I think it was Steve that took out Garrus. Maybe I don't know. It, it's just yeah, it's tough stuff, you know. Uh, Kirby would survive the sun. Kirby beat up the sun in one of his earlier games on the moon. It was pretty cool. Damn Kirby! <laughs> Mad at the sun. Uh, do not Google feet. Very well, very well. We will we'll, we'll take the advice. Uh, Unicron was immune to causality and had the power of apocalypse inducement. Love how little Platoon couldn't get over that one. Yeah, nor could Theo. Both losing it. <laughs> it's just stupid. <laughs> apocalypse <Dumb>. inducement. <laughs> now you've done it, Mauler. Optimus was our one chance to beat Unicron and we eliminated him. He carries the matrix of leadership with him at all times and we kicked him out. It's so over. <laughs> the matrix of leadership. I don't even, like I said, though, 
how does it work? Like, they both spawn, and then does, does Optimus pull it out of his chest or whatever, go, like, do a chant, and then it just, evade, like, vaporizes? Yeah, but Unicron. he's got to say quick, because Unicron can induce apocalypse. Yeah, he's going to A beep. Uniquip? Yeah. Would be cool to see a sort of inverse of this. We get the characters from the same world, Marvel, DC, Greek, Pantheon, etc., and try to balance them with each other while still keeping them roughly resembling their typical self. So, like, we'd nerf and improve different characters to try and get them to have fair, fairer fights, maybe? I don't know. Mm. Perhaps. Can Saitama reach yeah. the, the Coons level of power? Well, that's just Ooh. Cartman at max, so... Which is tough. <laughs> Uh, is Moriarty updating the Kirby wiki in real time in response to all the abilities? <laughs> Trying to make Kirby seem better when we read out all the Unicron stuff. <laughs> uh, Santa holds Kirby like he's a Christmas bag and yanks everything out of Kirby's mouth. Hmm. Oh, there is, oh there is yeah, because he's used to... Yeah, Santa... yeah. yeah, there is. Santa Claus might just be like, oh, I know exactly how this works. I deal with this all the time. That feels that's like... A real... Yeah, you're right. That's clever. That's like a clever little like actual thing that's like, oh yeah, of course Santa would know how to deal with this. That feels like a really good payoff in a comedic sort of thing. Like Kirby swallowing up everybody. They're like, what do we do? And then Santa's like, I've got it. And gets his, his, his sack out, opens it up. This isn't and, half like... his... <laughs> Don't, you can't say Santa's taking his sack out. <laughs> when We're I was saying it, I was like, I'm going to say it and I'm going to try to avoid <laughs> reacting to saying it. <laughs> but I couldn't resist. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gets the sack out and then it like starts like Kirby, you know, is swallowing up loads of presents and Santa's like got a very determined face, like you cannot outlast my infinite bag. And then Kirby's face gets more intense, like your bag cannot outlast my power, you know? Like it, it's just zooming into them both. The presents get bigger and faster, just pouring out into Kirby's. Uh... It, it would be great, I think. It would be very funny. Mola, can you centrally say my screen name, please? Turkey based hair. But I hardly Goodness. know her. I know, right? Combine any I two guess powerful it's never a prerequisite for me, so Combine any two powerful or scary words like intestine and incinerator. Unicron has it as a power no matter what it is. Why is intestine a powerful or scary word? <laughs> Why I guess it's partially scary in some context. Uh, but no, yes, you're probably right about that. Uh, should have had Maxwell from Scribble Noughts here. It doesn't matter how many universes Unicron's eaten when he has the powerless dead adjectives. This would, this would be some of the unstoppable force, immovable object type of thing. <laughs> the unlimited sack versus unlimited suck. Exactly. Can we change the term to inhale? The council has rejected your suggestion. Kirby will continue to suck. Exactly. <laughs> Important. I'm mad I didn't catch this from the beginning, but I'm glad I'm here in time for Kirby versus Goku. Yes, which Kirby won, by the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, and that was chat. They decided Love that. You, Kirby. you know, we uh, we led it up to them. Unicron headless at the end of Transformers movie. Yeah, apparently that was like a lower level uh, Unicron vision. We were dealing with uh, Unicron Super. I don't know how else to describe him. Unicron is voiced by Orson Welles. He wins automatically. That's cool. Mm. Unicron is throwing down with Kirby. The galaxy is exploding. All of existence is dying. And oh my god, it's Boogie with the steel chair. Down goes Unicron. <laughs> down goes Kirby. Boogie with the steel chair. Oh my god. <laughs> it would be funny if, you know, Unicron standing over Kirby or whatever, about to do some kind of finishing blow, and then he gets executed like by the pistol shot. Behind him from Boogie. And then Bo Kirby's like, <gasps> and then Boogie, you know, pulls back the, the hammer and he's gonna just fire that second shot into Kirby. Boogie takes takes the crown. Optimus has been avenged by Boogie. Exactly. Son, I don't even know who Boogie is. Well, you know what? There's a whole episode of EFAP that fully explains that. That's uh, that's the lore that you can do as homework to figure it out. I've never laughed so hard in an EFAP episode. Thank you guys. The best birthday gift I could ever have asked for. Wow, that's great to hear. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, chat, no one tell them about JRPG characters or light novel characters that are complex, multiversal, and turn Unicron into fodder. 
You you say that as if that's not the case for almost all formats, almost all media. We didn't even scratch the surface of comics. <laughs> like you, you say it like yeah. ah JRPG characters, they got all this. It's like bro, <laughs> it's everything. It's it's all a fiction. It's all over the place. Everyone has their guys that they're like you didn't even know. My dude has the the thing of the thing of the thing, and it could do all of the things. The Matrix of Leadership defeats Unicron in the 1985 Transformers movie. True. But I don't think that was the Unicron that we were dealing with in the, in this environment. If it were, like I said, it would be... He'd be crazy. He'd be, he'd be, he'd be having apocalypse inducement. I'm just saying. Oh, that's <laughs> apocalypse that's inducement. Stuff. It's so funny. <laughs> Very funny. Jimmy Carter solos this whole list, also and or good. Agreed. And or is very good. And he would have soloed the whole list, yeah. true. Garrus I'll, won. I'll be yeah. right back, and he's a loser. The final super chat of uh, the Ultimate Showdown uh, stream was, Garrus lost to Steve legitimately. You've got to accept it. <laughs> this, this is a That's tough true. One. Well, it was fair That's by true. our rules. I mean, people voted, you Yeah. Know? Yep, but, uh, exactly. There was a lot of trouble with that. People, people had big issue with that sort of stuff. You can't, you can't deny how much it, it takes a lot to get through that. Uh, Unicron has the apocalypse inducement, and then he has calamity hell to rapid fire Armageddon states. If one isn't enough, exactly. And what's, you know, what, what's anyone going to do against this? What, what, what can? What's such reckless hate? It turns out Boogie had the answer. One shot to the temple. Uh, it's still, it's still funny that Darkseid shot an Omega beam at Batman, but because he's because he's petty, instead of erasing him, it sent him through time with a demon chasing him. What? Uh, Wait, is that something the dark side can do? Like, he can choose what his Omega Beams do to you? One can kill you, and one can send you through time getting chased by a demon? I <laughs> didn't know that. That sounds crazy. That sounds so, that's so funny. Like, that sounds silly. You know, yeah. I could kill you, but I'd rather just send my little demon man to chase you through time. It's like, oh. <laughs> He's just in the background like, meh, I'm ready to go, boys. Uh, one version of Unicron was almost defeated by the Transformers removing the concepts of evil and hate from the universe. Then Megatron got big mad at Optimus and re revived Unicron. Um, well, how do you remove the concept of evil from the universe? I, that seems stupid. You haven't figured that out yet, have you? <laughs> You're working on it, maybe. Hmm. Get it eventually. I mean, my Gook. I'm not sure what you just said, but I agree. Oh, yeah, my NS being a bit flows me. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you see YMS on Destiny's podcast? Great conversation. I haven't. So, uh. I yeah, mean, I haven't either. I wouldn't say Desti's the most reliable when it comes to media discussions, but you know what? He tries. <laughs> <laughs> Much like many political YouTubers, he tries. God, I don't know what it is about if you talk about politics, you can't talk about me. <laughs> Maybe it goes both ways, you know? <laughs> It's a funny Maybe. rule, though. Maybe it does, but like, I don't know. It's just that Oppenheimer take, what the hell? Yeah, it happens. Uh... But yeah, that's the that's the last one of both streams. I can't believe we did it in oh. in only eight hours, nice and quick. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think uh. we're gonna head out. So thank you all for listening. If you didn't know, the Acolyte episode one EFAP TV is out right now on this channel. Oh, no, wait, on the Moolah three. channel. <laughs> episode two is on the way. The Monday is the plan, I believe. Yeah. Um, and of course, we'll try and get those to you every Friday for the next six weeks. That's the uh, the acolyte. Is yeah, it's going to be wonderful. And then it's over. Um, and you got another war movie arc coming this month in the latter half, which will be a Knight's Tale, and um, just generally doing this, that, and the other thing. You know, it's a it's, it's an EFAP kind of mm. kind of world. We're just doing stuff. Probably more updates next time on any particular thing. So actually, I think that will probably be the... Oh yeah, House of the Dragon's coming out. So we won't do... We're probably going to do coverage of that either uh, two halves of the season or one full season, but I would probably prefer to okay. do the two halves. Um, yeah. Also true, character limit is annoying. Stop me from saying it myself. I don't see Saitama losing to Cthulhu given how ridiculous Saitama is. All in good fun though. Bye guys.
that was the dis that was the thing. It was the choice. Do you think he's affected by it? Yes or no? And I genuinely think there's no easy answer to that question. Um, though mm -hmm. I opt for yes because Saitama is very much a man who lives in the world that he's he's not he doesn't. I think if Doctor Manhattan's going to be affected by Cthulhu, which we all seem to agree on, then Saitama should be. And Saitama probably should be as well. Yeah. Um, and Saitama is perfectly capable of being mad, you know, being like angry or being insane. Yeah. These are all things that you can definitely experience. And I think Cthulhu would do it. In any case, we're going to head out now, unless there's anything else oh. you wanted to uh, say there, Rags. No, I just wanted to say I'm back from the loo. Uh, things went well, and I'm really glad that, you know, people stuck around. This <laughs> is a super chill, just super chat. Yeah. have a chat kind of thing and uh i think it was, it was nice to kind of go through questions and chat about stuff as it always is with uh you know my co-hosts and all of our friends in the chat and mm -hmm. gosh i guess i don't really have anything to say at the moment other than we will see you guys later on and we appreciate the we really appreciate the patronage it means a great deal to us thank you very very much thank you indeed uh short man bad of course crow country love y'all bye gobble noises goodbye everyone fair enough bye bye See you yes, next indeed. time. See you later, everybody. Bye. Bye. bye, bye. bye, 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 bye. <laughs>